the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Here's a salad dressing that's different, delightfully different from any other dressing you've ever tasted. Not too sharp, not too bland. Miracle Whip has a peppy goodness that millions say is just exactly right. Enjoy Miracle Whip tomorrow. Even the simplest salad will bring you compliments when it's made with Miracle Whip. <laughs> see what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house. Late last night, Marjorie and Bronco came home from their honeymoon to again complete the little family circle. Well, I'm glad they're home. I hope they like the little apartment upstairs. They ought to, Mr. Gildersleeve. You sure fixed it up nice for them. Yeah, but it cramps Elmer's style. You're a turtle, Leroy? Yeah. He doesn't have the run of the upstairs like he used to. I think it's got him worried. Uh, a turtle with claustrophobia. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. Let's go work in the yard for a little while, huh? Are you going to the office, Miss Kilsey? Well, Bernie, I thought I'd wait around until Marjorie and Bronco came down. I didn't get a chance to talk to him much last night. No, sir. Who did? Hmm? All I can say is, Marjorie, darling. Bronco, darling. Marjorie, darling. Bronco, darling. They're worse than before they were married. Now, Leroy. I thought that mushy stuff stopped after the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> If I know them, too, they'll be on a honeymoon for years and years. Yeah, I hope so. Come along, Leroy. What are we going to do, huh? Well, let's see now. We might burn the rubbish for Bertie. Oh, boy, look at the pile. Yeah, pretty big, all right. Let me light it, huh? I'll show you how to start a fire by rubbing two sticks together. Oh, well, go ahead, my boy. Little boy scout. <laughs> Leroy, you're rubbing two matches together. Well, they're sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother, a junior Milton Burrow. There she goes. Yeah, pretty damp. It's going to smoke a lot. The breeze will keep it going. Hey, look, we're laying down a smoke screen. Uh-oh, it's blowing right across the street to Bullard's house. And the bedroom windows are open. wonder if Bullard's up. He will be. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about tossing this old rubber tire on the fire? No, Leroy. Why not? We can't help if the breeze blows the smoke over there. That's Mother Nature at work. Yeah. Well, maybe this wasn't a good idea, Leroy. Bullard will think I'm doing it on purpose. So what? He doesn't like you and you don't like him. Now, Leroy, it isn't that we don't like each other. We just don't get along. It wouldn't surprise me if he comes over here and tries to start something. Gildersleeve! Zeke, here he comes. Let's run, Unc. No, Leroy, we'll stand our ground. It's ours. Gildersleeve, what are you up to now? Oh, Mr. Bullard, good morning. Nice morning, isn't it? I don't know. I can't see it for the smoke. <laughs> Smoke, huh? Oh, oh, it is a little smoky, isn't it? <laughs> Gildersleeve, haven't you any consideration for other people? Oh, yes. It was out of consideration for you, Mr. Buller, that we didn't burn this rubber tire. Well, thank heaven for that. Gildersleeve, how in the lottery of life did I draw you for a neighbor? Well, let's see. I came here night. No, see here, Bullard. I might ask you the very same thing. You just waited until the wind was right to burn rubber. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You keep out of this, Leroy. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, whether you did it on purpose or not, it was a stupid thing to do. Oh, careful who whom you call stupid. I'm a public official. I'm the water commissioner. Gildersleeve, if you fool with me, I'll buy the water department and cut off your water. Oh, <laughs> Today, in some poop. In some poop. That did it. Leroy burned the tire. Won't you have some breakfast with us, Unky? No, thanks, Marjorie. Leroy and I have eaten. I can eat again. Leroy, let's leave something for Marjorie and Bronco. Uh, Leroy's like me. He can always eat. Mm -hmm. uh, pass the toast, Marge, darling. Here, darling. 
can see out there still at it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what was all the noise out in the backyard? Noise? Unc was just exchanging pleasantries with a neighbor. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, what are you lovebirds going to do today? Oh, I have a million things to do. Mm-hmm. Unpack, shampoo my hair, sew on some buttons for Bronco. Good. Yeah, I'm going to work right after breakfast. Uh, pass the jam, Marge, darling. Of course, dear. Oh, brother. <laughs> well, uh, you going over to your father's little bookstore and start right in, Bronco? No, sir. I'm not depending on my father. Uh, will you pass the bacon again, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, bacon. <laughs> Thanks. Remember what I've always said, my boy. I can find a place for you in our water department. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm not sponging off you. <laughs> Will you pass the eggs again, please? <laughs> Heavy eater. <clears throat> well, uh, what do you plan to do, Bronco? Anything in particular? Tell him your plan, darling. Yeah, what is your plan, darling? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bronco. Hey, Bronco, why don't you go to Idaho and dig potatoes? Potatoes? Sure, the government pays good money for them. Uh, Nero? Okay. Well, I've got big plans, Mr. Gildersleeve, because I have the most wonderful wife in the world to support. Haven't I, Marge, honey? Oh, Bronco. (laughs) Isn't he wonderful, Unky? Oh, yes, but how are you wonderful people going to live? Mr. Gildersleeve, I have a briefcase. (laughs) You have? And in it, there's a real estate license. Unky, he's going to sell real estate. Real estate, eh? Well, I admire your spunk, Bronco, but uh, not wanting to depend on me or your father. Well, spunk is what I've got plenty of. Spunk and drive. And ability. And ability. (laughs) But, Bronco, don't you think real estate is a little uh, crowded? Mr. Gildersleeve, the way I see it, the whole world is waiting to be sold. Oh? There's always room at the top. Mm -hmm. What are you going to sell, the North Pole? (laughs) Please, Leroy, don't snipe at a young man starting his career. (laughs) Oh, that's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Nothing can stop me. I'm starting out to ring doorbells right after breakfast. Uh, More bacon, Marge? Oh, there isn't any more, darling. Oh, well, I'm starting right now. (laughs) Goodbye, Marge, darling. Goodbye. Be sure to wear your coat. It's chilly out. That boy doesn't need a coat. He's a ball of fire. Yes? Oh, good morning, Mr. Bullard. I'm Bronco Thompson, Mr. Gildersleeve's son in law. Yes, yes, I know. You seem nervous, lad. Well, you're my first customer. I am? Mr. Bullard, I'm in the real estate business. Can I list your house for sale? A young man, this house is not for sale. Oh, well, I thought I'd ask you first. I'm starting at the bottom, you know. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, a good day, Mr. Bullard. I'll try some of the other neighbors. A good idea. Oh, oh, uh, Thompson. Oh, yes, sir? I just had a thought. Has Gildersleeve by any chance listed his house for sale? No, sir. I live there. Well, I don't mind you, but I... I mean, um... <laughs> Thompson, I'll give you a listing of mine if you promise to get a listing on Gildersleeve's house. Fair enough? Well, yes, sir. Very good. Come into my study, young man. (laughs) Well, let's get the water department rolling, Bessie. I'm a little late this morning. My, you look nice, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hmm? What a pretty red flower you're wearing. Oh, that's a buddy poppy, Bessie. Everybody ought to wear one this week. Now, let's get started with the mail. Yes, sir. How are the newlyweds, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, fine, fine. But let's get down to work till the honeymoon's over. Yes, sir. Are they happy? Why, naturally, Bessie. But let's get on the ball. Oh, I'm so happy they're happy. Bessie, please. This isn't the happiness hour. This is drudgery. <laughs> Did you check the water report? No, sir. You did. Oh, well, somebody has to be efficient around here. I will say the work on my desk isn't piled as high as it used to be. No, sir. I took the big pile and made it into three little piles. (laughs) (laughs) Seems I've got a lot of work to do. Bessie, please close the door. I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Just a little pile. (laughs) Let's see. 
think I'll work from left to right. Please. What is it now, Bessie? Oh, there's a young man to see you. He says he's selling real estate. Bessie, I don't want any salesman in my hair. Well, this one will be in your hair quite a while. He's your son-in-law. <laughs> uh, uh, Bronco, eh? Well, show him in. I'm in, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, so I see. Well, how's business, Bronco? Oh, great. Just dandy. And I want to talk to you about something. How does it feel to be a newlywed, Mr. Thompson? What? Oh, fine. All right, Bessie. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. I hear you're so happy. Yeah... Mr. Gildersleeve. And I'm so happy you're happy. Bessie, will you please close that door from the other side? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what a secretary. Now, Bronco, you wanted my advice about something? No, sir. I want to list your house for sale. Well, at my house? I have a listing blank here, Mr. Gildersleeve. And if you'll just fill in a few details and sign on the dotted line, please. Wait a minute, Bronco. I don't want to sell my house. And put the top back on your fountain pen. Well, I've learned an important thing about the real estate business already. You can't sell real estate without listings. Well, that's logical and probably true, but why don't we start with somebody outside the family? Oh, I have. I listed Mr. Bullard's house this morning. Mr. Bullard gave you a listing on his house? Yes, sir. He said he liked to help a young man get started. Mm, that Bullard, trying to show me up before my old son-in-law. Let me see his listing, Bronco. Uh, there it is, in black and white. <laughs> his house isn't worth that much. He marked up the price. He knows it won't sell. Wasn't it nice of Mr. Bullard to give me the listing? Well, Bronco, he's no nicer than I am. Where's that dotted line? Well, hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you? Well, I thought I'd drop in and have lunch with you. On the house? <laughs> well, no, Peavy. Have I ever asked you for a free lunch? We're good friends. Well, good friends are the kinds that eat a lot of free lunch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me see your menu, Peavy. Very well. I recommend the cold salami sandwich. Well, I don't know. I think I like this roast beef. Well, if you're hungry, Mr. Gildersleeve, i will take the salami. Why? Well, I don't have any roast beef. <laughs> All right, Peavy. Give me a ham sandwich. I'd still take the salami. No ham, eh, Peavy? <laughs> Peavy, it's a little chilly. Don't you have something hot? Well, I can heat the salami. <laughs> I'll take it cold. Very okay, well. I hear Marjorie brought her new husband back home last night. Yeah, they've settled down to married life, Peavy. Bronco's gone into the real estate business. Yes, I know. Here's your salami, Mr. Gillespie. Thanks. Peavy, don't tell me Bronco was drumming up business in here. Well, he did want me to list the pharmacy for sale. Yeah, that's Bronco, all right. Fast worker. I told him I'd have to talk it over with Mrs. Peavy. Well, Peavy, you didn't have to do that. Why didn't you just tell him no? Well, talking it over with Mrs. Peavy is telling him no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. Well, I don't want to sell my house either, but I gave him a listing on it. You don't say. Yeah, just to encourage the boy. Of course, I put the price up kind of high. He'll never sell it. But if he has a listing from me, it might help him get other business. Yes, it might. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Gillersleeve. Bronco. Yeah, I've been looking all over for you. I've sold your house. <laughs> <laughs> sold my house? My, my. Yes, sir. Here's the cashier's check for the down payment. But, Bronco, you can't sell my house right out from under me. Can he, Peavy? No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> We'll return to the great Gildersleeve very shortly. Many a famous cook will tell you that she made her reputation by the simple trick of serving really wonderful salads. Yes, and you can do it too. Very easily, in fact, if you'll remember to do these three things when you make that salad. First, make that salad in advance so it can be thoroughly chilled. Second, be sure your salad greens are drained dry and really crisp. And third, and probably most important of all, be very particular about the dressing you use. For real salad success, serve Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is the salad dressing millions prefer. Actually, it's the most popular salad dressing ever created. And once you taste it, you'll know why. Miracle Whip has a delightfully different flavor. 
A delicate, zesty goodness most folks agree is just exactly right. Miracle Whip, you know, is a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe to give you the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended with a special craft beater to give you a super smooth texture. Surprise your family tomorrow with an extra good salad and to be really sure they'll like it. Remember to use plenty of America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. To encourage his new son-in-law in the real estate business... The great man listed his house for sale. He didn't think it would move at such a fancy price. But was he ever surprised? I listed it in good faith, Margie, but I had no idea he'd sell it. Oh, isn't Bronco a wonderful salesman, Uncle? Well, he's a salesman. He won't even tell me who's bought the place. The buyer wants to remain anonymous. Besides, what do you care? You're getting twice what the house is worth. And think of the big commission Bronco's making. Well, I'm glad for that, but... Hey, Unc! What is it, Leroy? How much money do I get for my treehouse out of this deal? Well, that wasn't included in the deal, Leroy. Besides, we may have to live in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unky, for the money Bronco's getting you, we can get an even larger house. Yeah, how about a private room and bath for my pet turtle? Leroy, this is a serious matter. And I'd back out of the deal if it was anybody else but Bronco. Yeah, and get sued. Hmm. Well, I guess the buyer could take action. Miss Gilsley. Yes, Bertie? When are we going to start looking at houses? Well, I don't know, Bertie. Let's not rush this thing. No, sir. But when we do, let's find the kitchen that's all automatic. All automatic? Yes, sir. The only thing automatic about the kitchen we got is Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilsley, when are we going to move? Well, I don't know, Bertie. I don't even know who Bronco sold the house to. <laughs> Mr. Bronco, what a salesman. Uh, he sells so fast you don't even know who bought. Yeah, all right, Bertie. He's a natural bond salesman. Now, Bertie? Yeah, see, he comes back from his honeymoon and starts selling. That's a natural bond salesman. I know, Bertie. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, do you know what your new son-in-law is? Yes, Bertie. That's right, he's a natural bond salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm a natural-born sap. <laughs> How did I get into this? How do I get out of it? Hey, Uncle, where are you going? I don't know, my boy. Right now, I'm going around in circles. Looking for another house? No. Trying to figure out how to keep the one we've got. We don't want to sell that place. That's our home. Yeah, I guess it'll be pretty tough living in another house. Certainly it would. How could we get in when you forgot the key? We'd have to punch new holes in the screens. <laughs> Leroy, there's only one hole. It's in the service porch. Gosh, I might have to go to a new school where the teachers wouldn't take pity on me. Hmm? I'll get worse grades than I do now. That's highly probable, Leroy. And what if Elmer doesn't like the new house? He may keep coming back like a cat. Ugh, a homing turtle. <laughs> Might take a month to make the trip. Yeah, well, don't worry about it, Leroy. We're not going to move, I hope. I could just find out who bought the place. Maybe you need a lawyer, Unc. Why don't you see Judge Hooker? Leroy, the judge doesn't know anything about real estate. Sure he does. He was standing in front of Petey's drugstore this morning talking to Mr. Bullard about real estate. Mr. Bullard? Sure. I was sitting by the newsstand reading the comic books, and I heard Judge Hooker say, real estate. Say, Hooker is Bullard's attorney. And if Bullard were... By George, I'm going over to Hooker's. What's the matter, Unc? I smell a mouse, my boy, and there's an old cat saying, when you smell a mouse, head for the mouse hole. <laughs> Sneaking hunch the judge knows something about this deal. I'm sure he does. Confounded, I'll get the truth out of him if I have to beat the old goat with his own asafetida bag. <laughs> there he is going into his house. Judge! Horace! The old rascal sees me trying to get into the house. 
Now I know something's up. Horace, you come here. Oop, look at him run. Horace! One more grab and I've got him. Yeah, Dick. Let go of my coat, Not by the hair of your chinny chin chin, you old goat. I want to talk to you, Horace. Not now, Gildy. I'm very busy, and it's time for my Kalak water. Well, your Kalak water can wait. I want you to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. But, Gildy... I listed my house for sale with Bronco only as a gesture to encourage the boy, and somebody pulled a sneaky trick on me and bought it. Do you know anything about it, Judge? That's a leading question. Mm. Judge, were you or were you not talking to Rumson Bullard in front of Peavy's Drugstore this morning? Let me see. Peavy's Drugstore. Answer yes or no, Judge. Well, I bought a package of soda mints and Peavy gave me a glass of water. Let's leave your liver out of this. <laughs> what about Bullard? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> now, look here, Judge. A cashier's check. A deposit on my house. Now, who purchased this check? I can't tell you, Gildy. I don't have my glasses. The name is not. Have you ever seen this check before? Me? Oh, my goodness. Look, Horace, you're supposed to be an old friend of mine. Do you want to see me lose my house? Do you want to see it sold right out from under my little family? No, Gildy. Besides, but... you're my attorney. I know, Gildy, but I'm Rumson Bullard's attorney, too. And he pays me. Oh, so it is Bullard who's buying my house. I didn't say that, Gilda. It isn't ethical for an attorney to talk about his client's affairs. But it is Bullard. I didn't say it was, and I didn't say it wasn't. Well, you didn't say it wasn't? Well, I didn't say it was. Well, was it or wasn't it? It was. I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> well, you said it, Judge. It was. Now, Gilda. I did it. I set a trap, trap for a mouse and caught an old goat. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, Bertie. Hello, Gildersleeve. Well, Mr. Bullard. I must remember to have that doorbell changed. I don't care for it. What's this? Oh, I forgot to mention, Gildersleeve, I bought your house. You did? Well, Bullard, how could have you have done such a thing? I've been waiting for an opportunity to remove you from the neighborhood, Gildersleeve. You and your burning tires. How happy I'm going to be when you're gone. But where will I go? How about Canada? Uh, now, Bullard, you wouldn't take advantage of an old neighbor, an old friend. An old neighbor? No. An old friend? No. <laughs> you, Gildersleeve? Yes. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to come in and look over the house. Well, I can't stop you, Bullard. It's your house. How true? How true? Uh, uh, let's see. What room is this, Gildersleeve? Now, you know the rooms. You've been in this house before. I know. But I'd like to hear you tell me about it. Oh, please, old neighbor, have mercy on me. I, I'm in an awful pickle. Well, I understand this is National Pickle Week. <laughs> tell me about the rooms, Gildersleeve. You're a hard man, Bullard. Thank you. Proceed, Gildersleeve. Well, this is the living room. Imagine. Mm. You... What was that, Gildersleeve? Uh, nothing. My asthma. <laughs> I assume there are other rooms in the house? Oh, yes, we, we have a kitchen. Well, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> From the fumes which are constantly drifting across the street, I thought you did all your cooking over the incinerator. <laughs> uh, that, I presume, is the dining room? Yes, that's our dining room. You eat in there? Yes. Standing up? <laughs> it's quite large when you're in it. I doubt if it would seem large when you're in it. <laughs> Bullard, have a heart. Give me a chance. Call off the deal. Nothing doing. I've waited years for this. On the day you move, I'm going to sit across the street on my veranda and cheer each passing piece of furniture. It will be a day of song and festivity. I shall adorn my cornices with bunting. <laughs> All right, Bullard, I'm licked. But how did you do it? It was quite simple, really. It was? Yes. I induced young Thompson to talk you into listing your house for sale by giving him a listing on mine. When he came back with your listing, I gave him a cashier's check immediately. Uh, is that how you did it? Yes, indeed. Your experience to the contrary, Gildersleeve, it requires brains to get along in this world. Well, by George Bullard, I've got to hand it to you. You're clever. Quite true. And as I have so often said, Gildersleeve, the day would come when I would have the last laugh. <laughs> this is the day. <laughs> ah! 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 
never sleep. Well, Bronco. Oh, there you are, Mr. Bullard. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, what an ambitious young man. What is it, my boy? I just sold your house. <laughs> well, that's fine. That... What? <laughs> my house? Well, Bullard, aren't you lucky? Oh, no, not my house. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you signed the listing, Mr. Bullard, and I have a cashier's check for the deposit. No, no. I... Yes, sir, here it is. The cashier's check you gave me for Mr. Gildersleeve. He's using it as a deposit to buy your house. <laughs> well, check Gildersleeve. I got it trapped. As you said, Bullard, this is the day for the last laugh. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if you're planning a party luncheon, here's a beauty of an idea for you. Get some big red tomatoes, the kind you're just beginning to see in the market, cut them in quarters, and arrange them petal fashion on a bed of lettuce. Then, right in the center, put a generous mound of chicken salad. But not just any chicken salad. I mean your own extra delicious kind. The kind you make with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip's lively, teasing flavor is just the thing to add a delightfully distinctive goodness to that salad. Try it and see if you and your best guests don't agree with the millions who prefer Miracle Whip. Now, just a minute, Gildersleeve. We've got him where we want him, Bronco. Well, yeah, but Mr. Gildersleeve... What's going on here? What's all the racket, Uncle? Nothing at all, children. We just bought Mr. Bullard's house. No, you haven't. We'll call out both deals. Forget the whole thing. But what about my commission? I sold two houses. Yeah, well, Bullard, if you want to keep your house, you pay commissions on both houses. Both houses? I'll only pay commission on one. It's a deal. <laughs> you pay Bronco the commission on yours, and I'll pay him the commission on mine. He can take mine out and bacon and eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Bronco sold a house. He sold two houses, Bertie. Ain't that grand? Mr. Gillsleeve, you know what Mr. Bronco is? Yes, Bertie. He's a natural bond salesman. <laughs> Bertie, show Mr. Bullard the back door. Leroy, put the tire back on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gloria Holliday, Dick Crenna, Gil Gordon, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. What about me? This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. suits your taste. Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite. Either way, you like craft prepared mustard, for there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but smooth, and craft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Now, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.
The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. It's different, delightfully different from any dressing you've ever tasted before. Miracle Whip has a lively, teasing flavor that's peppy, but not a bit too sharp. It's a goodness that's downright appealing. Get Miracle Whip tomorrow. Like millions of folks everywhere... You'll be mighty pleased with Miracle Whip. There's a new day dawning in summer fields, bright and clear. Skies are blue, birds are on the wing. It's going to be a wonderful day. Yes, sir, it's bound to be, because the great Gildersleeve is coming down to breakfast this morning with a smile on his face and a song in his heart. There's a rainbow round my shoulder, and the skies are blue above. la da dee la da dee Well, good morning, little family. Good morning, Auntie. Leroy, aren't you going to say good morning to your old uncle? Can't. Got egg in my mouth. Well, take your time. There's some more in your face. <laughs> Ugh, what an appetite. Uh, 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 uh. Morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. Well, morning, Bertie. I'm really hungry this morning. I could eat a couple of horses. Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you have a fried or scrambled? Yeah. <laughs> Sunny side up. <laughs> I can make jokes, too. <laughs> Everybody's in such a good humor this morning. Well, you're feeling pretty grand yourself, aren't you? Yeah, what happened? You well, know, nothing happened. Simply my usual frame of mind, Leroy, on a fine summer morning. I'll bet I know, Unky. You were dreaming about Miss Milford last night. Catherine, no. You were talking in your sleep, Unk. Oh, well, I was probably just trying to get comfortable talking to my pillow. You got a pillow named Sweetheart? Yep. Leroy. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, what happened to the bridegroom? Where's Bronco? Oh, he left early this morning. He had to get down to the real estate office. He's really working. Yeah, he's got a hot prospect. Uh, what an eager beaver, chasing hot prospects before breakfast. <laughs> you should have made a juice, Mr. Gillsleeve, in the morning paper. Uh, I think I'll drink the juice first, Bertie. Well, I'll take the paper, Auntie. What a way to read the paper. She always looks for the society page. Well, girls like that sort of thing. Pass the salt, please, Leroy. Society. Susie Snort, plight's trough. The salt, please, Leroy. Mamie Mop Handle, plight's trough. The salt, Leroy. Why do they always say they're plighting a trough? Leroy, the salt. Why don't they say they're getting married? Leroy? Yeah? The salt. Is that what you wanted? Oh, goodness. Here's something interesting, Uncle Morris. Oh, what is it, my dear? The nursing staff at the hospital is giving a dance Saturday night. Well, good. Has Catherine asked you to take her, Unky? Asked me? Well, sure, it's a Sadie Hawkins dance. You know, where the girls invite the boys. Oh, it's a lot of fun. She'll have to call you up and ask you for a date. Ask me for a date? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's quite an idea. You better get busy, Uncle. She's liable to ask Dr. Olson instead of you. Yeah, don't you worry about your old uncle, my boy. Hasn't she asked her yet, Unky? Well, not yet, Marjorie. Give her time. Still early. The dance doesn't come off until Saturday night. As far as Dr. Olson is concerned, she wouldn't ask him. Not a chance. I don't know. Me either. He's got a car with two exhaust pipes. <laughs> and he's got ears with no lobes, too, Leroy. <laughs> and if you're finished with your breakfast, why don't you go out and play? Have fun. It's fun here. <laughs> Gee, Yankee, I remember before I was married. Uh, before I was married. <laughs> she was waiting to say that. Well, seriously, Yankee, if there was a dance on Saturday night and I hadn't been asked for a date, I'd be worried. Well, my dear, that's the difference that experience makes. If Catherine calls and asks me for a date Saturday night, well and good, I may accept. If she doesn't call, I won't even think about it. But how can you be so unconcerned? As I said, experience, my dear. Nothing attracts a woman quite so much as a man who simply doesn't care. Well, you're right, Unky. Absolutely. There's the phone. Unky! 
I'll get it, Bertie. I'll get it. It's probably Catherine. I mean, it's probably for me. Holy cow, look at him go. Hello. Oh, Bronco. Yeah, she's here. <laughs> it's for you, Marjorie. Your husband. Thanks, Lucky. Now, you finish your breakfast, Leroy. I'm uh, going to work. Through the kitchen? Well, I'm going to get some matches to light my cigars while I'm at the office. I just wondered. <laughs> Pinkerton man. Yeah. Uh, Bertie. Your bacon and eggs coming right up, Miss Gilfleet. Bacon and eggs? Oh, yes, breakfast. Well, I wasn't thinking about that exactly, Bertie. Uh, I was wondering if we ever returned that pie tin to Miss Milford's mother. Pie tin? I could stop by Miss Milford's on the way to the office and drop it off. Uh, where is it, Bertie? Oh, I took that back last week. Oh, you did, eh? Well, uh, isn't there something we have of theirs that should be returned? A cookbook, maybe? Oh, Mr. Gill, see, if you're going by Miss Milford's, you don't want to take a no pie tin or cookbook. You can take us some flowers. Flowers? How about some of them roses in the backyard? Hey, that's not a bad idea, Bertie. If there's one thing a girl always likes to get is roses. Yeah, that's right, Bertie. A girl don't care nothing about pie tins or cookbooks. I know, Bertie. A girl likes to get roses. Yes, Bertie. Girls don't like pie tins or cookbooks. All right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know what a girl likes? Yes, Bertie. That's right. A girl likes to get roses. (laughs) All right, Bertie. Gather a bunch of them. Leroy, where are the snippers? Ah, uh, Catherine should love these roses. Awful lot of them, though. I asked Bertie for a bunch, and I got a whole armful. I feel like a bridesmaid. Well, the more the better. If I send a rose to you. For every time you made me blue, you'd have a room full of Catherine. Well, Throckmorton. It is Throckmorton, isn't it? Yeah, it's me. Uh, I wasn't sure at first. I just caught a glimpse of you through the leaves. I brought you a couple of roses, Catherine. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Just going by. Thought I'd stop in and say hello. Well, how nice. Yeah. Isn't it a lovely day? Is it? Hmm? Sure. Lovely day to stop and see a lovely lady. (laughs) Oh, Throckmorton, I'm not even awake yet. Oh, my sleeping beauty. Really? Throckmorton, right now I'm just a tired nurse with aching feet. You look more like a princess to me. A princess waiting for a prince to come along with a little glass slipper. All right, if you say so. (laughs) The reason I stopped in, our little telephone was busy quite a while last night. Oh? Yeah, I thought you might have tried to call. I can't imagine for what reason. No. I didn't try to call. Well, good. Wouldn't want you to call and get a busy signal. <laughs> oh, there's my phone. Probably Dr. Olson calling from the hospital. How do you know I was here? He must have been following me with radar. I beg your pardon? Eh, uh, Nothing. <laughs> Excuse me, Throckmorton. Well, it's all right. I'll I'll see you later, Catherine. Oh, well, goodbye, and thanks for the flowers. Uh, You're welcome. If I sent a rose to you for every time you made me blue. Hi, Unc. Leroy, what are you doing here? Just scouting around. Any luck? Oh, for... (laughs) Leroy, why don't you mind your own business? I don't have any business. Well, go find some. Did she ask you to the dance? Oh, my God. Leroy, I'm not even thinking about that. I can't understand why you and your sister expect me to act like some giddy high school girl waiting for the phone to ring. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'll get it, Leroy. Make mine for new house. That's the good humor man. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. How are you this morning? I'm glad to hear it, Bessie. Yes, sir. What? What do you mean, what? Well, I said, how are you this morning? And you said, I'm glad to hear it. Is that right? Bessie, what are you talking about? (laughs) Well, I was, I mean, you came in and, 
Mr. Gildersleeve, you confuse me. Bessie, that's not possible. <laughs> What's the matter with everybody this morning? All going around in circles. Well, I'm all right. I think. Why do they have to put bells like that on ice cream wagons? Bells? I don't hear any bells. What's that? Bells. I don't hear any bells. Mr. Gildersleeve, you just... Well, that is when you... Well... Bessie, how do you feel this morning? I don't know. Uh, what an office. Bring me the mail, Bessie. Yes, sir. Just as soon as the postman brings it. Uh, uh, uh. Have there been any calls, Bessie? Telephone. Who's it for? What? Bessie, the phone didn't even ring. What phone? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are going around in circles this morning. Morning, Bessie. Is the water commissioner in? Yes, I, I think he's in. He's in his office. Come on in, Judge. Well, good morning, Gilda. How's the water department this morning? Is everything H2O? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a combination. An old goat with jokes. <laughs> How, Gilda? All right, Judge. Relax. Sit down. Thank you. What are you going to wear at the dance Saturday night, Gilda? What dance? Good gracious, Gilda, the hospital dance. Hasn't Catherine asked you yet? Well, not exactly, Judge. Miss Matterhorn, head nurse in maternity, called me night before last. <laughs> She's very cute, Gilda. Yes, yes. Drives an adorable car. I'll bet. I can imagine. Probably a hard top stutz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live a dance on Saturday night. Do you suppose Miss Milford's dating somebody else? Judge, I'm not the least bit interested. It's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Grown men like yourself, twittering around like sorority girls waiting for a date. Well, of course, I don't blame you for being a little sore since Catherine hasn't called you. I did it all, Judge. A lot of things more important than a Saturday night dance. Oh, of course. There's the phone, Bessie. Answer it. Expecting a call, Gilda? <laughs> <laughs> don't be so nosy, Judge. Well, Catherine, I told you she'd call, Judge. Oh. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Throckmorton. How are you? Fine. Well, good. Uh, Throckmorton, there was something I wanted to ask you. Really? You want to hear this, Judge? She's going to ask me for a date. Let me listen, Gildy. Go away, Judge. <laughs> yes, Catherine? I forgot to mention this to you when you were here this morning. Oh, that's all right. What is it, Catherine? Our water heater is leaking. <laughs> Could you send a man out to fix it? Zeke. What did you say, Throckmorton? Uh, I'm just thinking. I could do it. Uh, I'd be happy to. This evening? Sure. Would you, Throckmorton? Certainly love to. All right. Don't forget your overalls. Oh, sure. I'll bring overalls. Uh, see you then. Bye. What did she say, Gilda? Well, uh, I heard you say you were going to bring overhauls, an ideal costume for a Sadie Hawkins party. I'll bet you got an invitation. Uh, well, yes, Judge, I did, sort of. Good for you, Gilda. Now you and Catherine and Miss Matterhorn and I can have a jolly foursome. My, won't we kick up our heels? Now, now wait a minute. I'll yeah. see you later, Gilda. I have to go down and buy some dancing pumps. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Horace. Uh, what's the difference? Let him think I have a date. Won't do any harm. He's so happy. I wish I was. We'll return to the great Gildersleeve's problem in just a moment. I know it isn't easy to plan a company menu that'll please all the guests, but when it comes to choosing the salad most likely to succeed, well, there you're in luck. Because any salad that you top with plenty of Miracle Whip salad dressing will win cheers. Yes, whether it's a simple fruit salad or a fancy gelatin mold, topped with Miracle Whip, it's bound to please. Miracle Whip is the most popular salad dressing ever created. Millions of folks prefer its peppy, appealing flavor. Not too bland, not too sharp. Delicious Miracle Whip has a just right goodness folks go for. And it's a distinctive flavor. A flavor that just can't be copied. Because Miracle Whip is made from a secret recipe known only to craft. 
Actually, Miracle Whip is a different kind of dressing that gives you the best qualities of boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. As a result, you get truly outstanding flavor. And that's not all. In texture, too, Miracle Whip is outstanding with a velvety smoothness that's achieved by a special craft beater. So whether it's an extra fancy company salad you're planning or just the plain everyday family kind, for lots of compliments, make it with America's favorite salad dressing, smooth and delicious Miracle Whip. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Right now, the water commissioner has something on his mind. And it's not water. Why, George, I'm not going to let a little thing like a dance bother me. Catherine doesn't want to ask me to go. All right. She wants to ask that sneaky intern, Dr. Olson. That's her business. Not even going to think about it. I wonder why she hasn't called. Bertie. Oh, that you, Miss Gilsleeve? Yeah, I thought I'd get home a little early for dinner tonight. Anybody call, Bertie? No, sir, no calls. No calls, eh? No, sir. Anybody um, stop by? No, sir, nobody stopped by. Nobody stopped by, huh? No, sir. Just wondered. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll sit down and read the paper till dinner's ready. Uh, 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 uh. Miss Gilfleet? Yes, Bertie? You got the paper upside down. What? Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. Yes. Hello, Anki. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Any word from Miss Milford? Miss Milford? Catherine? Uh, about what, Marjorie? Well, you know, Anki, about the dance. Oh, that <laughs> completely slipped my mind. She didn't even call you at the office? Well, no, I guess she didn't. I've been pretty busy all day. Uncle Mort, how can you be so casual about it? I should think you'd be going out of your mind. Me? No. As I said this morning, my dear, the only way to keep a woman interested is to pay no attention to her. Well, I thought possibly Miss Milford called you at the office. There was somebody using our line all afternoon. There was? Hmm. She might have tried to call here later this afternoon. What, Unky? Uh, just mumbling, my dear. Going over to Miss Milford's this evening to fix the water heater. I'll probably get it all straightened out then. Sure. Not that it makes any difference to me, of course. Of course not. Hi, Uncle. Uh, hello, Leroy. Any luck? <laughs> Leroy? I'm just interested, Uncle. Yes, yes. It's like a baseball game. I want to see who's going to win. <laughs> baseball game. And tell Bertie I'll be back in time for dinner, children. I'm going to run down to Peavy's drugstore for a minute. Well, dinner's almost ready, Uncle. Oh, well, I suppose I can go later. When I was coming home just now, I saw Miss Milford going into the drugstore. You did? Uh, on second thought, I guess I'll take a quick run down there. You better hurry, Uncle. She might leave before you get there. Leroy, that's not why I'm going. Then what are you so excited about? Who's excited? Simply because I want to run down to a dance to pick up a drugstore? I mean, <laughs> I mean get a cigar for Catherine? Oh. <laughs> Where's my hat? On your head. What's it doing there? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? You looking for somebody, Mr. Gildersleeve? What? Oh, no, Peavy. I'm just browsing around. <laughs> well, if you're looking for Miss Milford, she isn't behind the telephone booth. I wasn't looking for Miss Milford. What were you looking for? Nothing, Peavy. I was just looking around. She anything interesting? <laughs> no. Miss Milford was in about five minutes ago, but she left. Oh? Well, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going over to her house tonight anyway. Better give me a box of those assorted chocolates, Peavy. Very well. Not the dusty one, Peavy. <laughs> How's it? Well, I guess that'll do. I understand the nurses at the hospital are holding a big dance Saturday night. Uh, Sadie Hawkins' party, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The girls are inviting the men. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's so funny about that, Peavy? Nothing, except my cigar business has dropped off a lot the last couple of days, mm -hmm. especially with the bachelors. Why is that? They're all sitting home by the telephone. Oh. <laughs> Waiting for a ring, a ting, a ring. Ring, a ting, a ling. Well, maybe some of your customers are waiting to be invited to that dance, PV, but not me. Yes, I know. Judge Hooker was in. He told me you'd been invited. What? Yes, he said Miss Milford had asked you to go with her. I know, but... That's what you told him, wasn't it? Yes, but... Miss Milford's a very attractive girl. PV, you didn't say anything about it to Miss Milford, did you? Well, yes, I told her I'd heard that she had invited you to go to the dance. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anything wrong, Miss Milford? PV, why did you have to open your big mouth? What did she do? Well, she bought a lipstick. What did she say? She asked Dr. Olson how he liked the shade of the lipstick. Dr. Olson? Peavy, why didn't you tell me he was with her? You didn't ask me. <laughs> what did Dr. Olson say? He said, you're beautiful in any shade of lipstick. He said that to her? Well, Mr. Gillespie, he wouldn't say it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh! See you later, Peavy. tell the judge Catherine had invited me, the old blabbermouth, and Peavy telling Catherine, Gildersleeve, you put your big foot in it this time. Hello, Gilder. Wait for me. Oh, there's a judge again. I wish I could hide someplace. No, it's too late. Oh, I'm glad I caught up with you, Gilder. I want to talk to you about Saturday night. Not now, Judge. I've got a lot of important things on my mind. Oh, but Gilder, business can wait. Let's live. We're only young once. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting older by the minute. We'll all go in Miss Matterhorn's car. It's a two-seater. Two-seater? You and Miss Milford can sit in the back seat going to the dance, and Miss Matterhorn and I will occupy the back seat going home. I think that's only fair, Gildy, since it's Miss Matterhorn's car. Yes, yes. Going to be jolly, Gildy. The rear view mirror has been conveniently removed. <laughs> Please, Judge, isn't there something you have to do? Some place you have to be? Aren't you late for an appointment? Gildy, I have only one appointment that matters. Eight o'clock, Saturday night. Oh, for, how do you tie a can to an old goat? I have my wardrobe all laid out. It's a Sadie Hawkins dance, so I'm wearing blue jeans and my green cape. Oh, brother. <laughs> Miss Matterhorn is going to find me irresistible. I'm going to put Sen Sen in my Kalak water. <laughs> That does it. I've got to go, Judge. Well, I'm going in the same direction, Gilda. I know, but I'm going faster than you are. Hello, Anki. We're waiting dinner for you. Uh. You children, go ahead and eat. I'm not very hungry. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. Any luck? Right. <laughs> go to the table, Leroy. But, gee, I'm curious. Never mind. Aren't you going to eat anything, Uncle? No, oh, my dear, I've lost my appetite. Dinner's on, Mr. Gilfleet. I think I'll skip dinner tonight, Bertie. You going over to Miss Milford's to fix the water heater? Water heater? <laughs> I forgot about that. You look tired, Uncle. Do you think you should go tonight? It's not a question if I should. It's do I dare to. What do you mean? Nothing, my dear. Where are my overalls, Bertie? Get the pipe wrench, Leroy. You going, Anki? Yeah. We all have to go sometimes. <laughs> I'll go tonight. <laughs> say to Catherine when she opens the door. What can I say? Can't just stand there like a big oaf. Hmm, maybe I could. <laughs> uh, what am I going to tell her? Could tell her the truth. No, not that. I don't know, though. Why not? Tell her exactly what happened. Make a clean breast of the whole thing. Why, George, that's precisely what I'm going to do. Confess everything. I don't know why my knees are shaking. What am I afraid of? 
Catherine, that little tiny girl. But she's so pretty. Who is it? Oh, Throckmorton, it's you. Yeah, it's me, Catherine. <laughs> Won't you come in? Come in? Oh, yes. Thank you. I hope you'll forgive me for being so dull when you stopped by this morning, Throckmorton. Dull? You? Oh, I've been working night and day all week at the hospital. I- I'm simply walking around in a fog. No, you're not. Catherine, I want to explain about... Throckmorton, why are you wearing overalls? Huh? The dance isn't until Saturday night. Dance? I hope I didn't tell you the wrong day. What? Oh, I was so worried. I thought I'd called you and asked you about the nurse's dance Saturday night, and then I wasn't sure. You thought you'd called? Yeah? I didn't want to call you back and ask if I'd called. Naturally. You would have thought I was stupid. Sure. I mean, no. (laughs) I'm going to be perfectly truthful, Throckmorton. I didn't know if I'd called you or not. And it was Mr. Peavy who saved my life. Mr. Peavy? He told me that Judge Hooker had told him that you had told Judge Hooker that I had asked you to the dance. Those two fine old men. (laughs) There. Now I've confessed. Well, little Catherine. Come here. Oh. (laughs) Drop (laughs) more. Now I remember why you're wearing the overalls. The water heater is leaking. Let it leak. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Next time you want to please your guests with a super good appetizer, serve a big platter of stuffed eggs. And for that extra party touch, try this. Chop up some crisp broiled bacon and add it to the egg yolk stuffing. Of course, you'll want to add salad dressing, too. Just the right amount of just the right salad dressing. And what could be more right than Miracle Whip with its teasing, tempting flavor, the delicate, zesty goodness that's made it the most popular salad dressing ever created. Remember, when you want a salad dressing with a truly distinctive goodness, you'll be delighted with the one and only Miracle Whip. Ah, that Catherine. What a girl. Ah, ah, What a wonderful day this has been. Hi, Al. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Rock. You bet, my boy. Lots of luck. Huh? Yes, sir. Come on, Leroy. Let's go home. Okay. But first, can I say something? Certainly, my boy. What is it? Well, our scoutmaster asked if we'd tell everybody to be extra careful with matches and stuff when we're out in the woods this summer. Oh? Do everything we can to prevent forest fires. Be real careful. Everybody. Very good, Leroy. We'll all be especially careful. Good night, folks. See you all next week. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, Don Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Gloria Holliday, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night to you. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild. Or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this. When you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Now, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.
The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is a different kind of salad dressing with a really different flavor. Lively and teasing, it's not too sharp and yet not too bland. Millions of folks call it just exactly right. Try Miracle Whip on your salads. Just one taste, and you'll know why it's the most popular salad dressing ever created. Delightful and different Miracle Whip. Let's see what's going on in Summerfield. It's early on a summer evening as we find the great Gildersleeve in the parlor, comfortably settled in his favorite chair with a good cigar and the evening paper. Uh, uh, wonder if there's good news tonight. Hmm. President Truman spends weekend on his yacht. Well, good. Hope you had a nice breeze. <laughs> Huh? Uh, glancing through the paper, Leroy. Hey, who's the girl in the bathing suit? What? Oop. It says that her name is Miss Quick Drying Glue of 1950. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is that a real name, Unc? <laughs> Hardly, my boy. And please don't breathe down the back of my neck. You're getting your bubble gum in my back hair. <laughs> Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort! There's Marjorie. I'm in the parlor. Oh, I've got the most wonderful news, Unky. I just came home with Bronco. That's wonderful, no? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Sit down, my dear. Calm down and tell me all about it. Well, Bronco's doing just wonderfully in the real estate business, Uncle Mort. He'll be in in a minute and tell you all about it. He sold a big piece of property over by the river. Well, good for Bronco. Oh, isn't he just perfect, Unky? Yeah. And he's my husband. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and just think, Unky, we've only been married three weeks. And already he's a big businessman. Yeah, that Bronco's kicking up a lot of dust. And Bronco's so clever, Anki. Oh, yeah. Bronco, Bronco, Bronco. She never quits. <laughs> oh, Marge. In here, dear. Here he comes. We have to kneel? Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, you stop. Well. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Bronco. Good evening, Leroy. Good evening to you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about it, Bronco. Tell him the good news. Well, I made my first big sale today, Mr. Gildersleeve. As they say in real estate terms, I knocked over a Lulu. Yeah, knocked over a Lulu, eh? Well, that's fine, Bronco. Glad to hear it. Well, tell him all about it, darling. I think I'll go out and get some air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's the old Wooligan place over on the river, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I've sold it. It's all signed up. Great. Make a nice commission, did you? Well... well yes, what about the commission, Bronco? Well, the commission is kind of unusual. Uh -huh. You see, I get part of it in cash and part of it in a... In a... In a what, Bronco? Well, in a houseboat. It... <laughs> a houseboat? A houseboat? Yeah, it's sort of a house on a boat. You know. It... That's quite a lulu. <laughs> <laughs> Bronco, what in the world are you doing and what are you going to do with a houseboat? Well, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Somebody get a houseboat? Leroy, I thought you were outside getting some air. I got some. Well, go get some more. <laughs> I want to hear about the houseboat. Well, Unky, Bronco got part of his commission in cash. Huh? And a houseboat, well, well, it's something. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing. It's not your fault, Bronco. <laughs> you really did very well for a young man just starting out. Simply takes time and experience to develop a good business sense. And as you say, you did get some cash. Did you get a houseboat? Oh, I guess I should have talked to you before I made the deal, Mr. Gildersleeve. Did you get a houseboat? Well, I'd have been happy to help you, Bronco, but don't you worry about it. You can't expect to become a shrewd businessman overnight. Did you get a houseboat? <laughs> well, I think it's wonderful, Bronco. Did you get a houseboat? Yeah, you're a good boy, Bronco. And believe me, I'm not laughing at you, but it strikes me so funny. A houseboat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake. Fire! Oh, 
Who's what? Who got the houseboat? Oh, sir. Bronco <laughs> did, Leroy. No kidding? Yeah, no kidding. My own brother-in-law. Now, I guess I could sell it for something, couldn't I, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, there's not much of a market for houseboats, uh, my boy. If I were you, I'd simply charge it up to experience. <laughs> Think of the fun you'll have telling your grandchildren about it. Yeah. <laughs> Live and learn, Bronco. Well, I've got to go up and dress now. Houseboat. <laughs> I'm running over to Miss Milford's for a while this evening. Well, next time I have a problem, I'll talk it over with you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sure. What a fine boy. I'm just finishing up the dishes, Rockmorton. Come out in the kitchen and talk to me. Love to, Catherine. Uh, why not give me a towel? You wash and I'll dry. Fine. Here, let me put an apron on you. Well, Ruffles, cute. Mm. <laughs> By the way, I heard about Bronco this evening. He sold the old Willigan place on the river. That's wonderful. Yeah, took a houseboat for part of his commission. A houseboat? Yeah, a houseboat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Bronco's just a wide-eyed, inexperienced boy, Catherine. Not a shrewd bone in his whole body. Imagine taking a houseboat. Well, I don't know, Throckmorton. I'd love a houseboat. You would? Mm. <laughs> Imagine floating along, the cool breeze from the river drifting in the windows. Yeah, but... Uh... On moonlit nights, reclining chairs on the deck, watching the twinkling lights. Hmm. <laughs> it would be like having a little world all of your own. A lovely island in a sea of stars. Soft music, little waves whispering under the bow. Fireflies weaving magic patterns in the night. Our little chairs side by side. Your little pink hand in mine. <laughs> Drifting down a silver path of moonlight. And you're so beautiful. Catherine. Here's a dish towel. <laughs> fell in the river. <laughs> well, you better dry the glasses first, Throckmorton. Yes, yes. By George, the more I think of it, Catherine, the more I'm convinced that a houseboat is a great idea. Oh, just a dream, Throckmorton. Dream nothing. I could have Broncos. The boy doesn't want it. He'd sell it for a song. He'd give it to me. Oh, now, Throckmorton. He would. Simple, big-hearted Bronco. Why, he'd let me have it in a minute. Say, a houseboat with my name on it. S.S. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what an idea. Excuse me, Captain. I'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? We'll go down and sit on the deck of my houseboat. Where are you going? Got to go home and see Bronco and find a couple of reclining chairs. <laughs> <laughs> is ringing. They seem to say, good old Bronco. He'll be tickled to death to have somebody take that houseboat off his hands. He'll probably want to give it to me, but I'll insist that he takes something for it. Well, there's little Marjorie and Bronco sitting on the couch now. Hello, children. You back already, Yankee? Was Miss Milford home? Oh, yes, she was home, but I have some important things to attend to. Um, have you thought any more about your houseboat, Bronco? Oh, not much, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm afraid I have a white elephant. White elephant, eh? Too bad. Well... I'm going upstairs and do some sewing, darling. All right, dear. You're so handsome. And you're so pretty. <laughs> yeah, see you later, Marjorie. Your tie is the exact color of your eyes. It is? Polka-dotted eyes. <laughs> with you if you want me to, darling. Oh, no, you don't have to stay down here. Well, I will if you want me to. Oh, my goodness. You do whatever you want to do, dear. Well, I want to do whatever you want me to do, darling. Why don't we all go upstairs? <laughs> all right, I'll go. Bye-bye, honey. Bye-bye, dear. 
Be sure to drop him a postcard when you get there. Uh, now, where were we, Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, we were on your white elephant. Oh, yeah, yeah, the houseboat. Oh, I'm not very smart, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, you are too, Bronco. You just haven't learned the ropes about business yet, that's all. Now, I was thinking, if you wanted to, I could probably take the boat off your hands... Uh, just to help you get rid of it. Oh, no, it's very kind of you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I couldn't let you do that. But, Bronco, I'm not doing you a favor. I'd like to have the houseboat. I might be able to use it sometime, somehow. Well... Of course, I don't expect you to give it to me. No, indeed. Well... No, I insist on paying you something for it, my boy. Oh, I don't want to take money from Marjorie's uncle. But this is business, my boy. Now, you're the seller and I'm the buyer. You have to take something for it. You name the price. Whatever you say. Gee, I don't know if I want to sell it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oop. Uh, now, wait, you have to. I mean, uh, what'll you do with it? Oh, well, I guess I could keep it. Keep it? Bronco, on what you're making, you can't support a wife and a houseboat. But I don't want to take money from you. Bronco, stop saying you don't want to take money from me. I want to buy your houseboat. You name the price and I'll buy it. Well, if you insist, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll sell it to you for just what I have in it. Just what you have in it, eh? Fine. Is that fair, Mr. Gildersleeve? Fair? Well, of course. How much do you have in it? Two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Two hundred and thirty, Zeke? <laughs> Is that fair, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's... <coughs> sure, I... Well, then you've bought yourself a houseboat, Mr. Gildersleeve. But... Thanks a lot. You don't have to give me the check now. Tomorrow's uh, all right. Tomorrow, yes. Oh, you're swell, Mr. Gildersleeve. I guess I'll go up and see how Marjorie's doing. Do Good night. Thanks again. Bronco, hey! Two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Wait, what happened? How did he do that? We'll return to the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Now, it's been said that you just can't please everybody. For example, take salads. Some like colorful fruit combinations... And some like fresh mixed garden vegetables. Some folks like a shimmering gelatin mold. And others won't have anything but the hearty meat or seafood kind. But when it comes to salad dressing, well, there most everyone is pleased with Miracle Whip. Yes, it's true. Millions actually prefer Miracle Whip. And no wonder. Miracle Whip has a delightfully different taste. That's because it's a different kind of salad dressing that combines for you the very best qualities of zesty boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And the recipe for this unique combination is a craft secret. So Miracle Whip's wonderful distinctive flavor simply can't be copied. Peppy, yet not a bit too sharp, Miracle Whip has a really appealing taste most folks agree is perfect. And perfect is the word for Miracle Whip's texture, too. Smooth as silk. It's made possible by a special craft beater. So when you want your salads to please everyone, make them with America's favorite salad dressing. Delicious and smooth Miracle Whip. Made by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner has spent a restless night. Now, this morning, he's called a special meeting of the Jolly Boys Club at Floyd's Barbershop. By George, if a man's friends can't help him out at a time of need, they don't deserve to be called friends. Darned houseboat. $235. What a slicker that Bronco is. Simple, big-hearted Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> I showed him the ropes and he put them around my neck. Good morning, Gelder. Uh, good morning, Judge. What's the purpose of the special meeting, Gelder? Well, this is the time for all fellow jolly boys to rally around, Judge. One of our members is in a pickle. Oh? Who is it, Gelder? Me. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it when we get in the barbershop, Judge. Well, I'm sure all the members will be eager to do whatever they can. Goodness, look at the front of Floyd's Barbershop. Mm. Circus posters all over the windows. Yeah, last year's circus. I do wish the Jolly Boys Club could have a more dignified place to meet. Say, what if we had a clubhouse, a nice place with a view of the water? What's that, Gildy? Never mind, Judge, you just gave me a beautiful thought. Step inside, old man. Thank you, Gildy. 
Well, here's the judge and the water commissioner. Greetings, Floyd. Hello, Floyd, and here's Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Judge. Peavy? Ain't enough chairs for the wall. One of you gents like to take the barber chair? Get a trim while the meeting's on. Kill two birds with one stone. No, thank you, Floyd. Where's the chief? Oh, he couldn't make it, Commish. The lock broke on the jail. He's got to stay and watch the prisoner. Yeah. Well, let's start the meeting, Gildy. We haven't much time. Yes, I had to close the pharmacy and put up my sign gone to the bank. I'd hate to have somebody go to the bank and find I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, all right, TV. And what's this about one of our members being in trouble, Commish? You ain't been tapping the till at the water department, have you? <laughs> no, Floyd. I had a little problem this morning, but I think I've solved it. Well, is the meeting adjourned? Yeah, now, wait a minute, Peavy. I'm just getting around to the important business. For a long time, we've said that the Jolly Boys Club should have a better place to hold meetings. Oh, my room upstairs ain't good enough, huh? I didn't say that, Floyd. It's just we need more room. Oh. Gildy, what are you driving at? Yeah, come to the point. All right, I will. How would you fellas like to be part owners of a beautiful houseboat? What? A house who? <laughs> just picture it, fellas. Our own little houseboat tied up at the bank of the river. A Jolly Boys clubhouse right on the water. Hey, Commish, where'd you get this idea? Where'd I get it? Yeah. Floyd, you know I'm always trying to think of ways to make the club better. Oh, yeah. Gildy, are you suggesting that the club should buy this houseboat? Well, I told Bronco that I would... Uh, I mean, it's a great opportunity, Judge. Think of it. On moonlight nights, chairs out on the deck, like a little world all our own, floating in a sea of stars. Makes me a little dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just picture the moonlight on the water, twinkling lights on the shore. What a place for singing. Yeah, not bad. The fish couldn't throw rocks at the windows. <laughs> Can't you just hear our voices floating out over the water? Imagine singing down by the old mill stream with a mill stream right under us. Does make an attractive picture, Gilda. You bet it does. This is the chance of a lifetime, fellas, and we can buy this little boat cheap, dirt cheap. Only two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Hmm, pretty expensive date. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a charming idea, Gildy, but the club doesn't have that much money. Now wait a minute. What about the sinking fund? <laughs> the sinking fund to buy a houseboat. Phoebe, yeah. <laughs> how about it, fellas? We've got about fifty dollars in the fund that we've been saving up to buy a pool table. Wouldn't you rather have a houseboat than a pool table? We could buy it on time. Fifty dollars down on the balance, like rent. I'm sure we could. What do you say, fellas? Well, I'll agree if I can be the skipper. Now, wait, Judge. This was my idea. Well, how about drawing straws? Good. I'll make the straw. I'll handle the straws. I'll take care of the straws. It was my idea. Well, why don't we all go over to the soda fountain and I'll furnish the straws? <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, Peavy. Come on, fellas. By George, I did it. Gildersleeve, you're clever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bertie. You seen Bronco? Yes, sir. He took Miss Marge and Leroy down to the soda fountain. <laughs> They're celebrating Mr. Bronco's big houseboat deal. Oh, that. You know something, Mr. Kilsley? Mr. Bronco sold you that houseboat. Bertie, he didn't sell it to me. I insisted on buying it. Yes, sir. Ain't many young men as smart as that Mr. Bronco is. Bertie, not that it makes any difference, but I was the one who made the deal. That Mr. Bronco is going places. He's got a head on his shoulder. I know, Bertie, but... That's a smart young man with a head on his shoulder. All right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know what that Mr. Bronco's got on his shoulder? Yes, Bertie. That's right. He's got a head. <laughs> Oh, what a family. <laughs> hey, Aunt, look, I got a cone. What? Strawberry. It's on Bronco. Well, look it up on the edges. It'll be on you. <laughs> uh, hello, Marjorie. Bronco's been telling us about the wonderful deal on the houseboat. Yeah, my glad he sold it to you. Now, just a minute. What a businessman. Isn't he wonderful, Uncle? Yes, yes. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, hello, Bronco. I've been waiting for you. Well, here I am, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> But well, I wanted to ask you, Bronco, you don't mind if I buy the houseboat on the installment plan, do you? Fifty dollars down, so much a month? Oh, no, that's all right. Whatever you say. I'm happy about the whole thing. Smiling businessman. <laughs> really, though, Anki, don't you think Bronco handled this very cleverly? 
Oh, Marge. Well, as I said before, Bronco did extremely well for a beginner. But now let me explain to you how I handled my side of this deal, Bronco. This is how a really smart businessman operates. I'm listening, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm eager to learn. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Now, here's what I did. I wanted the houseboat, you see, but I didn't want to invest my own capital. Pretty smart move right there. Absolutely. So I went to the Jolly Boys and convinced them to buy the houseboat for the club. You see how simple it is? I'm the president of the club, so naturally I have the use of the houseboat. And it doesn't cost me a cent. Say, you are clever, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what an operator. <laughs> In fact, I'm taking Miss Milford down there this very evening. I thought we'd sit on the deck a while, take my ukulele, and watch the moon come up. But the moon doesn't come up until after 11 o'clock. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> See the boat, Rock Morton. Have you been down here before? Oh, sure. I looked it over before we bought it. Hmm. It is pretty dark. Mm. Yeah. Don't you have any lights on it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Two kinds of lights. Sunlight and moonlight. <laughs> Rock Morton. Yeah, that must be it. Tied up alongside the pier here. Come on, Catherine. Mm. Yeah. What are you carrying, Rock Morton? Uh, um, folding chairs, ukulele... All the comforts of a houseboat. Well, it seems to be a boat. Sure. Floats. <laughs> Here, I'll help you onto the deck. All right. Watch your little steps. I'm right with you. Oh. There. There we are. We're floating. I can't see a thing. Well, the moon will be out in a little while. Give me your little hand. We'll go up on the forward deck. Well, all right. <laughs> What's this on the deck? Rocks? Ouch! Rock Morton, are you sure this is your boat? Sure. <laughs> rocks again. I can't understand how those rocks got here. Well, I hope you know where you're going. I can't see a thing. Me either. But this must be the forward deck. It needs a little sweeping up. <laughs> here. I'll set up the reclining chairs. Oops. Drop the ukulele. <laughs> Drop, Morton. Maybe if we just sat on the pier. Pier? No, indeed. My George, I worked hard to get the Jolly Boys to buy this boat. Now we're going to sit on it. Uh, there. Chairs all set. Everything perfect. Sit down, my queen. Where? Right here. Oh, I found it. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. This is the life, Catherine. Out on the deck of a lovely houseboat. Stars overhead. Rocks <laughs> under my feet. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll sweep them off tomorrow. Let's just think of how beautiful it is. The night sky, sparkling like the inside of a hat full of diamonds. Mm, it is lovely. Catherine, listen. I'm listening. I'd love to live in Loveland with a girl like you. And every day, a holiday with skies of baby blue. Where roses bloom forever And sweethearts are always true I'd love to live in love land With a girl Lovely, Throckmorton. Yeah. And here comes the moon up over the tack factory. Catherine. 
Yes, Rockmorton. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Oh, I have no. Somebody's coming up the pier. Take it easy, Judge. That water's wet. <laughs> I can see, Floyd. I have the flashlight. For goodness sake, the jolly boys. Yeah, but they aren't coming here, Throckmorton. Mm-hmm. Now watch your step, Floyd. Okay. Careful, Peter. You watch your own step, Judge. I'll watch mine. <laughs> Deliberately coming down here to ruin our evening. Yeah, but Throckmorton, they're going over there. Good. They're lost, getting on the wrong boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, that sounded like the commit. He heard me. Shh. Certainly did. Shine your light on that other boat, Judge. Oop, confound it all. Judge, turn off that flashlight. Why, Gildy, it's you. Yes, it's me. <laughs> what are you fellows doing poking around down here? We came down for a Frankfurter roast. Frankfurter roast? Judge, you don't even know where the boat is. Yes, we do, Gildy. We're standing on it. You're standing on it? Then where are we? You're sitting on a coal barge. <laughs> Barge. So that's what these rocks are. Uh, what is it, Gildy? Hard coal or soft coal? <laughs> that did it. Give me a piece of that coal. What are you going to do, Throckmorton? I'm going to put a lump on an old goat. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. During the months ahead, you'll probably be serving more buffet suppers than ever. And for that all-important salad course, try this. Prepare a variety of ice-cold and fresh garden vegetables, tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, carrots, or whatever your favorites, and arrange them on a tray of crispy greens. Then, as the final tempting touch, serve a specially good salad dressing. I'd say serve Miracle Whip. Millions of folks everywhere prefer its lively, teasing flavor. That distinctive taste, they say, is just exactly right. Try it. See if you don't enjoy compliments when your guests enjoy Miracle Whip. Uh, comfortable now, Catherine? Yes. Since you've kicked some of the coal in the water. <laughs> Gildy, won't you and Miss Milford join us jolly boys here on the houseboat? No, thanks, Horace. Coal dust in my shoes. What a sneaky thing to do to the president. Aren't you getting cold on that barge, Mr. Gildersleeve? Mm-hmm. Sitting on a ton of coal with his nurse? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Wise crackers. Perhaps we should go over Throckmorton. Wouldn't you enjoy it more on the SS Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve? Nah. I like it better here with you on the SS John L. Lewis. (laughs) (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. And now, we'd like you to meet a very good friend and neighbor, your retail grocer. Because he and his fellow retailers operate so efficiently, we in this country enjoy better meals. Meals that include more fresh fruits, vegetables, meat, and dairy products than ever before in history. To all the members of the National Association of Retail Grocers, who are holding their 51st annual convention at Chicago this week, the Kraft Foods Company sends warm greetings and best wishes for a successful meeting. Now, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.
transcribed. The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Here's a really different kind of salad dressing with a really different flavor. Downright appealing, Miracle Whip is not too sharp and yet not too mild. It has a just exactly right flavor folks really go for. Taste Miracle Whip yourself. Let your family enjoy it on a cool and colorful salad. See if you all don't agree with the millions of folks who prefer delightfully different Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve had spring fever today. He was moving around the office about as fast as Leroy's turtle. But things began to pick up for the water commissioner when the mayor asked him if he'd mind taking his vacation right away. Do I mind? (laughs) Children, Leroy, Marjorie, Bronco. Gee, I've got a lot of children. Where is everybody? You call me, Uncle? Yes, Leroy. Where are Marjorie and her bridegroom? Oh, they're out swinging in the hammock. I put it up and they took it. Now, I'm lovebirds. <laughs> well, lovebirds need a swing, Leroy. <laughs> if you ask me, those two need a cage. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy, let's go out and talk to them. I'm taking my vacation this year, the last two weeks in June. That soon? Oh, boy, where are we going, huh? Well, let's talk it over with Marjorie and Bronco, huh? Gosh. You. Gosh, are they going, too? They just got back off a honeymoon. But, Leroy, a honeymoon isn't a vacation. What's the difference? On both of them, you take trips. It... <laughs> well, there's a difference, Leroy. A honeymoon is without pay and a vacation's with pay. <laughs> uh-uh. Look at the newlyweds swinging in the hammock. Yeah. Um, can't just you and I go? What? I need a vacation from that lovey-dovey stuff. Hmm? Makes a little kid not even want to grow up. <laughs> Listen to him, Unc. Hmm? Isn't this wonderful, Bronco, darling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the luckiest person in the world. I've got you. No, Marge, darling. I'm the luckiest. I've got you. <laughs> No, I'm the luckiest. Oh, no, I'm the luckiest. They'll both be lucky if that old hammock doesn't break. (laughs) (laughs) Marjorie? Anyway, I'm the happiest person in the world. What did I tell you, Unc? Standing right beside them and they don't even see us. Love is blind. No, just a little deaf, Leroy. (laughs) Marjorie, Bronco, children. Leroy. Oh, Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Unky. We were just swinging in the hammock. Yeah, so I noticed. I thought I'd come out and talk to you about vacation. Yeah, Unky's got the last two weeks in June. Oh, that's wonderful, Unky. Well, that'll be in a couple of days. You bet. I'm a fast worker and a fast vacationer. How about it, Bronco? Can you take the time off from the real estate business? Well, I'll ask the boss. Huh? How about it, boss? Okay, Bronco. Uh, thanks, boss. Yep. You see, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm my own boss. <laughs> Oh, brother. (laughs) Yeah, very good, Bronco, very good. I can see this is going to be a great vacation. Oh, yes, sir. Marge and I are ready. I made a little money off you and the Jolly Boys when I sold you that houseboat, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes. Where are we going, Unky? Are we going to rent a cabin in the mountains again? How about a dude ranch? Like the Bar 20. Take it easy, Hoppy. We've had some very heavy expenses this year, what with the wedding and all. Yeah, that set you back, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I've been thinking we might vacation on the houseboat. On the houseboat? Hey, that'd be king. Sure, we can cruise down the river and stop whenever we feel like it. Have our own private riverboat. Boy, just like Huckleberry Finn. (laughs) 
Mr. Gildersleeve, you've got a dandy idea there. Huh? It does sound like fun, Unky. Bronco, we can stroll on the deck in the moonlight. Yeah. <laughs> well, Captain Gildersleeve will be on the bridge smoking a cigar. And I'll be catching catfish off the poop deck. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Leroy. Mr. Gildersleeve, who's going to cook the meals? It, meals? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, he would think of that. <clears throat> Growing husband. Well, for two weeks, I guess I could cook. I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy. I'm not going to let that happen to my catfish. <laughs> My cooking isn't that bad. Yeah, of course it isn't, my dear. But why don't we play safe and take Bertie, huh? Oh, good idea. Yeah? Not that I don't think you couldn't do it, Marge, darling, but we're still on our honeymoon. A born diplomat. <laughs> well, it's all set then, huh? We'll vacation on the houseboat. Well, have you talked to the other jolly boys about it, Uncle? No, I just got the idea. I'll tell Peavy and the fellows about it tomorrow. By George, this is the most wonderful idea I ever had. Hey, Unc, what if the Jolly Boys want a vacation on it, too? Leroy, they'd never think of that. No. Hello, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Well, you can just listen, Peavy. I want to tell you about a great idea I have. You don't say. You bet. Peavy? You know, that's quite a coincidence, Mr. Gildersleeve. I just had an idea myself. Care to hear it? Well, after I tell you mine, Peavy. <laughs> Think she's the only one that can have an idea. Huh? I was just telling the little family. Blow hard. Yeah. <laughs> Peavy, are you listening to me? Well, every word. <laughs> Well, I was telling the little family about my idea. Well, I was telling Mrs. Peavy about my idea. Peavy, listen to me. I'm the customer. You're not a customer till you buy something. Well, I'm not going to buy anything. Very well, then you can listen to my idea. Oh, my goodness. I was telling Mrs. Peavy we should spend our vacation on the houseboat. Well, that's fine, Peavy. The little family and I have... What? The houseboat. That's my idea. <laughs> I said it first. Yep. <laughs> All right, Peavy. When do you plan to use the houseboat? Well, Mrs. Peavy and I thought we'd cruise the last two weeks in August, after the mosquito season. Well, that won't interfere with my plans a bit. I'm going before then. Mm, so is the judge. What? Oh, well, here he comes now. Good morning, Judge. Ahoy, shipmates. Batten down the hatches. We're expecting a blow. <laughs> <laughs> Seagoing old goat. <laughs> Horace, what's this about you using the houseboat for your vacation? It's quite true, Gildy. I was just talking to the chief about it. The chief's in on this, too? Yes. He wants the boat the last two weeks in July. Oh? And I'm taking it the first two weeks. Well, that still leaves the last two weeks in June for me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you wouldn't? Floyd spoke for it then, Gilda. Floyd? Now, wait a minute. Why didn't you jolly boys discuss this thing with me? I'm the president. Well, the president does, doesn't have to know everything. <laughs> you failed to attend our last meeting, Mr. President. You preferred to go romancing with Miss Milford. Well? Besides, why take a busman's holiday? We never dreamed the water commissioner wanted to take his vacation on the water. <laughs> All right, Judge. Bye, George. I'll take this up at the next meeting, Saturday night, and I'll be there. Hey, Unc, you meeting with the Jolly Boys tonight? That's right, Leroy. You think we'll get to use the houseboat for our vacation, huh? Do you think we will? Don't worry, my boy. All I've got to do is convince him that the president should use the houseboat first. Who's ahead of you now, Unc? Well, Floyd Munson, the barber. Yeah? Why don't you tell him to let you go first or you'll quit getting haircuts? Huh? I will, too, gladly. Uh, now, Leroy, you're not letting your hair grow long. Why not? It'll cover my ears. <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> you off that jolly boy's meeting, Miss Gilsley? Yes, Bertie. You think we're going to get the sail on schedule? Well, that's why I called the meeting tonight, Bertie, to thresh this thing out. Yes, sir. I sure hope nobody throws a monkey wrench in the thrashing machine. 
Bertie ain't out of vacation since last year. It, well, neither have I, Bertie. And I sure hope this comes through. Bertie wants to go sailing. Don't worry about a thing, Bertie. I'll handle everything. Yes, sir? <laughs> I mean it. Remember, I'm the president. Well, I guess we in. We better be. Yes, sir. Bertie can't wait to walk the plank and get out in the kitchen gallery. Uh, that's galley, Bertie. Yes, sir. She can't wait to get out there and go cooking and sailing. <laughs> That's how Bertie wants to spend her vacation, just cooking and sailing. All right, Bertie. Miss Gilkey, do you know how Bertie wants to spend her vacation? <laughs> yes, Bertie. That's right, just cooking and sailing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I better swing this deal. Everybody's cooking on it. I mean, counting on it. <laughs> He seems to be a little late. Yes, where's our president? Well, we can sing until he comes, Chief. But Floyd hasn't arrived either. We can't sing without a piano player, Phoebe. Mm, let's sing a cappella. I don't believe I know that song, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> That means without music, Peavy. Well, there's not much music to where we sing. Now, Peavy, is that nice? Oh, well, how about something with a with a good bass? Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So... Very good, Chief. Very good. Mm. I'd prefer something on the romantic side. For instance, I dream of Jeannie with a light brown hair. It sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> Evie? Oh, maybe that's the commissioner. No, it's Floyd. Hi, gang. Oh, Floyd, Floyd. Sit down at the piano. Uh, now, don't rush me. I got a letter addressed to us jolly boys. A letter to us? Yep. Here, let me get it here under the light. I'll read it, Floyd. I can read. Besides, it's my building. Go ahead. Well, who'd be writing to us? Hey, fellas, it's from the guy that used to own the houseboat. Oh? It says here he thinks it's only fair that we know a few things about the boat. What about the boat, Floyd? Hey, 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 get a load of this. The boat hasn't been corked for many years. How do you cork a boat? That's tarring the seams, Floyd. Oh. Tub must leak, huh? Well, what else does he say? Well, not much else except... Uh, the motor vibrates badly and has been known to shake loose and drop through the bottom of the boat. <laughs> Floyd, you still want to go on at first? Uh-uh. Well, it appears that somebody will have to spend some money to repair the boat. Now, don't look at me. I put up all the money that I can. Thinking back, it was our president who talked us into purchasing the boat. Yeah, he's always conning us into something. Well... That sounds like the commissioner now. Well, hello, lodge members. Hi, hello, hi. Commissioner. Are we ready to take up this houseboat, houseboat business? Uh, speaking of houseboats, Commish, I just had a noble thought. You, Floyd? Yep. How would you like to take your vacation on the houseboat first? You mean it, Floyd? Yes, sir. I'm deferring to you, Commish. In other words... After you, Alfonso. Yeah, Alfonso? Well, uh, thank you, Floyd. Gildy, it seems the boat needs extensive repairs to be seaworthy. Yeah, it seems there's a leak here and there. Well, who knows more about how to cut off water than me, Floyd? <laughs> 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 as far as I'm concerned, the meeting's over, fellas. Floyd, this is the nicest thing you ever did for me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Huh? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. One of the best, if not the best thing about summer, is the wonderful variety of fruits and berries filling the markets. Golden peaches, juicy plums, tender pears, plump strawberries, and delicious raspberries. All perfect for the beautiful, cool-looking salads you like to serve. And to be sure your salads taste as good as they look, you'll want to serve them with plenty of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a lively, teasing flavor. Peppy, yet not a bit too sharp. It has a delightfully different taste you won't find in any other salad dressing. 
That's because Miracle Whip is a different kind of dressing that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And when it comes to texture, well, Miracle Whip's texture is smoother than you can imagine. And it's made that way by a special craft beater. Serve Miracle Whip with your cool and fresh mixed vegetable salad and your shimmering gelatin molds, as well as with your favorite fruit combination. They'll all taste extra good topped with Miracle Whip. No wonder it's America's favorite salad dressing. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. After reading a letter from the former owner describing the houseboat's decrepit condition, the Jolly Boys decided to let the water commissioner have the doubtful honor of vacationing on it first. How'd you talk Mr. Munson out of his two weeks, Uncle? Well, it wasn't hard to do, Leroy. For some reason, he suddenly changed his mind. He seemed happy to let me go first. A fine friend. The Jolly Boys must really love you, Uncle. Yeah, and I love them. I've invited them all down to the boat tonight for a party. Are they going to see us off? Well, they don't know we're leaving tonight, Leroy. I told them the party was just to christen the boat. Yeah? What's so secret about us leaving? Well, I don't want to give Floyd a chance to change his mind, Leroy. Now, you get everything packed? Everything but my turtle. Yeah. <laughs> we're taking Elmer? Sure, he's up in the bathtub. The bathtub? Yeah. I've been getting him used to the water. We don't want him to get sick on us. <laughs> Who ever heard of a seasick turtle, Leroy? Well, Elmer's been with me so long he's almost human. Yeah, a little of him is beginning to rub off on you, Leroy. <laughs> now, will you forget Elmer for a minute and let's see if we can help Bertie with the provisions? Huh? Well, Bertie's loaded. She's even baked the ham. Oh. Well, hello, Bertie. How's everything going? Food's all taken care of, Mr. Gilfleet. Bertie's all ready to go cooking and sailing. Good. Leroy, you get out that ham. Mr. Gilsey, what about that boat? The boat? What about it? Well, Judge Hooker called and said to tell you to be sure and check it. Is that boat okay? Well, the roof leaks a little, but I don't think it'll rain. Bertie don't mind the roof leaking. What she wants to know, does the floor leak? <laughs> well, Bertie, you let me do the worrying, huh? Yes, sir. Leroy, you get out that ham. Okay. Yes, Leroy. <laughs> Bronco and I are all packed. Well, I guess we're all set then. Marge, will you and Bronco take all the gear down to the boat and stow it away? So early? Well, we want to get it out of sight before the Jolly Boys arrive. Yeah, they don't know we're sneaking away tonight. Leroy, you get out that hand! <laughs> uh, see you down at the boat, kiddies. Where are you going, on? Well, I don't want to go off on a vacation without saying goodbye to Miss Milford. Thought I'd run down to the hospital. Oh, of course. You have to kiss your little nurse goodbye. I have no such idea. I'll just shake her hand. Oh, yeah? Leroy, get out of that ham! <laughs> Catherine would be working. I'd much rather say goodbye to her at home than in the hospital. Not much privacy here, in case she does want to kiss me goodbye. Of course, I won't pursue the idea. wonder what those bells mean. Probably some doctor getting four bells for a fine operation. <laughs> Is that Catherine coming down the corridor? The nurses all look alike in those uniforms. Yeah, it's Catherine. I recognize that walk. Walk, Morton. Hello, Catherine. I didn't expect to see you here. Well, you know me, always doing the unexpected. <laughs> I'm quite busy, Throckmorton. Was there something you wanted? Well, I thought I'd stop by and see you. We decided to slip away on our vacation tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Where are you going? Down the river. Down the river? On a boat. <laughs> Houseboat. Taking the whole family. Oh, that's nice. Have a lovely trip, Throckmorton. Okay, but wait a minute, Catherine. I may be gone for a couple of weeks. Won't see you. Well, I know you'll have a grand time. If I'd known you were leaving, Throckmorton, I would have bought you a gift of some kind. That's not what I mean. I mean... I'm terribly sorry, Throckmorton. I'm awfully busy. Yeah, but... I have a patient in this room waiting for me. Goodbye, Throckmorton. Have a nice trip. But, Catherine... <clears throat> what a way to say goodbye. Can't leave with this way and spoil my whole trip. Hi, right, George. I'll stand here till she comes out. The party can wait. 
Morton. Hello, Catherine. I thought you'd gone. Well, I remembered something I wanted to tell you. I didn't want to leave without telling you. What is it, Throckmorton? Uh, let's see. Very important, too. Um... Um, what it was, Catherine, since I'm going to be gone and leaving and all, I thought that you might Excuse want to... Excuse me, Throckmorton. I have to get some ice water. Mm, ice water at a time like this. <laughs> well, I won't leave. I'll catch you coming back. If the jolly boys get down to the pier before I do, they can start the party without me. They're only coming down to you anyway. Yeah, here comes Catherine back again. Picture of ice. I'll melt that, brother. Uh, Catherine? Throckmorton, I thought you were gone. Catherine? Not here, Throckmorton. There's nobody in the corner. Well, Zeke. That's for me. I have to report to surgery. Yeah, so that's what they mean. Darn those bells. <laughs> Nothing to do but get down to the dock and the Jolly Boys and a ten pound ham. <laughs> Party. The jolly boys certainly gobbled up Bertie's refreshments. If we don't start soon, we'll have to bring some more up off the boat. Mr. Gildersleeve? Hey, yes, Bronco? Everything's stored away. We're ready to shove off any time you say. Shh, not so loud, Bronco. I don't want the jolly boys to know we're going to sail tonight. What's that, Gildy? Huh? Uh, nothing, Judge. I'm just wondering if it's going to hail tonight. <laughs> oh. It's a fine party, Commissioner. Well, yeah, thank you, Chief Gates. Careful, Peavy. Don't fall off the pier. Well, when do we christen the boat? Yes, I brought along a bottle for that purpose. A magnum of Kalak water, Judge? <laughs> well, I wouldn't hit it with that big bottle. It might sink the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Gildy, yeah. before you definitely decide to vacation on the boat, you should check its condition. Oh, sure, Judge. It's getting chilly here on the pier, fellas. Let's go aboard and we'll sing a song. Not me. What's this, Floyd? I sing better on dry land. <laughs> yes, why don't we sing here on the dock? I've got holes in my shoes. Oh, yeah, policeman. <laughs> Leroy! Yeah? Toss me my ukulele from the boat, huh? Okay, catch! <laughs> <laughs> Nearly fell on the water. Well, a big, Commish. Well, how about Moonlight Bay? We're all vacationing on the water this summer. Well, no, I would... Please, Peavy. Here we go. Okay, you take the solo, Commish. <laughs> okay. We were sailing along on Moonlight Bay. We could hear the voices ringing. They seem to say, you have stolen my heart. Now don't go. Folks, as we sing the song, sweet song on Moonlight Bay, on Moonlight Bay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Bertie. It was wonderful, Uncle. Yeah. yeah. Take a bow, fellas. Uh, how about another song, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, how about another one? All right. Ooh, Catherine. Well, Hello. 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 Catherine, I didn't expect to see you out here. Well, I felt badly about not getting to say goodbye at the hospital this afternoon. Well, so did I. Bon voyage, Throckmorton. Thank you. Bon voyage. Gildy isn't going anywhere. Why, he's leaving on his vacation tonight. Catherine. Oh, did I say something I shouldn't have? Hey, what's this about sailing tonight, Commissioner? <laughs> well, the cat's out of the bag. You may as well know, fellas, we're leaving tonight. But, Gildy, the boat isn't safe. That's right. I wouldn't risk it, Commissioner. Throckmorton, is it really dangerous? No, it's safe. Safe as a sieve. Yep. <laughs> he should not be allowed to go, Miss Milford. Really? Throckmorton, I don't want you to go if it's dangerous. Well, what's a little danger to a man like me? Bronco, get ready to start the motor. Aye, aye, sir. Now, what if the boat sinks, Mr. Gildy, please? Yes. Have you thought of the family? Certainly. Everybody can swim except me. Oh. <laughs> Rockmorton. Yeah. Hoist the anchor, Leroy. Okay. Wait, wait a minute, Rockmorton. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Drop the anchor, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be foolhardy, Gilda. Don't bother me, Judge. I'm busy. Uh, goodbye, Catherine. Goodbye. 
<laughs> Bronco motor to start. I mean, start the motor. Aye, aye, sir. I better get aboard. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 I wouldn't go. Oh, geez. Please, Gildy, it's dangerous. The boat needs repair. Yeah, that's why I let you go first, Commissioner. Look at this letter from the owner. Letter, Floyd? Yeah, it says the motor may drop through the bottom. Well, don't worry about the letter, Floyd. I wrote it. You, you wrote it. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve has something else to tell you in just a moment. If potato salad takes over as the most popular summer food at your house, remember these three steps when you make it. First, have all your ingredients the same temperature. Second, be sure you mix those ingredients lightly. And third, add only enough salad dressing to flavor it. Of course, for extra delicious potato salad, you'll want to be sure your salad dressing is Miracle Whip. Peppy, yet not a bit too sharp, Miracle Whip has a just-right flavor millions of folks everywhere prefer. So for sure success, make your potato salad with the most popular salad dressing ever created. Miracle Whip, made by Kraft. We're starting on our summer vacation, folks. And if this darn houseboat will stop rocking, I'd like to take just a minute to thank all the people who are behind the scenes year after year to bring the great Gildersleeve program to you. First of all, there's our little family. Walter Tetley is Leroy, Mary Lee Robb is Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph is Bertie. Marjorie's new husband, Bronco, is played by Dick Crenna, and my little old girlfriend, Catherine Milford, is Miss Kathy Lewis. Earl Ross has been with us as Judge Hooker ever since the program began, and Richard Legrand created the character of Mr. Peavy years and years ago. The other jolly boys are Arthur Q. Bryan as Floyd and Ken Christie as Chief Gates. Bessie, my secretary at the Water Department, is Miss Gloria Holliday. During this year, we introduce you to Bronco's parents. They weren't on the program tonight, but when they are with us, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson are played by Joe Kearns and Jeanette Nolan. Our announcers are Jay Stewart and Jim Doyle. Our fine writing staff this year has been made up of Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White. The musical bridges and backgrounds are composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. The sound effects, as usual, have been created by Monty Fraser, and Ray Ferguson is our engineer. The show is directed by Fran Van Hardisfelt and Max Hutto for NBC. And the sponsor, of course, is the Kraft Foods Company. We'd like to thank all of these people for their contributions, and we'd like to thank all of you for listening and for writing to us now and then. We hope to see all of you again in September. Please watch your newspaper for details. Thank you again for a nice season. This is Harold Perry saying... Good night. <laughs> With the conclusion of tonight's program, the great Gildersleeve is starting a summer vacation and a well-deserved one, too. Starting next Wednesday night, June 21st, at the same time and on the same network... Crafts will bring you the intriguing and popular mystery show, The Falcon, starring Michael Waring as the daring freelance detective heard previously on Sunday evenings over another network. Plan to be with us next Wednesday night. Follow the thrilling adventures of The Falcon in his skillful fight against crime. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild, or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. The proceeding was transcribed.
Now join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC. Not yet, Leroy, but he'll be here. You can count on Mr. Gillsleeve. Gosh, what a long vacation. Why doesn't he shake a leg? Well, he's coming. You can count on Mr. Gillsleeve. That's right, Bertie. He'll be here in a minute. Tonight, in the first of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. And here's great news about parquet margarine, that wonderful tasting margarine made by Kraft. Where state laws permit, you can now buy yellow parquet, already colored and ready to serve, in a new foil wrap and at a new low price. That's right. Each quarter pound in the new parquet package is now individually wrapped in new Flavor Saver aluminum foil to seal freshness and flavor in, keep staleness and odor out. Now the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh is actually fresher, better tasting than ever. And listen to this. Since the repeal of the federal tax on colored margarine, grocers now sell yellow parquet at a new low price, lowest in history. If you live where yellow margarine is sold, get parquet tomorrow in its new flavor saver foil at its new low cost. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, it's been pretty quiet around the great Gildersleeve's house this summer. The water commissioner has been away on a long vacation. But today, the household returned to life. Bertie, the housekeeper, swept off the welcome mat and put the leaf back in the dining room table. Yes, sir, I'm sure glad he's coming back. (laughs) This family without Miss Gildersleeve is like a hot dog with no mustard. Hey, Bertie, look! Good heavens, Leroy, what happened to your head? I got a haircut. Surprise for Uncle Mort. Keen, huh? You've got no hair left. Yeah, it's a butch. Butch? With that sunburned neck and that white dome, you look like old Baldy. <laughs> yeah. Anybody heard from Uncle Mort? No, but he's going to be here any minute. Now, you go get cleaned up and help straighten up the house. We want things looking nice around here when your uncle comes. Well, holy cow, where's Marge? Why doesn't she do something? You don't need to worry about your sister. Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco's got their little apartment upstairs as neat as a pin. Mr. Bronco even cleaned out the basement. Hey, what's been going on with Marge and Bronco today? What do you mean? Well, they've been acting kind of funny. I heard a big racket upstairs this morning, and all day Bronco's been going around wearing dark glasses. Well, what's wrong with a man wearing dark glasses? In the basement? <laughs> Don't matter to me what Mr. Bronco wears. What makes you so nosy, Leroy? You're the nosiest boy. Well, there's something going on. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Miss Marjorie? Do we have any steak in the icebox? Steak? You want to cook it? No, I need it upstairs. What you going to do with steak upstairs? It's none of your business. You see, Bertie, you see, I told you there was something. Leroy, you hush. There's a steak in the icebox for dinner, Miss Marjorie. You can take some of that. Well, thanks, Bertie. And I need some adhesive tape. Steak and adhesive tape? What you going to do, put the cow back together? (laughs) Here's the tape. Thanks, Bertie. What's she going to do with that stuff? Leroy, stop being so nosy. Well, gee whiz. Somebody's at the front door. Hey, it's Uncle Mort. Oh, it's Uncle Mort. Hello, everybody. Leroy, Marjorie, Franco, Bertie, I'm home. Oh, hello. Hiya. Well, Leroy, little Leroy. Oh, boy, I'm told. Sure, sure. Oh, oh, don't squeeze too hard. You'll crush my cigars. <laughs> well, Bertie. Welcome home, Mr. Gillsleeve. Uh, thank you, Bertie. By George, it's good to be home. Back with the little family again. I'm sure glad to see you, Unc. You are? Oh, what a lovable boy. What'd you bring me? 
Great. <laughs> well, I may have a little package in my valise with your name on it. Oh, boy, you're the best uncle a kid ever had. You sure, sure. My, you sure look fine, Mr. Gilfleet. Yes, I'm a new man, Bertie. Where'd you stay, Unc? Uh, Aspinola Hot Springs. Sulfur water, real mud baths. That must have been high-powered mud. You even look different. <laughs> well, the rest did your old uncle a lot of good, my boy. Say, where's Marjorie and Bronco? Oh, Uncle, Uncle. Uh, hello, Marjorie. Mm, little Marjorie. Oh, Uncle Mort, we've missed you so. Have you really? Well, I've missed you too, all of you. But, Uncle, what have you done to yourself? Well, you look different. He's been in the mud. <laughs> I asked for the hot springs, my dear. I feel as frisky as a colt. <laughs> well, that reminds me, where's Bronco? Uh, Bronco? Yes, Bronco. Remember the man you married? Oh, Bronco. Well, he's upstairs. Well, tell him to come down. This is a family reunion, and he's part of the family. Bronco! Well, you see, Anki. Bronco! Oh, are you home, Mr. Gildersleeve? Am I home? <laughs> Coming right down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why is he wearing those dark glasses? Feeling his way down the stairs. Well, the sun is pretty bright, Anki. Sun? There's no sun in here. It's cuckoo. Leroy, you have some. Welcome home. Glad to see you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Bronco, you're shaking hands with Bertie. <laughs> you're over here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bronco, take off those dark glasses. Yes, sir. Holy smoke! Oh, brother, what a black eye. Bronco, what happened? What happened? Who hit you? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I can explain it, Anki. Bronco was lifting a suitcase down from the shelf in our closet and... Now, wait a minute. You don't have a shelf in your closet. We don't? It's as plain as the nose on your face. Old Marge slugged him. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Gildersleeve, I was he about... He was getting a suitcase down from the shelf in the garage and... The garage has been locked all the time I was away. And I had the key. Oh. Well... Gee, isn't this keen? <laughs> well, you stop. By George, somebody in this family is trying to hide something. Yeah. What in the world have you people been doing while I was gone? Well, it's like this, Mr. Gildersleeve. I started to go down the stairs, see, and well, I... you weren't going down the stairs. Yes, but, Marge... Now, wait. Whose black eye is this? <laughs> well, Mr. Gildersleeve, it was like this. No, it wasn't that way, Unky. Oh, for goodness sake. I turned my back for a second to take a month's vacation, and the family falls apart. Bronco, come into my study. I want to have a little talk with you. Me too? No. Okay. <laughs> Now, sit down, Bronco, and let's... Oh, uh... thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll bet you had a swell time on your vacation. Oh, yes. Uh, now, Bronco, there's something going on It here. sure is fine to have you back, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, thank you, Bronco. Now, if you and Marjorie... It are... did you a lot of good, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're the picture of health. Now, wait. A man needs a vacation, Mr. Gildersleeve. And you took one. Oh. <laughs> Bronco, look me in the eye. With the one that's open. Yes, sir? Now, what happened? Mr. Gildersleeve, a fellow should always tell the truth. Isn't that right? Certainly. And but... if a fellow can't tell the truth, he shouldn't tell anything. Don't you agree, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, of course. In but... the case of this black eye, I can't tell you the truth. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Who said so? Marjorie. <laughs> Marjorie? My wife. Oh, yes. Mr. Gildersleeve, someday when you get married, you'll understand. Bronco, stop talking like my grandfather. You're just a boy, just a youngster. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I've lived. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Well, it doesn't matter to me, Bronco. I don't care what you and Marjorie do. Go your own way. I have too many other things to think about. We'll simply forget the whole thing. Yes, sir. Don't bring your troubles to me. Not even interested. Yes, sir. Now, I'm very busy, Bronco. Nothing else you want to talk to me about. You'd better run along. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll see you later. Ooh, what a boy. You know, I wonder if he and Marjorie are having problems. They say the first year's the hardest. Still, Marjorie couldn't have hit him hard enough to give him that black eye. 
I don't know, though. You can't tell about women. They can be dangerous. <laughs> I uh, think I'll slip upstairs and talk to Marjorie. Oh, what a mess. By George, I got back from that vacation just in time. Marjorie, it's me. Oh, what is it, Auntie? I'd like to talk to you. May I come in? Well, certainly. The door isn't locked. Well, your little apartment is very attractive. Well, thank you, Unky. Yes, indeed. Well, I haven't seen you in quite a while, my dear. Everything going all right, is it? Oh, just fine, Unky. You and Bronco are happy, are you? Oh, yes, very happy. Well, good. Glad to hear it. Yes, indeed. Mm, it's none of my business, but uh, about Bronco. Has he been boxing lately? No, not that I know of. Well, not prying into your personal affairs, my dear. It's just that, uh, well, it's nothing important. It certainly doesn't matter to me. Not in the least. <laughs> Poor Unky, you're dying of curiosity. Me? Curious? Oh, Marjorie. Uncle Mort. Can you keep a secret? Why, certainly. What kind of a secret? You won't tell a soul? Of course not. All right. I'll tell you how Bronco got his black eye. Well? Well, this morning he started to run downstairs to tell Bertie and Leroy something, and I caught him by the shirt. (laughs) Poor Bronco, he tripped and bumped his nose against the banister. (laughs) Oh, is that all that happened? Really? That's all. But what was you going to tell Bertie and Leroy that made you grab him by the shirt? Well, that we're going to have a baby. Oh, isn't that silly? (laughs) You're going to have a what? A baby. A, a, a baby? A real baby? You? <laughs> oh, Bronco was so excited he was going to run out and tell everybody. Oh, Marjorie. My little Marjorie. I can't believe it. Well, it's true, Unky. A, a baby. You'll be a mother. <laughs> well, you, you mustn't tell anybody. Not anybody for a while. And nobody else knows about it? Just you and I and Bronco... And the doctor. Of course I won't tell anybody. We're going to have a baby. Our own baby. Oh, just think of it. Isn't it wonderful, Unky? Oh, Marjorie. Our own baby. All these years I've been a mother to you. Now I'll be a grandmother. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. And it's fresh. Really fresh. Blended fresh from top grade products of American farms. Parquet is rushed fresh by truck to your store, sold fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet is flavor-dated, and grocer stocks are regularly checked by Kraft representatives. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee that the parquet margarine you buy will be fresh, really fresh. And that's why it tastes so good. If you live where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver foil at its new low price. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any package, at any store, you'll be getting the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh. Really fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Great Gildersleeve came home from his vacation and ran smack into a beautiful secret. Oh, little Marjorie, expecting a baby. I never anticipated that she was anticipating. <laughs> oh, it's nice of her to trust her old uncle with the secret. And she was so cute about it, too. Now, remember, Unky, you mustn't tell anybody, not anybody. Don't breathe it to a soul. Don't breathe it to a soul. Wonder how I can tell Peavy without breathing. <laughs> well, I can keep a secret. 
You can tell the water commissioner something without it leaking out. <laughs> hello, PV. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Vacation must have agreed with you. You're looking good. I feel good, Peavy. In fact, I'm a new man. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah, my head's in the clouds, Peavy. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> Peavy, wouldn't you like to know why I'm walking on air? Aren't you curious? Mm, well... Yeah, not that I'm going to tell you. After all, this is strictly a family affair. Just concerns Marjorie and Bronco. And me. <laughs> And the fourth party, who for the time being shall be nameless. Oh, well, in that case... Now, now, I... Phoebe, don't try to pry. You can't make it out of me. <laughs> Jealously, I'm not... You're to... pretty sly, Phoebe. <laughs> but I'm not talking. When I give somebody my word, I don't talk. My lips are sealed. There's a leak somewhere. <laughs> but I'll uh, tell you what I can do, since you're so interested. I can give you a hint. No, I, I don't think you should do that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, oh, Petey, whose secret is this? It, well, uh, how many people have you met since you heard it? Oh. Oh. Petey, you're a fellow jolly boy, so I'll give you one guess about what's going on in our little family. What do you think of when you look up there on your shelves at all that baby oil? It's greasy. Oh. <laughs> but I make six cents a bottle on it. That's pretty slick. <laughs> sure. Baby, you're not even interested in my secret. I'm getting out of here. Very well. But by the way, Mr. Gildersleeve, are you going to see Marjorie? Marjorie? A little later, yes. Well, will you be kind enough to give her this little prescription? A prescription? What's in it? Well, it's a pharmacist's secret. Oh? For expectant mothers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, Baby, don't go jumping at conclusions. This prescription might not mean a thing. Marjorie could be ordering this medicine for me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, neither would I. <laughs> Little Marjorie with a baby. Why, right, George, this is certainly going to be a hard secret to keep. But I'm not going to tell anybody. I think I'll stop in and see Judge Hooker. Haven't seen old Horace since my vacation. Whereas the writ of habeas corpus was obtained by the party of the first part. Lawyers, look at him, making a speech to the wastebasket. Therefore, gentlemen of the jury, my appeal to you is... Judge! Well, guilty. Judge, what are you doing? I'm practicing my rebuttal. Just like an old goat always thinking about his rebuttal. Now, Gilda, when did you return from your vacation? Uh, just got in, Horace. Did you miss the old water commissioner? Uh, no. What? In fact, while you were away, the city water tasted much better. <laughs> All right, Judge. All right. You can't say anything that'll offend me today. <laughs> I feel too good. Uh, Judge... Yes, Gilda? You're a fine old friend of the family. Thank you. Marjorie and Leroy's godfather and all? Very true. Old friend, I have a very confidential secret. Oh? That I can't tell you. Oh, balderdash. Well, I have a secret too, Gilda. Guess what I have in this box. Judge, aren't you curious about my secret? <laughs> Take a look at the box, Gilda. Get your nose out of that box, horse, and listen to me. This is important. My box is important, too. Not as important as my news. Look, Gildy, a football helmet. A lawyer with a football helmet? Uh, judge, guess what I found out when I came home. But, Gildy, don't you want to know who it's for? Ooh, all right, tell me who it's for and then listen to my secret. It's for Marjorie's and Bronco's baby. Well, oh, fine, I'll let you in on some... Marjorie and Bronco's baby. Of course. You knew, didn't you? Me? Why, of course. Certainly, I, I've known all along. Why, naturally. Now then, what's your secret? Secret? Don't get nosy, Judge. I don't go around telling secrets. <laughs> I wonder how 
somehow the old judge found out. Oh, half the fun is taken out of this thing for me. Not being able to tell somebody who doesn't already know, receiving congratulations. Say, there's Floyd standing in the door of his barbershop. Don't need a haircut, but I'm going to tell somebody. Hello, Floyd. Hiya, Grandpa. Floyd. <laughs> How did you know? Don't kid yourself, Commish. I got more grapevines out than you got water mains. <laughs> Come on in and get a haircut. Well, I might get a light trim. Ah, boy. I'll just prune the bushes in the back. <laughs> now, raise up your bottom chin so I can get the sheet around you. <laughs> ah, boy. Yes, Floyd, we're expecting a blessed event. Uh, this is the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. What's so wonderful about it? Uh, what? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad to see the kids expecting. But I hate to see this happen to you. Floyd, what are you getting at? Well, don't you get the picture, Commission? It ain't been no time since you were a gay, dashing blade. But what are you now? Now? You're a grandfather. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've just been pushed back a generation. <laughs> Old rocking chair's got you, Gramps. <laughs> now, Floyd... Just because Marjorie's having a baby doesn't make me any older. Yeah? What about that pretty little nurse you used to squire around? What do you mean, used to squire? Well, is she going to want to be seen dating a grandfather? Watch it, Floyd. When you become a grandpa, Grandpa, you might as well face it. Your courting days are over. You've been turned out to pasture. (laughs) Now, Floyd, I won't really be a grandfather. After all, Marjorie isn't my real daughter. She's just my niece. I haven't even been married yet. That's worse. Commission, you've been tossed out of the ball game before you come to bat. <laughs> oh, let me out of here. Where's my cane? I mean my hat. me, Bertie. Oh, I didn't think it was you walking so slow, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, I had a hard day, Bertie. Yes, sir. But if you knew what I just heard going to happen around this house, you'd be kicking up your heels. What's this, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, you're going to be a grandfather. No. Yes, you are. You got every reason to be kicking up your heels. You're going to be a grandfather. Now, Bertie. Let's see you kick up them heels. You got every reason to. Now, wait a minute, Bertie. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know why you got every reason to kick up your heels? Bertie. That's right. You're going to be a grandfather. <laughs> All right, George. I'm going to put a stop to this. Bertie. Bertie, come back here. Yes, sir? Bertie. Now, sit down. I want to have a talk with you. Yes, sir? You've got this all wrong. I'm not going to be a grandfather. You ain't? But Miss Marjorie... I know that. But I'm only Marjorie's uncle. If she has a baby, that doesn't make me a grandfather. Well, does it, Bernie? No, sir. But you've always been like a father to her. Well, that she, may be. She's been just like a daughter to you. Yeah, yeah she has. But I'm not a grandfather. You understand that, Bertie? Yes, I want everybody in town to understand it. Mr. Peavy, the judge, all of them. I'm not a grandfather. Yes, sir. Of course, if you don't want to be one, that's up to you. But all little babies need a grandfather. They do? Miss Marjorie ain't got no father to be the grandfather. Well, no, she hasn't. And that baby's going to need a grandfather. Babies need grandfathers to kitchy you comb and bounce them on their knees. Well, I... Do have a way with babies. Of course, if you want to pass up one of life's big rewards. Rewards? Yes, sir. When a man has fine children and grandchildren around him, that's life's big reward. Well, uh... Besides, Mr. Gilson, you get getting all of this when you're so young. Young? Well, yes, but, Bertie, nobody thinks of a grandfather as being young. Yes, they do. Look at Miss Marlene Dietrich. She's a grandmother. What do you think of her? Uh, nice. Of course, you ain't got legs like Miss Dietrich, but you don't need them. <laughs> no, no, Bertie. She's a grandma, but she don't look it. She's still lovely. 
Well, so am I. <laughs> Bertie, it's going to be a good life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Unc. Hello, my boy. Uh, sit down, Leroy. I want to let you in a little secret. Yeah? What is it? I'm going to be a grandfather. Are you kidding? No. No, I'm not. Marsha's going to have a baby. She is? <laughs> Leroy, what's the matter? I'm too young to be an uncle. <laughs> young to be a grandfather, but that's life, my boy. <laughs> that's life. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, in states where the law permits, you can now get yellow parquet margarine already colored, ready to serve in the new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap and at a new low price. Elsewhere, get parquet in the color quick bag or regular package. In any package, it's the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> in the swing? What? Oh, yes. Come on out, my boy. What you doing? Oh, just sitting here, looking at the stars, thinking. Move over. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Unc, why don't you and me go to Canada? Canada? What for? Oh, who wants to stay around here with a darned old baby? No, my boy, don't feel that way. Be a long time yet. Besides, this is going to make everybody very happy. It isn't going to make me happy. Oh, you wait and see. It'll probably be a boy. I like it the way it is right now, with just us. When the darn old baby comes, it'll all be different. It'll be baby, baby, baby. Holy cow, all you hear is baby now, and he isn't even here yet. Well, I'll tell you, my boy, you'll feel different when the little fellow gets here. Uh, there's something about a baby that's pretty wonderful. Huh. Oh, there is. <laughs> Wait till Marjorie lets you hold him for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how you do it. Yeah, I'll roll my coat up. Uh, you see? Now, this is the baby. You sort of cradle him in your arms like this. Uh, such a little fellow. New to the world. And his bright little eyes look up at you. So wide and wondering. His little feet kick the blanket away. There's his toes. Ten of them. Then one of his little hands comes up and kind of touches your cheek. And he smiles. Let me hold him, Monk. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Dick Trenner, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick LeGrand, and Arthur Q. Bryant. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Want to taste something good? Well, next time you make a cold meat sandwich, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. 
Get both kinds. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. Next week, be sure to hear the Ronald Coleman's and the Halls of Ivy on NBC. Tonight, in the second of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. Listen to this really marvelous news about parquet margarine. In every state where the law permits the sale of yellow margarine, you can now buy yellow parquet margarine wrapped in a wonderful new flavor saver foil and at the lowest price in his parquet history. Yes, the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh now comes fresher, stays fresher longer than ever. Each golden quarter pound in the new parquet package is individually wrapped in a flavor saver aluminum foil to seal flavor and freshness in, keep staleness and odors out. And since the repeal of the federal tax on colored margarines, your grocer can now sell yellow parquet at the lowest price in history. If you live where yellow margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver foil. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. That's P A R K A Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Sunday in the great Gildersleeve's town of Summerfield, and Sunday afternoon it's customary for families to get in the car and go calling on relatives. Of course, there's always somebody who tries to get out of going, especially to visit in-laws. Guess who's trying to get out of going? Now, Marjorie. Oh, I know how you feel about the Thompsons, Unky, but now that Bronco and I are expecting the baby, Mother Thompson thinks the family should get together more often. Well, Marjorie, I'm tired. I passed the collection plate at church this morning. Those nickels and dimes are heavy. I can't go visiting either. Look, I've already got my tie off. Leroy, untie the knot. Don't pull it off over your head. Gosh, Uncle, next Sunday I'll just have to tie it again. No. Well, tie it again right now, Leroy. We're all going to the Thompsons. Unky, Mother Thompson especially wants you to come to meet her sister. Her sister? You mean there's another one like Mrs. Thompson? <laughs> Quiet, Leroy. Unky, she's Bronco's Aunt Victoria. Aunt Victoria? She is married. Well, if she's Mrs. Thompson's sister, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> oh, Unky. By George, if Mrs. Thompson thinks she can use me to entertain her sister, she has another thing coming. All right. We don't go then, huh, Unc? Marjorie, tell her Leroy and I can't make it. Oh, boy, what a keen uncle. Now, just a minute, Uncle Morris. I'm not covering up for you this time. If you're not going, you can just call her yourself. Well, I'll get a good strong cigar and call her from Peavy's. <laughs> Uncle Mort, you haven't been to the Thompsons since they moved to Summerfield. Well, I haven't been to the glue factory since they moved to Summerfield either. <laughs> Have a good time, my dear. What can I do for you this fine Sunday afternoon? Give me a big black cigar. A big black one? I don't seem to have one of those. How about a big dark brown one that gives off black smoke? <laughs> Sounds great, Phoebe. And uh, give me a cup of coffee, too. Uh, black or dark brown? Uh, dark brown. Very well. 
Care to have your coffee on a flying saucer, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> flying saucer? <laughs> I've been reading Lou Abner. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Seems flying saucers are coming to dog patch. Uh, yes, I read him at the breakfast table, P.P. Oh. Well, I never read the funnies at the breakfast table. Your house rule, P.P.? No, but when Mrs. Peavy comes to the table in curlers, nothing seems very funny. <laughs> oh, oh. Attractive woman. Here's your coffee, Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> Thank you, Peavy. <laughs> Who's that? Hmm, looks like Judge Hooker in his new car. Well, the old goat's been talking about getting a new car. Well, from now on, it looks like the car's going to do the talking for him. Quite a color. Yeah, chartreuse. <laughs> How can the judge afford a car like that? He must have given up his taillight water. Hello, Peavy. Gilda. Hello, Judge. I got a new car. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> well, gentlemen, what do you think of it? It looks like a wonderful car, Judge, but who picked the color? I did. And I think I made a wonderful choice, don't you, Peavy? Well, it matches your tie. <laughs> It matches Gildy's face, too. What's this, Judge? You can't hide it, Gildy. You're positively chartreuse with envy. <laughs> I am not. It's 130 horsepower, Gildy. My, my, isn't that dangerous? Well, the only danger is when I stop the car. Oh? When I open the door, all the pretty girls try to jump in. Oh, my goodness. But since I don't have a pretty girl... How'd you like to take a spin, Gildy? Oh, I'd like to, Judge. I'm not doing anything this afternoon. Splendid. I'd like to show you how it works. It has no clutch pedal and no gears to shift. Of course, that costs extra. Well, if it doesn't have any gears, why does it cost extra? Well, it has gears, Peavy. You just don't have to shift them. Oh, oh. Are you ready, Gildy? Well, I have to make a phone call to the Thompsons first. Oh, are you hobnobbing with your in-laws these days? Yeah, that's the one thing I'm trying to avoid, Judge. Mrs. Thompson's spinster sister is in town, and she's trying to hook me into entertaining her. Well, that shouldn't be difficulty for you, uh, Gelde. You're a big hit with elderly ladies. <laughs> All right, Judge. If you'd care to take her a gift from the pharmacy, I have some nice heating pad. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, people. I'm not getting involved with the old crow. Well, let's go, Gildy. Yeah, I'll be with you as soon as I make the phone call, Judge. I just can't wait to get out on the open road and put my foot down on the accelerator. E e e darn narrow door. Yeah. Yeah. I may as well go for a ride with the judge. Mrs. Thompson won't mind if I don't show up. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. This is Mr. Gildersleeve. About this afternoon, I'm just dying to come over, but I can't make it. A little matter has come up. Legal. Sorry. Just a moment. I'll call her to the phone. <laughs> call who? Mrs. Thompson. You want to speak to her? Say, wait a minute. I'm not so sure I do. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Thompson's sister. You? And Victoria? <laughs> Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, people who know me call me Vicky. What a voice. <laughs> Go away, goosebumps. What did you say? Yeah, I, I said if I didn't come over, I'd be a chump. Oh. <laughs> but you said you couldn't make it. Yeah, I said I'm dying to come. Well, I'll tell Mrs. Thompson. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm? You sound quite a little younger than Mrs. Thompson. You are, aren't you? I don't tell little boys all they'd like to know. Goodbye. <laughs> well, here's one little boy who's going to find out. Uh, yeah. Are you ready to try out my new car, Gildy? Uh, sorry, Judge. I have to dash home and then rush over and entertain Mrs. Thompson's sister. But, Gildy, I thought you weren't going over there. Judge, I'm not a man to ignore family obligations. My, my. Peavy, a moment ago, he didn't want to go and entertain the little old lady, and now he just can't wait to get over there. Gilday's a hard man to understand. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gosh, aren't we have to go? Yes, 
Yes, indeed, my boy. But you said... Well, I got to thinking it over. And after all, Mrs. Thompson is Marjorie's mother-in-law. We owe her something. Yeah? What? (laughs) Never mind. When people are kind enough to invite us over, the least we can do is accept and be gracious about it. But Marge and Bronco have gone already. Well, we'll meet them over there. Now, get your hair combed and put on a clean shirt. We want to look nice for Aunt Victoria. Yeah. Hey, how old is she, Unc? Well... Do you think she came across the plains in a covered wagon? <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. How do you know? Well, I... There's something funny going on here. What made you change your mind about going on? Nothing. I simply... Leroy, go change your shirt. We're in a hurry. I'll be downstairs. Okay. When I'm calling you... <laughs> That's your excuse? Yep. Yeah, Leroy and I decided to go to the Thompsons after all, Bertie. <laughs> How do I look? Mr. Gilsley, you don't look like a man calling on your in-laws. You look like a man trying to get in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilsley, I sure am glad you changed your mind about going. Well, good. What made you change your mind about going? Well, Bertie, I've been thinking this thing over. Yes, sir. It's a pretty good idea for in-laws to visit each other. Yes, sir. In fact, I intend seeing a great deal more of the Thompson family in the future. Yes, sir. So I went to the phone and called the Thompsons and told Vicky I'd be over. Vicky? Uh, Broncos Aunt Victoria. Yes, sir. <laughs> I wonder what she's laughing at. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Every woman knows that freshness in a margarine is like style in a hat. It's an intangible value that can't be weighed or measured, but it makes the difference between something that's merely good and something that's truly wonderful. Parquet margarine is fresh. Really fresh. Always fresh. Parquet is blended fresh from top-grade American farm products. It's rushed fresh by truck to your store, sold fresh by your grocer. Every pound of car parquet is flavor-dated. Dealer stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that wherever or whenever you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Really fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our KG Water Commissioner didn't plan to drive over to visit the Thompsons this afternoon until he called to express regrets and heard the voice of Mrs. Thompson's sister, Aunt Victoria. People who know me call me Vicky. Ooh, what a voice. <laughs> Watch it, Uncle, you're running into the curb. Oops. Sorry, Vicky. I mean, Leroy. <laughs> what a character. Now, let's see. The house should be along here somewhere. There it is, Uncle. Uh, number one, First Street. Yeah, number one, First Street. <laughs> Guess Bronco's absent-minded father picked the address. It's a number he can remember. <laughs> hey, somebody's at the window. I see the curtains moving. Well, I guess they're anxious to see us. <laughs> I wish I could drive up in a snappy car like the judges. Who is it, Edward? Mr. Gildersleeve? No, it must be the gardener. It looks like his car. Here, let me see. Oh, Edward, that's Mr. Gildersleeve. It is? Must be Gildersleeve in the gardener's car. <laughs> oh, Edward. <sighs> well, let's prepare for a very dull afternoon. But since Victoria's here, I had to invite him. Answer the door, Edward. Yes, Martha. I wonder why he came to the front door. <laughs> well. Good afternoon, Mr. Thompson. Well, hello. Martha, it isn't the gardener. It's Mr. Gildersleeve. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. And little Leroy. Little? I've been 
and growing. <laughs> well, this is a happy occasion. I've always said that families should get together more often. Where's Aunt Victoria? Victoria? Yeah, that's why Aunt came over. Leroy? <laughs> you came. Of course, Marjorie. You wouldn't miss it. Well, let's everybody sit down and talk. Uh, Bronco went for some ice cream. Oh, boy, did he know I was coming? There'll be plenty, Leroy. I think I'll go outside and wait for him. You stay in the yard, my boy. Okay. <laughs> Growing boy. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Thompson, I, I can't help noticing that your sister Vicky, uh, I, I mean Victoria, isn't here. She's awfully attractive, Unky. Yeah, I imagine. Where is she? Oh, she'll be back in time for dinner. Uh, good. Uh, has a date, has she? Well, if she has, she didn't tell us about it. Of course, it's hard to keep track of Victoria. Oh? <sighs> Fascinating woman, Victoria. Edward? Uh, like Martha. <laughs> you sneaked out of that one. Uh, if you'll excuse me now, I'll go and see about dinner. Marjorie, would you like to help? Oh, of course, Mother Thompson. Uh, see you later, Anki. Yeah, ta-ta. Well, Mr. Thompson, the ladies have left us. I guess we'll have to amuse ourselves. Yes. Uh, let's talk, Gildersleeve. Good idea. Nice Sunday, isn't it? Sunday? Oh, yes. Uh, Saturday was nice, too. <laughs> yeah, nice. But then, uh, so was Friday, Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, have you any idea where Victoria went? Uh, not that this isn't an interesting conversation. She is very interesting. You know what? Victoria. Gildersleeve, I can't understand why you're not more interested in Victoria. Me? I am. You are? You Well... Only because she's Bronco's aunt. <laughs> and your wife's sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, he's on to me. Gildersleeve, there is a woman. Oh? Well, tell me more. I mean, uh, I guess you know her quite well. Oh, yes. I met her at our wedding. Strange thing, Gildersleeve. When I was courting my wife, Victoria was around the house someplace... But Martha didn't let me see her until after we were married. She must be quite a woman. Uh, where did you say she was, Mr. Thompson? Huh? Well, after all, uh, Mrs. Thompson invited me over to meet her. I'm here to entertain her. Where is she? Well, Victoria didn't think it was very exciting around here, so she uh, took a walk in the park. Restless girl. Oh? I think I'll take a walk in the park. I'm a little restless myself. Uh, by the way, Mr. Thompson, what's Victoria's last name? Chase. Chase? Hmm. <laughs> I wonder which way she went. Quite a few women out here. I don't even know what Vicky looks like. All I know is she's quite a woman. Say, there's an attractive woman walking up ahead. I'll bet that's Vicky. Victoria? I beg your pardon? Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Looks more like a Victorian tintype. <laughs> be more careful. Any pretty girl could be Victoria. Say, I talked to her on the phone. I can tell by that voice. Oh, here comes a pretty girl. Pardon me, miss. Oh, just a minute, you. You, officer. Didn't see you standing behind that tree. <laughs> I know you didn't. I had my eye on you. Yeah? What do you mean, talking to every lady that passes? Now, officer, you've got me all wrong. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm looking for a friend. You can't look on my beat, Johnny. Johnny! Now, see here. I'm city water commissioner. Yeah? Well, I'm Harry Truman, and if I catch you talking to any more ladies, I'll call out the Marines. Oop. <laughs> oh, oh. I've looked all over the park, and I can't find her. wonder if she did have a date. Oh, well. I'll go around the other side of this statue and sit down. I'm not going back to the Thompsons until time for dinner. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, 
organ grinder with a monkey. An attractive woman feeding him peanuts. Blonde, too. That's all the peanuts you can have now. Come back later. <laughs> Look at the little monkey tip his hat. <laughs> Goodbye, you little cutie. Lucky monkey. <laughs> Say, that voice. It's Vicky. Boy, will she be glad to see me. Wonder if she'll recognize my voice, too. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hey, mind if I sit over here? No, not at all. Well, I was sitting over there. <laughs> but I hate to sit in front of General Grant on a running horse, even if it is a statue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does look dangerous. Yep. Doesn't recognize my voice. I'll give her a little clue. Uh, happen to know anybody in the water department? No, but it's strange you should ask me that. It is? Because that's why I'm out here in the park. Oh? Don't tell anybody, but I'm avoiding the water commission. Oh. <laughs> I suppose it's all right to talk to you like this here in the park. You look harmless. Yeah. Um, you see, I'm visiting my sister And she wanted me to meet him Because he's uh, sort of in the family, you know But her description of him frightened me a little You did? Oh, yeah, she can't stand him, you know Of course, I don't know anybody here And I'm lonely You are? Yes, but I'm not that lonely <laughs> I don't have to scrape the bottom of the barrel Well, I'd better be going Goodbye, Miss Chase. Oh, you know my name? Wait a minute. Who are you? I'm the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> you mean you're Mr. Gildersleeve, the water commissioner? Well, I may as well admit it. You'd find it out sometime. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. You came to find me in the park, you darling. <laughs> Darling, I didn't know how my sister could ever think you unattractive. Well, I've never been able to figure that out either. <laughs> Come on over here and sit down. Why, this is the best thing that's happened to me since I've been here. Well. Uh, whoops. Is that a little close? <laughs> Anybody mind? <laughs> well, I'm sure General Grant won't. No, it's after five o'clock, and he's a union man. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just can't understand that sister of mine. You can't. You know, of course, I've always considered her a little dull and conventional, and I suspect she considers me a, a little flirt. I don't know why. <laughs> Let me look at you. You're handsome. Well. You know, I had entirely the wrong picture of you. I... Oh, let Vicky flick the lint off your lapel. Uh. There. <laughs> and to think I doubted you. You know, I never had any doubts about you. <laughs> you didn't? What did you think Bronco's Aunt Victoria would be like? Well, I, I knew you'd be blonde, beautiful, the most attractive. Hello there. Oh, for Judge Hooker. Well, I see you got out of your obligation this afternoon. Uh, judge. I thought you'd be entertaining Bronco's terrible old aunt. Uh, judge. <laughs> I didn't say anything about her being terrible. You did, too. You said she was an old crow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Judge, you've ruined everything. Ruined what? Gildy, aren't you going to introduce me to your attractive friend? You don't want to meet me, Judge. I'm the old crow. <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. I, I was only quoting Gildy. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Miss Chase, this is Judge Hooker. How do you do? <clears throat> well, I'd better be going. A good idea, Judge. Oh, Judge, is that beautiful car yours? Yes, it's brand new. <laughs> Chartreuse, my favorite color. It does something for a blonde. What's going on here? Well, I see no reason why a superior court judge shouldn't indulge in a little color. Oh, are you a superior court judge? 
Very superior. <laughs> Say, why don't we all go for a drive? Now, Judge. Oh, I'd love to. I've never been out with a real judge. What a flirt. You're coming, aren't you, Gilbert? Uh, no, thanks. And, uh, Vicky, we should be getting back to dinner. Oh, well, if I don't make it, my sister will understand. Yeah, I guess she will. <laughs> oh, what an adorable car. Look, no shift. <laughs> <laughs> There she goes, into my life and right out, without shifting. <laughs> well, I, I don't care. Hey, Oh, hello, Leroy. Time to eat. They sent me to get you. Where's that Victoria? Well, Leroy... Was that her that just drove off with the judge? Yes. Yes, it was. Poor Unc. Let me sit down beside you and cheer you up. Now, Leroy, I don't need cheering up. Yeah, I understand. Gosh, the only reason you came over was to be with her, and she drives off with your best friend. Leroy, the judge is just showing her how the car operates. Ha! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, young man? Nothing. Who's Peanuts? Hers. She was feeding a monkey. Then she ran off with an old goat. <laughs> Now, buck up, Bunk. Let's go feed the penis to the monkey. That'll be a good way to forget her. Leroy, there's nothing to forget. She doesn't mean a thing to me. Not a thing. Oh, boy, Unc. Hey, is this her handkerchief? Boy, is it loaded with perfume. Let me see. Uh, I wonder if she'll be back for dinner. <laughs> what a monkey she's making out of him. <laughs> Here, Unc, you eat the peanut. Leroy! <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Don't forget, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh is parquet margarine, made by Kraft. In states where the law permits, you can get yellow parquet margarine in its new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap at the lowest price in history. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Where are you going, Unc? Just for a little walk, my boy. Down to the drugstore, maybe. I don't know why I should be upset about Vicky. I only went over there because I had nothing else to do. And the judge... The way he melted when she smiled. Silly old goat. <laughs> Anybody could see she only went with him because he had that new car. Well, she's not fooling me. I have my eyes wide open. No silky little blonde's going to wind me around her finger. I wasn't born yesterday. No, sir. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, who said that? Hello. Vicky. I'll bet you were on your way over to my house to return my handkerchief. Well... You aren't angry because Vicky ran away this afternoon, well, are you? Uh, You're a darling. Well. <laughs> yeah, I knew she'd come back. Gildersleeve, you have a way with women. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. 
Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Craft prepared mustard. Break the banks next, and in three weeks, hear Groucho for more quiz fun on NBC. Uncle heard me upstairs. Upstairs? He could have heard you in Kansas City. <laughs> Tonight in the third of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. It's golden yellow, ready to serve, and you get it now in the new flavor saver wrap. Yes, here's big news for everyone who lives in states where the law permits the sale of colored margarine. You can now buy yellow parquet margarine, already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve in a new flavor saver package. Each golden quarter pound individually wrapped in parchment-lined aluminum foil. All the freshness and flavor sealed in, staleness and odors kept out. Parquet margarine, you know, is the margarine that millions prefer because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. If you live where yellow margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in the new Flavor Saver wrap. Elsewhere, buy parquet in the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. Gildersleeve was up bright and early this morning, and after a quick glance at the paper, he moved right into the breakfast room. Bertie! Yes, sir? How are the eggs coming? Yeah, how are the eggs coming? Hey, Leroy, I'll handle this. You eat your prunes. On an empty stomach? Oh, Eggs coming up, and, and prunes going down. <laughs> what a boy. Mr. Gildersleeve, ain't you going to wait for Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco? Heck no, I'm going to see get a crack at the eggs before Bronco gets here. That isn't it at all. I want to get down to the water department a little early this morning. Bessie's due back from her vacation. We have a lot of work to do. Yes, sir. Hey, I hear Bronco stirring around upstairs. Oh? Quick, pass the eggs, Leroy. <laughs> hey, the doorbell. I'll get it. Maybe it's Bronco. He always gets up in a daze. Bronco? At the front door? He sleeps with the window up. Maybe he made a wrong turn going to the shower. <laughs> Leroy, don't be ridiculous. It's a letter for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. For me? Special delivery. Gosh, special delivery. Let me see it, Bertie. Leroy, it's for me. Here it is in the lady's handwriting. Oh, thanks, Bertie. Well, better open it. You're all thumbs up. Let me open it. Not with those pruny fingers, Leroy. You'll seal it again. <laughs> okay, but hurry up. Well, it's from a dude ranch. Say, it's from Bessie. Bessie? What a letdown. She didn't get thrown off a horse or something, did she, Miss Gilsey? Well, let's see. Yeah, worse than that. She got married. She did? Well, ain't that nice. <laughs> Holy cow, did she marry one of those dude hop-along Cassidy's? <laughs> Leroy, give me a chance to find out. Let's see. It says, uh, well, she married a fellow named Loudermilk. He's in the feed and seed business. That's nice. Yeah, nice. Only one hitch. What'll I do about a secretary? Why don't you hire me, Unc? You, Leroy? Yeah, I can do the office work after school. Ho, ho, ho. Heck, to help you out, I'll even quit school. You will not. <laughs> Stop dictating. I got my pencil and paper ready, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, all right, Leroy. You want me to sit here or on your knees? Leroy. <laughs> that boy... <laughs> Bessie. 
Bessie wasn't much of a secretary, but I'll miss her. Oh, well, now that she's gone, I'll get somebody who's on the ball. No more of this daydreaming. No more filing according to the Zodiac. I won't hire another scatterbrain. Uh, door isn't locked. Wonder how that happened. Who's that? Hello? Young lady, who are you? I'm Hazel. Hazel? Who are you? I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the water commissioner, and the office isn't open yet. Say, how did you get in? I'm a friend of Bessie's. She mailed me her key. She did? Why'd she do that? She said I'd need it. She said I could have her job. Oh? Well, how could she hire you? Well, I'm a friend of hers. I do favors for her, and she does favors for me. Oh, for... Young lady, I appreciate Bessie sending you up, and I appreciate you coming. But how do I know you're qualified to be my secretary? Well, I can type. No. And I never took a lesson. <laughs> and you don't use the touch system? Oh, yes, sir. I use the touch system with two fingers. Two fingers? Well, I didn't see any reason to learn with all ten. You can only hit one key at a time. Oh, brother. <laughs> Hazel. Yes, sir? Why don't you leave your name and number? And if I need you, I'll give you a ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll write it right here on the typewriter. Well. H-A-Z. Oh, I hit an X. I'll change it to a Z. Just leave the X. I'll know who it is. <laughs> Finding a secretary is going to be a terrible job. I guess the first thing to do is put an ad in the paper. Let's see how I word it. Uh, water commissioner needs efficient... Secretary. How do you spell secretary? With an E or an A? I need somebody around this office sharper than that hazy hazel. Isn't anybody in the water department today? Well, Judge Hooker. Come in, Judge. I'm here. Good morning, Gildy. Where's Bessie? Isn't she due back today? Oh, Bessie won't be back, Judge. She went up to a dude ranch and got married. Oh, she got roped and tied on your time, huh, Gildy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's about it. <laughs> I'm just putting an ad in the paper. Then I'll have to waste a lot of my valuable time interviewing giggling girls. That isn't necessary, Gildy. I have just the secretary for you. Oh? The ex-registrar of deeds, Miss Matterhorn. You've met her. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the suggestion, Horace, but I've always considered Miss Matterhorn a little icy. Gildy, why don't you hire her and tell her that I recommended her? No, Judge. I can't hire her just because she's a friend of yours. Why don't you think it over, Gilda? Nothing about Miss Matterhorn to think over. And if it'll help you make up your mind, why don't you take a spin out in the open country in my new car? Well, it's a nice car. In but... fact, I'd like to have you use my new car any time you care to. Judge, are you trying to bribe me? Oh, no. I'm merely offering you the use of my new car. Yeah? An old goat has to have a good reason to give up his new tin can. Oh. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. How are things with you this morning? You're not so good, Peavy. I'm a little short-handed at the office. I lost my secretary. Well, if you haven't got anybody to take shorthand, I guess you are shorthanded. <laughs> All right, baby. That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Shorthand, shorthanded. Yeah, I get it, baby. But I'm in no mood for witticisms. I have to get someone to replace Bessie. Oh, the job's still open, you say? Well, I put an ad in the paper, but it's still wide open. Mm, Mrs. Peavy would be glad to hear that. You wait a minute. You're not suggesting I hire Mrs. Peavy. Oh, oh, no, no. Mrs. Peavy never could take dictation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. I was thinking of Mrs. Peavy's niece. She's been boarding with us quite a while. Free, of course. Oh. Has she had much experience, Peavy? No, no, but she's willing to start at the bottom. I think she'd fit right in with you. No. <laughs> Wait a minute, Peavy. I have to give this secretary business a lot of thought. Oh, my, yes. Uh, give me a good cigar, will you? Very well. Care to try Henrietta? 
Is that a new cigar? No, it's Mr. Peavy's niece. Oh, uh... It won't cost you anything, Mr. Gildersleeve. You mean Mrs. Peavy's niece? No, the cigar. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now let's get back to Henrietta. Oh, for... Peavy, you're not trying to press this matter, are you? Well, I... You believe the water commissioner should hire the best help he can get, don't you? Well, yes. I know you wouldn't shower me with favors just to get me to hire your wife's niece. You gave me this fine cigar just because you're my friend. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, Peavy. If it's a good cigar, I'll consider her. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commissioner. Yeah, how's the barber business? Well, I'll give you a clue. You're next. Great. <laughs> well, it be. Of course, you need to work. Uh, just a shave, Floyd. I want to lean back and do some thinking. Yeah? Thinking, yeah? Thinking's hot on the hair. I'd watch it, Commission. You should talk. You're a barber, and I've got more hair than you. Well, you know how grass grows on a vacant lot. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. All jokes alongside, Commission. What's on your mind? Let little Floydy Munson help you with your problem. Yeah, I've been getting too much help, Floyd. That's my problem. Well, yeah? yeah? i got to hire a new secretary. All my friends are trying to wish somebody off on me. Well, what do you know? They don't seem to realize they just can't hire anybody. I've got to have efficiency. The Peavy, the judge, they're all trying to push somebody they're interested in. I wouldn't pay any attention to them, Commission. Who are they to tell you how to run your business? That's the way I feel, Floyd. You know what I'd do, Commission? Uh, what, Floyd? I'd hire a little manicurist I know. A manicurist in the water department? Why not? She's a very deserving girl. She's an old friend of Lovey's. Well, I'd like to hire your wife's old friend for She's something to think about, Commish. She can file a water report just as good as she can file a nail. Now, Floyd, I want to give this some thought. I wouldn't think too long. You might lose her. Besides, Commish, you're a busy man. Well, yes, yes, I am. I can see the work piling up on your desk. You need her, Commish. A water commissioner without a secretary is like a monkey without a wrench. Please, Floyd. <laughs> yeah, how about that shave? Sure. But uh, keep the kid in mind, huh, Commissioner? Yeah, all right, Floyd. I will say this for you. You haven't gone about it the way Peavy and Hooker did. Oh, yeah? How'd they go about it? Well, the judge offered me the use of his new car if I'd hire a friend of his. No. Yep. And Peavy's showering me with good cigars to hire Mrs. Peavy's niece. At least you're not trying to bribe me, Floyd. Um, Commissioner, how about a massage on the house? Uh, what? You know, just to help you think about my candidate. Well, why not? <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like the winner of Double or Nothing. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, when you buy margarine, you want the most in freshness and flavor your money can buy. And that's why millions prefer parquet margarine to any other kind. Parquet margarine is the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh. Really fresh. Always fresh. Parquet is blended fresh from top-grade products of American farms, rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks, sold fresh by your grocer. In addition, every pound of Parquet is flavor-dated. Stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that wherever or whenever you buy Parquet margarine, you'll get the margarine that's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. Great 
Gildersleeve is the kind of executive who likes to pick his own secretary. When his friends, the Jolly Boys, came up with suggestions, he resented it until they followed up their suggestions with gifts. Now he's beginning to enjoy it. Hoop dee doo, hoop dee dee, da 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 dee dee. Feeling pretty good tonight, huh? Oh, you bet, Leroy. <laughs> hey, where'd you get the big cigar? Hey, why? What about it? Well, it doesn't smell as bad as that old rolled up rubber you usually smoke. <laughs> well, it happens to be a very fine cigar that my friend Mr. Peavy gave me. Yeah? Why? Well, I may do him a favor. He wants me to hire Mrs. Peavy's niece for my secretary. You mean you spent all day on it and haven't hired one yet? Well, Leroy, I'm taking my time. <laughs> uh, brush me off, my boy. I'm due at the Jolly Boys meeting. Okay. My, my, Mr. Gilsey, you sure look spiffy tonight. Well, thank you, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you been pinching your cheek? Oh, no, Bertie. Well, they sure look rosy. Yeah. What have you been doing to them, Rosie? Uh, <laughs> Leroy, I just had a massage. <laughs> Compliments of Floyd's Barbershop. How come he's giving you stuff, too? Well, I may do him a favor. He knows a deserving manicurist who might make me a good secretary. <laughs> oh, I can see you up there in your office now, Mr. Gilsey. Dictating with one hand and getting a manicure with the other. <laughs> <laughs> Say, hey, that's an idea. Aunt, how can you hire the manicurist? I thought you were doing Mr. Peavy the favor. Well, Leroy, I'm considering everybody's suggestion. <laughs> Seems all my friends have somebody they want me to hire. <laughs> I've discovered it isn't too profitable to decide these things too quickly. <laughs> what an operator. Aunt, what are you promoting out of Judge Hooker and Chief Gates? Leroy, I'm not promoting things for my friends. Besides, I haven't even seen the chief. Uh, never mind, Bertie, I'm right here. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Chief. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Chief Gates. Come in. Come in. No, no, thanks. I just wanted to speak to you for a minute before the meeting. I hear you're looking for a new secretary. Well, yes. What did you bring me? I mean, uh, <laughs> did you have anybody in mind? Oh, brother. Uh, Commissioner, as chief of police, there's a girl down at the jail I'd like to recommend. <laughs> Oh? Well, you've heard of Southside Molly. Southside Molly? Oh, she's been a model prisoner. She's getting out next week, and, the, well, the girl wants to go straight. That's all very well, but... Now, she... now, now, Commissioner, don't worry about her. She wasn't abandoned. She just kept the motor running. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, Chief, I'll have to do a lot of thinking about Southside Molly. Well, Commissioner, none of us are perfect. To illustrate my point, look at these parking tickets. Uh oh. They got my name on them. Mm hmm. You're a lawbreaker. But I'm going to tear them up. Hey, can I have the pieces to show the kids? No, Leroy. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you, Chief. Oh, not at all. Now then, can I do you another little favor? Uh, can I drive you to the Jolly Boys meeting in the Chief's car with the. Siren going? Uh, no, thanks, Chief. I'm driving the judge's new car this evening. What a character. By <laughs> 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 George, yeah. fellas, this is a great meeting. It's wonderful to get together like this. Yeah, you can't beat it. Let's sing a song. Well, what do we sing? There is a tavern in the town. <laughs> oh, no, Peavy. I think we should let Gildy select the song. So do I. Oh, me too. What's your pleasure, Commissioner? Well, okay by you, Peavy? Oh, my, yes. Anything you say is okay by me. Oh, what a nice bunch of fellows. Well, how about Sweet Sixteen? There's a solo line for me. Splendid selection, Gilda. Well, here we go. Ready or not. I loved you as I never loved before. Since first I met you on the very street. Come to me. Oh, 
well done, Chief. I thought the commish was the one who'd done good. Oh, so do I. Oh, me too. Uh, uh, me too. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you, fellows. <laughs> Nothing I enjoy more than singing after a hard day at the office. You must have had a hard day, Gilda. Now, about the secretary. Have you contacted Miss Matterhorn? Yeah, well, I haven't decided about the secretary as yet, John. You don't say. Well, care for another cigar, Mr. Gilda? <laughs> Thank you, Phoebe. Well, Gilda, I've just been thinking. Why don't you keep my new car over the weekend and take the family for a spin? Well, if you insist, Horace. Hey, hey, what's going on here? George, are you trying to influence a commissioner regarding a secretary? Not at all. It just happens that he's hiring an old friend of mine, Miss Matterhorn. Well, now, Just a minute, just a minute. The commission and me have a gentleman agreement about a friend of lovey. Uh, now, Floyd. You're all you wrong, say? fellas. Mr. Gildersleeve is hiring Southside Molly. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. He led me to believe he's hiring Mrs. Phoebe's niece. Yeah, but Phoebe... Yeah. <laughs> it seems that our old friend has been leading all of us on. Mm, fine friend. You judge. I have not. Oh, yeah? You accepted our presents. You. I'm out two 25-cent cigars. You're all right, Phoebe. Here's one of them back. Mm, very well. <laughs> Gildy, I'll thank you for the keys to my new car. Uh, here you are, Judge. Thank you. I'm stuck. How do you take back a massage? Yes. <laughs> yes, and my traffic tickets. Well, well there's fellow, something you should be able to do about fellow, that. Fellow, let's forget the whole thing. Let's be jolly boy. Fine jolly boy. Let's sing another song. I don't feel like singing. I don't even feel like staying here. I think I'll go home. Yeah, let's walk out on him. Now, wait a minute. You don't have to walk out on me. I'm not going to break up the club. I'll leave. Well, isn't somebody going to stop me? <laughs> Under the circumstances, Gilday, it might be a good idea for you to leave. Yeah, I guess so. Good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Don't hear much going on up there. They're whispering a little. Say, I'll bet they're forgiving me. Sure. I forgot my hat. I'll go back and get it. They'll welcome me with open arms. <laughs> Who threw that? It's my hat. Hit me right in the face. <laughs> this morning, but I was up at five. Couldn't sleep. <laughs> well, what will I do first? <laughs> yeah, I guess I caught cold wandering around the reservoir last night. <laughs> Wish I'd have jumped in. <laughs> Bless you. What? Good morning. Oh, Hazel. What are you doing back in? I'm answering an ad in the paper. Water Commissioner wants efficient secretary. Efficient, yes. But, Hazel, you were here yesterday. Oh, I recognize you now, Mr. Gildersleeve. But how was I to know that you were the same water commissioner? Oh, for... Hazel, uh, Hazel, how many water commissioners do you think this town has? I don't know. It has a lot of water. <laughs> oh, brother, it's a good thing I didn't hire her. I wonder who came in. Oh, excuse me, Hazel. Uh-oh. Judge Floyd. Good morning, Gilly. Well, fellows, <laughs> nice of you to come. Is everything forgiven? Are you kidding? What are you getting at, Floyd? Gilda, we've been appointed a committee of two to make this call. Oh? Your premeditated deceit hurt us deeply last night. Deceit? And for conduct unbecoming a jolly boy, we are here to ask for your resignation. Why, you can't do this to me. Fellas, you no, are the you ones... No, you Commish. A guy can't play both ends against the middle without getting it in the middle. <laughs> All right. That's the way you feel about it. Hey, who's that? Oh, it's just Hazel. Hazel? Gilda, you didn't tell us you'd hired a secretary. Hired her? It ain't Mrs. Peavy's niece, is it? Oh, no, Floyd. Well, there's something fishy here. 
Judge, that ain't Matterhorn, is it? Of course not. Miss Matterhorn can't hum. Fellows, it's Hazel, a friend of Bessie's. You mean you ain't double-crossed none of us jolly boys? Lloyd, I wouldn't think of doing that. Well, as long as you didn't reject my choice in favor of one of the other members, I feel all right about it. You do? Me too, Commish. I got no beef as long as you step outside our group and hire this Hazel. I don't know whether it's worse to be out of the Jolly Boys or stuck with Hazel. (laughs) Oh, well. Hazel. Yes, sir? Let's get to work. Really, Mr. Gildersleeve? Of course. She doesn't look too efficient, Gilder. Oh, she's efficient. Hazel, there's more work here than you and I can do, so let's get with it. Yes, sir. Where do I find Mr. Withit? Mr. (laughs) Withit. Oh, I should have resigned. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow, when you shop, remember, the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh is parquet margarine, made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get that wonderful tasting, fresh tasting parquet margarine in the handy color quick bag or regular package. That's P A R K A Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Shall I go home now? Yes, you can go home, Hazel. Gee, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think I lost my key to the office. Oh, what a secretary. Here, here's my key. Think you can find your way home? Oh, yes, sir. I've been there before. Good night. Good night. Here, there she goes. Well, at least I have a secretary. And I put one over in the Jolly Boys. They thought they had me. Gildersleeve, you are clever. <laughs> eh, Hazel isn't a bad secretary. Probably a lot smarter than she looks. Yes, uh, it's been a good day. Now, let's go home and tell the little family all about it. it darn old-fashioned doors. What's wrong with this now? Oh, confound it. Hazel locked it on the outside. I'm locked in. She's got the key. I'm a prisoner in my own water department. <laughs> Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand with Arthur Q. Bryan, Ken Christie, and Sandra Gould. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, Just add a little mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Next Monday, Break the Bank joins your morning lineup on NBC.
Have you seen Uncle Mort? He's upstairs getting ready to go to the county fair. He even got him a new suit, binoculars, and a cane. Oh, brother, what a character. Tonight, in the fourth of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. Next time you buy margarine, learn for yourself why so many people prefer parquet margarine to any other. Actually, there's just one big reason. Millions prefer parquet margarine to any other spread because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. If you live where colored margarine is sold... Get yellow parquet in its new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is separately wrapped in new Flavor Saver aluminum foil to keep freshness and flavor in, staleness and odor out. Elsewhere, get parquet in the convenient color quick bag or the regular package. In any package, it's the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. The lights are bright in Summerfield tonight. Crowds are on the streets. Tomorrow's the big day. It's County Fair. Out at the great Gildersleeve's house, the water commissioner isn't waiting till tomorrow morning to fit himself out for the fair. He's dressing tonight. Yes, sir. Spent $35 for this suit. And by George, it's worth it. When I go to the fair, I'm representing the city water. I got to sparkle. I wish I had a full-length mirror so I could see the pants. Are you in your room, Anki? Yes, come in, Marjorie. I'm trying on my new suit. Not bad, huh? Oh, that's handsome, Uncle Mort. And a new necktie. Yep, water commissioner necktie. Hand-painted picture in Niagara Falls. Um, wait, is that a spot on there? No, I asked the clerk about that. It's a man going over the falls in a barrel. <laughs> Well, you look fine, Anki. Uh, thank you, my dear. Say, where is everybody? Well, Bronco's working later tonight, so we can go to the fair tomorrow. Good boy. And Bertie's down in the kitchen, and Leroy's in the living room practicing on the piano. Well, fine. Guess I'll get down and give the boy a little encouragement. And you'll just leave you've got this household running like clockwork. <laughs> Practice the rottener I get. If I keep this up, it's going to be murder. Leroy? Okay. Oh, phooey. All right, my boy. All right, just keep it up. I've been upstairs listening. You're doing fine. Are you kidding? Just keep at it, Leroy. Practice makes perfect, you know. Gee, I'll do it to practice now. All the other kids are out at the fairground. They're putting up the midway. I'll practice twice as long tomorrow, couldn't I, Unc? No, my boy, I know it's a big temptation to run out to the fairground, but duty comes first. Do your work and then play afterwards. Gee whiz, all the other people are out having fun and I gotta sit here and practice. It's lonely. Leroy, when a person plays the piano, he can never be lonely. The way I play it, he can. (laughs) Well... You have to keep at it. Okay. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, finally finished your work, huh? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, when a man's going to be a father, he really has to pitch. Yeah, that's right. Marge and I are going to have a little bird in our nest. Who's going to pitch and where's the bird? Never mind. <laughs> Bronco, baby. Oh, Marge, darling. Oh, cute kids. Hey, 
Marge, Mr. Gildersleeve, look what I bought downtown. It's a wonderful book. A book? Well, good. Oh, this is no ordinary book, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is about babies. It tells what to do with them. Oh, let's see it, Bronco. Hey, say, cute picture on the cover. A stork carrying a baby in a tablecloth. What's going on? Now, Leroy, stay with you practicing. Holy cow, I don't get in on anything. Who got the bird? Somebody call Birdie? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look, Birdie, Bronco found a baby book. It'll tell us exactly what to do. Ain't that nice? Leroy? Huh? You're practicing. Okay. Hi, right, George, you're going to finish that lesson if I have to nail your trousers to the piano stool. Uncle Mort, here's something interesting. Oh? Here in the back of the book, Behavior of Older Children. It says, do not force the child to obey. Seek his cooperation by being a partner. Join in his activities. Well, that's right. Good advice. In cases in which the child finds an activity difficult or uninteresting, the parent should become a partner so that the parent and child work and learn side by side. Yes, indeed. You want to remember that, Marjorie. Leroy sure having a bad time with them piano lessons. You see, Yankee, the reason Leroy doesn't like to practice his piano is that he's alone. The book is absolutely right. Marjorie, what are you leading up to? Well, I think what she means, Mr. Gildersleeve, is that you and Leroy should be partners in the piano. Partners in the piano? <laughs> well, it's never too late to learn, Unky. That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. My grandfather learned to play the bass clarinet when he was 74. Yeah, I know, but... Leroy wouldn't mind practicing his hour a day if he knew you were doing it, too, would he, Bertie? I think Leroy would be tickled to death, but I can't see the two of them on that piano stool. <laughs> Somebody's going to be sitting on thin air. <laughs> well, they wouldn't practice at the same time. Now, well, Marjorie, you're being carried away with an idea. It wouldn't make a bit of difference to Leroy if I practiced the lessons with him. Not a bit. All right, ask him. Well, uh, Leroy? Okay, I'm practicing. No, no, come here. What you want? Leroy, uh, how would you, uh, I mean, uh, you wouldn't like your panel lessons any better. I mean, it wouldn't be any easier if I practiced along with you, would it? You want practicing? It's ridiculous, isn't it? I think it's a keen idea. <laughs> you do. We'll start tonight, Unc. I'll practice an hour and then you practice an hour, okay? Well. Oh, boy, wait till they hear us play, Unc. It'll be you and me against the world. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Uh, give me a box of those chocolates there, Pete. Yeah, well. Are they fresh? Well, yes. Yeah. If I just give them to me, PV. I'm in a big hurry. Well, give me a chance to dust it off. Uh, the box doesn't look very fresh to me. Well, you don't have to eat the box. Just eat what's inside. <laughs> All right, PV. Now it'll be one dollar and three cents for the governor. There you are, PV. Thank you. Taking the candy with you to the fair tomorrow, I presume? No, Petey. The candy's for the girl I'm taking to the fair tomorrow. <laughs> I haven't time to talk now. I've been away from the house for over an hour. I still have to go to Katie Milford's. <laughs> Leroy will be looking for me. Oh, by the way, Leroy was in here a while ago. He asked if you'd been in. Uh-oh. Said you were practicing his music with him. No, Peavy, this is just a silly idea of Marjorie's. I had nothing to do with it. For goodness sakes, don't tell anybody. I'll be the laughing stock of the town. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Do you what? Oh, I think it's a very commendable thing. You do? Really? And Leroy said some rather complimentary things about you. He did? Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. Of course, if you'd rather I didn't mention it to anybody. Good I... evening, Gelda. Peter. Hello, Judge. Good evening, Judge. Well, Judge, I suppose you've heard the news. What news? Well, little Leroy's been having such a hard time practicing his piano lessons that I decided to join right in with him. We're taking up the piano together. Don't tell anybody, he said. Why, Gilda, you mean you're practicing his little pieces right along with him? Yes, indeed. An hour a day. Windbag. Well, that's the nicest thing I ever heard. Yeah. Leroy said you were supposed to come home. The piano is waiting. <laughs> All right, Petey. 
And I suppose that tomorrow, when you and Leroy have finished your stint at the keyboard, you'll be off arm in arm to the fair. Well, not exactly, Judge. I'm planning to take Katie Milford. Oh, your little nurse. Yeah. In fact, I'm on my way to her house right now. Yeah, I see you have a large box of candy. Need any help carrying it? <laughs> no, thanks, Judge. My hands need the exercise. Got to limber up for the piano. Uh, Mr. Gildy, sir. Well, Gildy, let me say I'm extremely proud of you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Gildy, sir. Oh, no, but what is it, Phoebe? If you don't move, you're going to be the hottest piano player in town. What? You're leaning up against the cigar lighter. Oh! <laughs> Time since I've seen her. I wonder if she's missed me. Sure, she has. How could she help it? Nine thirty, Gildersleeve. You better shake a leg. There. I'll stand under the porch light so it catches my profile from the top, like they do in the movies. I wonder if she's changed. Katie, beautiful Katie. Who's there? Three guesses. Oh, Throckmorton, it's you. Yep, it's me. I don't know if I should ask you in or not. Huh? You've been away a long, long time. But Catherine, I've been busy. Besides, you know what they say about absence. Makes the heart grow fonder. Let me come in. Just for a little while. Oh, Throckmorton, you naughty boy. I can't say no to you. By George, he has changed. <laughs> Never any trouble saying no to me before. Come on in. But just for a minute. Oh, thank you. Prettier, too. Gorgeous. I wonder what she did last summer. <sighs> Let me look at you, Throckmorton. I'd almost forgotten how big and handsome you are. You have? Let me unbutton your coat. You old brother. <laughs> Perfume in her hair makes me dizzy. Now, come and sit here beside me on the couch. Love to. <laughs> it's been such a long time. That's a lovely suit you're wearing. Yep. Brand new. Herringbone. Oh. Talk to me, Throckmorton. Well, <laughs> when I stopped by to ask you, Catherine, I... I wondered if you'd like to go to the fair with me tomorrow, opening day. No, I don't think I should. Well, Catherine, I was counting on it. I even brought you some candy. Oh, thank you. They're good. Chocolate-covered filberts. But I don't think I'll go to the fair with you tomorrow. Please, Catherine. No, I don't think so. Pretty please? No. I haven't heard from you in months. You came back from your vacation. You didn't even call me. Well, I've had lots of work at the office. And I'm helping Leroy with his piano lessons. You're doing what? Well, poor little fellow, practicing at that piano all alone. I simply decided he needed somebody to do it with him. Throckmorton, you mean you're doing that for Leroy? He and I practice an hour every day. Well, you angel. How long have you been doing this? Uh, starting tonight. <laughs> That's such a sweet thing to do. Yeah. Do you still want Katie to go to the fair with you tomorrow? Sure I do. Throckmorton, when a man is kind enough to help a little boy, it's the least I can do. Great. Gildersleeve stopped shaking. <laughs> Hadn't you better go home now, Throckmorton? Oh, but I just got here. But don't you have to practice? No, I'll do it tomorrow. I got a little practicing to do right here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. 
Every woman knows that only a really fresh margarine is really good. And that's why so many women always buy parquet margarine, made by Kraft. For the freshness of parquet margarine is protected right to your table by Kraft Freshness Control. Parquet is blended fresh from top-grade products of American farms. It's rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks, kept fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet margarine on sale anywhere is flavor dated and is checked regularly by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that any parquet you buy anywhere will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Where state laws permit, get yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. County Fair opens today in Summerfield. It's a beautiful morning, and everybody at the great Gildersleeve's house is busy getting ready for the big day. But the great man himself is way ahead of them. He's at the fair already, and he isn't even out of bed. Shaking the bed. Well, it's me, Anki. Breakfast's ready. Everybody's up but you. They are? <laughs> you must have been dreaming. Nice. Oh, Leroy's already practiced his hour for today. You didn't practice yours last night. Well, I got tied up. Oh, I'll do it this morning. Well, why don't you practice an hour before breakfast and an hour after breakfast? That'll catch you up for last night, and you'll be all through for today. No, I think I'll put in two hours after breakfast. I don't think I could hit an E-flat on an empty stomach. Good breakfast, Bertie. Well, I'm trying to still see Land is so much hurrying around here getting ready for the fair, I don't know which way is up. Well, everybody's busy today, but... Yes, sir, that little Leroy sure is. He's been practicing this morning like a little angel ever since you told him you were going to do it with him. Well, it's my duty, Bertie. Help the boy with his little problems. Yes, sir. Leroy has to learn that when you have a job to do, you do it before you do anything else. Yes, sir. Learning the value of responsibility. That's important. Yes, sir. That's how I got to be water commissioner. Yes, sir. Uh, you going to practice the piano this morning, Mr. Gillsleeve? Certainly, Bertie. Two hours. As soon as I take a look at the morning paper. Auntie, it's ten o'clock. Are you going to fair? Yes, indeed. I'm taking Miss Milford. Well, you better hurry if you're going to practice two hours. All right, my dear. I'm not putting it off. Just want to glance at the paper. Hey, Aunt, I've done my practicing. Well, good. When are you going to start? Right away, my boy. Just want to look at the comics. Come on, I'll do your work first and play afterwards. That's what you tell me. All right, be right there. Unc! All right, all right, I'm coming. So is Christmas. That's what you tell me. I'm coming right now. You're not moving. Leroy. (laughs) Please. Well? All right, all right, let's go. Where's the piano? Same place it's always been. Sure, sure. Same piano. Okay, there you are. Now, here are the teacher's instructions, and here's the piece we're practicing. Oh, what's the piece called? The Happy Farmer. Oh, brother. Yeah, let me get the bench over here, huh? Gee, this is keen, you and me beating the piano together, huh? Yeah, keen. Here's the clock on the table. You can see when you've practiced two hours. All right, Leroy. Now run along. I want to watch 
you. You don't have to watch me. I'll do it. And then the piece starts right here at the top of the page. Yeah, I know that, Leroy. You're the happy farmer. That's right. Now, see sharp. Leroy. Well, somebody at the door. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I'll get it. I'm right here. You're supposed to be practicing. Yeah, I will, Leroy. Let me answer the door. Don't be so crabby. Well, good morning, Gilda. Well, Horace, glad to see you. Come in and sit down. What a slippery character. <laughs> I was just going by on my way to the fair, Gilda. I wondered if you and Miss Milford would like to ride with me in my new car. Say, that's a wonderful idea, Judge. I'll get my hat and we'll drive by Catherine's house. Ah. What? Remember? The happy farmer? Oh, him. Uh, sorry, Judge. You'd better go along. I have to practice. Oh, what a shame. And I have my top down. It's a convertible, you know. We might drive around the block. Honk. Leroy, it'll only take a minute. Do your work first, Dunk. Don't put it off. Leroy is right, Gildy. But at least you can come out to the car and see my prize pumpkin that I'm taking to the fair. Judge, you mean you have a pumpkin? Oh, I've got to see that. (laughs) Come on, Judge. Be right back, Leroy. Was I ever like this? (laughs) A beautiful pumpkin, Judge. Raise it yourself, huh? Oh, yes, Gilda. Right in my own backyard. Hurry on! All right, Leroy, I'll be right there. That's what you said a half hour ago. Maybe you had better go, Gilda. Relax, Judge. You'll forget it. Plenty of time. Hey, Unc! Be there in a minute, Leroy. Gildy, don't you think you'd better go in? It's getting late. No. Let's talk some more, Judge. Oh, I can't think of anything else to talk about. Well... And I must be running along, Gildy. They'll be opening the fairgrounds in ten minutes. I want to avoid the crowd. Don't want anybody to jostle my pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, all right, George. I'll be leaving in a few minutes, too. Got to pick up Catherine. Be at the fair, Gildy. Goodbye, Judge. Look, no ship. Guess I shouldn't have stayed out there so long. Now, if I can just get past Leroy. Don't see him. Sure. He's probably forgotten all about me. Hey, I'm... Oh! <laughs> Leroy! Where are you going? Well, it's pretty late now, Leroy. Catherine's waiting for me. I practiced an hour last night and an hour this morning. Well, I'm going to do it, too. Later. I'll do it tonight. I'll practice three hours tonight. Okay, Uncle. Sure. Can't miss the fair, my boy. Okay. You understand, don't you? Sure, I understand. We're going, Uncle. See you at the fair. Yeah, I'll see you at the fair, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, goodbye. Leroy, I don't want you to think I'm going back on a promise. No, it's all right. I'm leaving for the fair, Miss Gildersleeve. All right, Bertie. Gee, poor Uncle. You go ahead. You don't have to practice. Really? No. By George, I can't do it. I made a promise. Wouldn't have any fun at the fair if I did go. You run along, my boy. Have a good time. Aren't you going? No, I'll stay here. But how about Miss Milford? Well, on your way, stop by her house. Tell her I couldn't make it. Tell her... Tell her I had to work. farmer. <laughs> Gildas Lee, quit feeling sorry for yourself. It's your own fault. Everybody else is at the fair, having fun. Now I know how Leroy feels, all alone at the piano. Katie, you'll never speak to me again. 
You wonder what Katie's doing. Hello, Throckmorton. Who? Catherine. How'd you get in here? I saw you through the window and slipped in. Well, why did you go to the fair? Oh, I couldn't, Throckmorton. Not after I found out what had happened. What do you mean? Leroy told me why you didn't come. He did? Mm-hmm. I admire you. Well. <laughs> Move over a little. Ah. What are you going to do? Sit down here beside you. You know, Throckmorton, it's so much easier to practice when you have somebody to do it with you. Yeah, what a girl. Yeah, this is better than going to the fair. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Whenever you shop, remember the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh, is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the color quick bag or regular package. In any package, parquet is the margarine that's always good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Sure. Fair is just as good at night. An awful lot of it, though. I'm getting tired. Are you, Catherine? Oh, no. Shall we go through the agricultural exhibit? No, I've seen the judge's pumpkin. Clark Morton, are you having a good time? Me? Well... What would you like to do? You really want to know? Mm-hmm. Let's go home and do some more practicing. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. And also for a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Next Sunday, The Falcon will keep you on the edge of your chair every minute as he solves the case of the talented twins. Be sure to hear The Falcon next Sunday afternoon. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. There's magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement into almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Groucho Marx follows Gildersleeve next week on NBC. Is it?
that boy? Oh, he's across the street, Bertie, with Mr. Bullard's little niece, Brenda. Is he still over there? <laughs> Wait till Mr. Gillsleeve gets home. He's going to have something to say about that. He sure is. Tonight, in the fifth of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. The big reason millions prefer parquet margarine to any other spread is that it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always so fresh. But there are other reasons as well. For instance, if you live in a state where colored margarine is sold, there's the convenience and extra protection of Yellow Parquet's new Flavor Saver Package. Yes, each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in a new Flavor Saver aluminum foil, so easy to handle, already colored, ready to serve. And all the freshness and flavor are sealed in, staleness and odors sealed out. Elsewhere, you get that same superb parquet flavor and freshness in the handy Color Quick bag or regular parquet package. So find out for yourself why so many prefer this superb margarine to any other. Ask your grocer for P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Well, the great Gildersleeve has just been appointed chairman of the Summerfield Community Chess Drive. The first thing he did about the drive was to drive home and tell his little family about it. Oh, Unky, I'm so proud of you. Well, Marjorie, I'm a little proud of myself. They sure picked a good man when they picked you, Miss Gilfley. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Uh, why did they pick you, Unky? What? Well, why did they select you to head the community chest? Well, because I've got the biggest chest in the community. <laughs> oh, Unky. Uh, what have you planned for the campaign? Uh, the first thing I'm in charge of is the kids' football game Saturday afternoon. We've got the two best junior teams in the city. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, we expect to make a lot of money for the community chest. Is little Leroy going to play? Leroy? With those feet? <laughs> oh, poor Unky. For years, he's hoped Leroy would be a football player. Yes, but that's hoping too much. Leroy will never be an athlete. He can't run ten yards without tripping over his own shoestrings. Now, Unky, Leroy tries. Hey, by the way, where is the boy? <laughs> He's across the street with Mr. Bullard's pretty little niece. Hey, Brenda? Uh-huh. You can see him here from the window sitting on Mr. Bullard's steps. Aren't they cute? Cute? What a way for a boy to spend his time. Look at him hang his head and giggle. <laughs> that little Brenda sure has a way with Leroy. He should be out practicing football. When she flutters them big peoples at him, all he does is giggle. Yeah, I know, Bertie. Yes. They was over here this afternoon eating donuts. And she was flooding them people at him through the holes. She was. <laughs> all Leroy did was giggle. Now they're sitting over there, and all he's doing is giggling. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Bertie. <laughs> Miss Gilsey, you know all Leroy does when he gets with that little girl? Yes, Bertie. That's right. All he does is giggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go get Laughing Boy and bring him home to dinner. <laughs> I think you're just marvelous. <laughs> if anybody told me I'd be sitting by anybody as important as you are, oh, well, I just never would have believed it. <laughs> Roy. Yeah? You're my hero. <laughs> Leroy! Well, they don't even hear me. Leroy! What? Oh, Uncle, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I know. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Brenda. I didn't see you standing there. Well, I wasn't eavesdropping. <laughs> I just came over to tell Leroy it's time for dinner. Mr. Gildersleeve, isn't Leroy dreamy? Leroy? Dreamy? <laughs> He's my hero. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like him. But isn't the hero part going a little too far? What's so far about that? Well... I mean every word of it, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
I've been in a swoon since he told me he's playing in the game tomorrow. Well, fine. Now, come along, Leroy. Leroy's playing in the game tomorrow? Isn't that dreamy? Yes, dreamy. I mean, well, little Leroy. Keen, huh? You didn't tell me, my boy. Well, gosh, the coach just told me this afternoon. I'm playing quarterback. Quarterback? Yeah, a brains. Well, Leroy, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You're just the boy to run the team. You're a natural-born quarterback. Yeah. Leroy. Yeah, Unc? You weren't the only one out for quarterback, were you? <laughs> Heck no. I beat out Clyde Cooper. I had the brains. And LeBron, too. <laughs> well, let's be sure about the LeBron. Bernie, throw on another steak. We've got a football player in the family. <laughs> Would you like some more potatoes and gravy, Leroy? Sure. Here's the raisin bread again, my boy. Eat a lot of it. Raisins have iron. That's what a football player needs. There's one more piece of steak. Who wants it? You make room on your plate, Leroy. Uh, Bertie, get him another glass of milk, please. Gosh, stop fussing over me. I can't see over my plate now. But you surprised us so, didn't he, Unky? Well, I knew Leroy had it in him all the time. Yes, sir. We just didn't know where it was hid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a day it's going to be. I can see the stands now. Crowded. And a dollar ahead for the community chest. And little Leroy runs out on the field. Yeah. And Brenda waving to him from the sidelines. <laughs> now, listen, Leroy. If you win the toss, be sure to receive the kickoff. Possession of the ball is very important. The other team will never get their hands on it. I'll razzle-dazzle them to death. Yeah, the boy. I can't wait to tell Peavy and the Jolly Boys. Hey, by the way, Leroy, what formation are you using? The T or the single wing back? I'm just using Leroy back. What? Right. And everybody else goes out for a pass. Wait, I'll show you with a hard roll. And not at the table, Leroy. Huh? You and Bertie run out for a pass. Leroy, don't you throw that hard roll at me. Oh, you're just a decoy. Get ready, huh? Yeah, all right, my boy. I'm open. Here it comes, a spot pass. Ugh. Oop, right in the gravy. <laughs> Bots all over me. Leroy, now look what you've done. Leroy, how many times has Uncle Moore told you not to play at the table? Well, I guess I better go up to my room, Hunk. Huh? Oh, of course not, my boy. It was all my fault. It was? Yeah, I should have scooped it up before it hit the gravy. <laughs> oh, you're a fine passer and a wonderful boy. Holy cow. When you're an athlete, you can get by with this. Gildersleeve? <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? If Peavy, you can give me a dollar. How's that? If it, the community chess football game tomorrow. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> After you give me the dollar, I'll give you a red feather. Just like the one I have in my hat. Oh, that explains your feather. I thought you'd been where the wild goose went. <laughs> hey, watch this, Peavy. You know the song. My heart goes where the wild goose goes. Yes, and I must Peavy. go where the wild goose goes. Yeah, all right, Peavy. Wild goose, brother goose, which is best? A wandering fool or a heart at rest? Oh, Peavy, stop. I will. I'm out of breath. Hey, Peavy, you're too chipper this morning. What happened? Oh, nothing's happened. Mrs. Peavy left this morning to spend a week with her mother, but nothing's happened. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I'm happy today, too, Peavy. Now, I'll tell you why you shouldn't miss the game. Well, here's another customer. Well, that's no customer. That's Judge Hooker. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello, Judge. You're just the man I want to see. Oh? Why the feather in your hat, Gilda? Has the water commissioner been dressing poultry? <laughs> <laughs> Judge, you know very well why it's there. Yes, I do. Congratulations on being chairman of the drive, Gilda. Yeah, thanks. Now, all I want from you is a dollar. You're for... heading a very worthy cause. As the slogan goes, everybody benefits, everybody gives. Yeah, well, that's true, but Judge, just give Red me... Feather Services provide the health, welfare, and recreational facilities the community needs to make it a better place in which to live. You're doing a lot of talking to get out of paying a dollar. <laughs> 
What's that, Peter? Hey, Judge, I'm selling tickets to the community chess football game tomorrow. One dollar. Well, I've made my pledge, but I'll take a ticket. Oh, thank you, Phoebe. Well, I made my pledge also, but I'll take two tickets. I can take Miss Matterhorn in my new car. Great. Yeah, this is a game I don't want anybody to miss, because here's the big news, fellas. Big news? Yeah, the most important thing that ever happened. Little Leroy is going to play in that game. He is? Well, good for him. Just imagine, Leroy on the gridiron. Yep. He's playing quarterback. Well, we'll all have to go out and cheer for Leroy. Say, I have an idea. Instead of just cheering, let's take our Jolly Boys band out to support Leroy's team. You call that support? (laughs) It's a good idea, Horace. As chairman of the drive and president of the Jolly Boys, with the boys starring on the team, I call a special meeting for this evening for band practice. I'll be there. Anything for Leroy. He's quite a boy. Phoebe, I thought you had trouble getting out on weeknights. No, no, I wouldn't say that. I'm as free as the wild goose. My heart goes... All right. (laughs) All right, Phoebe. See you tonight. Leroy, Marjorie, Bertie, I'm home. Oh, hello, Uncle Mort. Hello, Marjorie, my dear. Where's Leroy? Well, I think he's upstairs. Oh, I'll give this to Bertie. That big package for Bertie? No, Bertie, is for Leroy. Oh, football, Unky? Nope. More steak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I think I'll go up and have a little skull practice with the quarterback, Mike. Oh, you just can't wait for tomorrow, can you, Unky? Yeah, I can't wait for the next few years, either. Someday, Marjorie, we'll be going to college football games to watch Leroy Snake Hips Forrester. <laughs> You're awfully proud of Leroy, aren't you? You bet. I'm proud of you, too, my dear. But, of course, you're not a football player. (laughs) See you later, Marjorie. Don't hear anything up here. I guess the little fellow's figuring out plays. Leroy? Yeah? May I come in, my boy? I'm a scout for the Green Bay Packers. You can come in if you want to. Ah, what are you doing? Brewing up bad medicine for the opposition? No, just sitting. Resting, huh? Good. Hey, by the way, I brought home some more steak for your dinner. You and Bronco can eat it, Unc. What? Right. I'm not hungry. Ah, guess you're excited about the game. Better eat, though. You've got to be strong to make those touchdowns. I'm not going to make any touchdowns. You're not? But Leroy. I'm not going to play. <laughs> Teasing your old uncle, huh, Leroy? No, I'm not going to play. Clyde Cooper's going to be quarterback. Why? Leroy, yesterday you had the job. Well... What happened? Well, gosh, I I got a little cold, I think. Leroy, you don't have a cold. You've never been healthier. Well, I I sprained my ankle. Your ankle? Which one? Both of them. Oh, (laughs) Leroy, you're making up excuses. You have to play tomorrow. I bragged all the Jolly Boys. I mean, I told all the Jolly Boys you were going to star. And I'm chairman of the community chest in charge of the game. What are people going to say? Sorry, Unc. But I told you why I can't play. Those weren't very good excuses. They weren't, huh? No. Now tell me why you aren't going to play. Well, I got to look at the other team, Unc. Gosh, they're pretty big guys. Oh. So that's it. Leroy. Yeah? Those boys are the same age as you. What about Clyde? He isn't as big as you, is he? No, but... All right, my boy. Get ready for dinner. I'm not hungry. Miss Gale, please. Dinner's ready. I'm not hungry either. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Every woman knows how important it is to keep food fresh, really fresh. 
For if even the finest food loses freshness, it loses savor. And that's why so many millions of women always buy parquet margarine. They know it's the margarine that's fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Yes, Kraft Freshness Control protects parquet margarine right to your home. Parquet is made fresh from top-grade products of American farms, rushed fresh to the store in refrigerated trucks, sold fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet margarine is flavor-dated, and grocer's stocks are inspected regularly by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can absolutely guarantee to you that no matter where you buy or when you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. The great Gildersleeve heard that his nephew Leroy was going to play quarterback in the community chess football game. He was the happiest man in Somerville. But then when Leroy suddenly changed his mind and decided not to play, the great man's spirits crumbled. Now it's evening and the water commissioner is heading for the meeting at the Jolly Boys Club. Salute Leroy tomorrow when he runs on the field. How will I explain it to him? I can't tell him Leroy backed out. Well, I can just tell him he decided not to be an athlete. He's going to be a scholar. No, they'll never believe that. Hi, Commissioner. Come on in. Hello, Floyd. Hi, fellows. Come on, Gildy. We're all warmed up. Here's your trombone. Just a minute, fellows. Before we waste our time... Hey, since the chief ain't here, why don't I just concentrate on the drums tonight? But, Floyd, what about the piano? Since I ain't dragging no piano out to the field tomorrow. Fellows, perhaps we shouldn't take any of the instruments. Well, I'm taking my flute. What's the matter, Commish? Don't you think you're professional enough? I carry a union card. (laughs) Barber's union. (laughs) Gildy, why shouldn't we take our instruments? Well, you don't have to do this for Leroy. We want to do it, Commish. Well, we're happy to do it. We're proud of the kid. And you must be too, Commish. Yes. Gentlemen, shall we show our old friend what we've got for little Leroy? What's this, Judge? Well, we were going to save it and present it official after the game, you know. But what the heck? Pull it out, Peeve. Yeah, look at this, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, a loving cup with a football player. Gold filled, that's what makes it yellow. I know, (laughs) Pete. Fellas, you shouldn't have done it. Believe me. Read the engraving, Gilder. Well, let me see. Ah, the commission's choking up. Let me read it. To Leroy Forrester for quarterback in the community chess football game. Nice, Floyd. We just said something about you being chess chairman, but the engraving was getting pretty expensive. (laughs) (laughs) Well, gentlemen, let's practice our number for Leroy. What can I say to them? Come on, Commish. We picked on Wisconsin because that's the dairy state and Leroy's the big cheese. (laughs) I'm ready with my flute. My violin's rising up. You want to test the trombone, Commish? I can't even get a lip. You never played better. Here we go, gang. Just pretend Leroy's taking the field. One, two. Sounded like Leroy ran through all the instruments. I suggest that the drum and trombone take the opening passage, then Peavy and I will come in with violin and flute. Hey, fellows, let's call the whole thing off. Oh, we'll get better. Pick up where we left off. Where'd we leave off? Here we go. One, two.
Gentlemen, we are improving. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. You mean the Jolly Boys bought Leroy a trophy? Yep. An engraved loving cup. Gold filled. After that, how could I tell him Leroy had backed out? Oh, poor Unky. No wonder you couldn't sleep last night. Well, I'm through talking to the boy. If he wants to let that skinny little Clyde Cooper take his place at quarterback, that's up to him. Bronco and I tried to talk to him, but he just shrugged and walked away. Oh? Where'd he go? I know where he went. What's this, Bernie? That poor little boy went up in his treehouse. He did. That poor little boy. Over. Oh, What's he doing up in his treehouse? He's just sitting. <laughs> he won't talk to nobody. That poor little boy. Now, Bertie, don't feel sorry for Leroy. I'm not. He brought this on himself. I don't care whether he plays or not. He ain't even paying no attention to little Brenda. Brenda? Where's she? She just stand across the street flooding them eyes, but he just sitting up in his treehouse. That poor little boy. Well, I guess Brenda will be as disappointed in Leroy as the rest of us. Say, there's an idea. If there's anybody who can make a man play ball, it's a woman. Why didn't I think of this before? up in his treehouse, Brenda. You have to get him to play in that game this afternoon. Oh, I'll just die if he doesn't play. After all, what's there to live for? <laughs> Leroy! Yeah, I guess you better call him. Leroy! Leroy! It's me, Brenda! What do you want? I want you to come down and talk to me. I don't want to. Oop. Pour it on, Brenda. Leroy, if you play today, I'll come and cheer for you. Because you're my hero. <laughs> that you get it. Hero Schmiro, go away. Hero. <laughs> well, if that's the way you feel about it, Mr. Leroy Forrester, I most certainly will go away. Hey, Brenda. Leroy. Oh, it's a lost cause. Stadium is almost full. Hey, gang, here's the commission now. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, fellas. You're late. Not as late as I'd like to be. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. Huge crowd. You should be very happy. Yeah, very happy. Hey, Commissioner, I checked the starting line up, and Leroy's name ain't there. It isn't. Well, Floyd. Well, if Leroy doesn't appear, I refuse to play. Yeah, me too. It's hard to hear a violin in the stadium anyway. <laughs> Hey, here comes the starting team. Leroy ain't with him. Gilly, what happened? Well, excuse me, fellas. I think somebody's waving for my attention down below. I'm chairman, you know. I don't see anybody waving. See you later, fellas. Well, get Leroy in the game. We blew two bucks apiece on that cup. Sorry, Floyd. Well, I had to get away from the Jolly Boys. Somehow I can't believe little Leroy's afraid to play. Never been afraid of anything before. He's always wanted to play football. Uh, I think I'll sit down here and hide. Pardon me. Is this seat taken? Well, no, no, sit down. You're just in time for the kickoff. Yeah, I know. Uh, you... <laughs> Say, aren't you Mr. Gildersleeve, chairman of the community chess drive? Yeah, that's me. Oh, great outfit, the community chess. Yeah? You want somebody to tell people what the chess does? Ask me, I'll tell them. Well, good. See that boy running out on the field? Number 22? That's my son. Oh? Two years ago, he couldn't walk. Look at him now. Community chess did that. He looks fine. Playing in this game is the biggest moment in my boy's life. This is his chance to show everybody that he's well again, that he's come back. Yeah, that's wonderful. I wish I had a boy like that. Brave little fellow. He almost didn't get to play today. Well, that would have been terrible. The coach told me about it. Another boy was ahead of him, and it looked like Clyde wasn't going to get in the game. 
Why? And the other boy found out how important it was to Clyde to play today, so he stepped out to give Clyde the chance. The boy's name was Leroy Forrester. Oh, he did a great thing. Leroy? Oh, you know him? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. Little Leroy. Hey, there's the kickoff. Clyde's taking the ball, Gildersleeve. He is? Come on, Clyde! Run, boy, run! The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you buy margarine, get the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Get parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where the law permits, get yellow parquet in its new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, it's the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Leroy! Leroy! Uh, 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 pardon me. Excuse me, madam. Coming through. Lady, watch that umbrella. Leroy! Leroy, I'm over here. Hi, Uncle. Oh, it was a fine game, my boy. We took in $2,300 for the community test. It was a big success. Yeah. And I, I want to say, too, I'm proud of you. Mighty proud of you, my boy. Me? I wasn't even in the game. Clyde, here's Leroy. Oh, Gildy, we've been talking to Clyde Cooper's father. Yeah, if you ask me, Leroy deserves more than our loving cup. You ought to have a medal. I agree, Floyd. The hero of a football game should always be carried from the stadium on somebody's shoulders. I'm going to carry Leroy on mine. The heck you are. I'm carrying Leroy on my shoulders. Now, just a minute, fellas. Just a minute. Well, This is up to Leroy. Whose shoulders do you want to ride on, my boy? Yours, Unc. (laughs) Bless that boy. One side, fellas. We're coming through. Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Barbara Whiting, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, Just add a little mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast, and tune in when The Falcon solves the case of the unnecessary knife. Next, Groucho Marx makes his debut. Three chimes mean good time...
Hey, Bertie. What you want, Leroy? They're going to elect another mayor in Summerfield. You think Uncle Mort will get fired as water commissioner? Mr. Gillsleeve fired? Nah. They wouldn't fire him. Would they? Tonight in the sixth of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. We join the Great Gildersleeve and his friends in just a moment. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you tonight by Parquet Margarine, that wonderful margarine made by Kraft that millions prefer because it always tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. If you live where colored margarine is sold, you can now get yellow Parquet Margarine already colored and ready to serve in that wonderful new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in Flavor Saver aluminum foil to seal freshness and flavor in, keep odors and staleness out. No fuss, no mixing, just unwrap and serve. In other states, get Parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. Remember, Parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner is a little late for breakfast this morning, but things are humming anyway. Leroy is occupied with his pancakes, and those lovebirds, Marjorie and Bronco, are occupied with each other. May I put sugar in your coffee, honey? Thanks, honey. Of course, you don't need sugar. You're so sweet anyway. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Bertie, isn't that murder? (laughs) Cream sugar? Thanks, honey. You're welcome, sugar. Oh, mush. What's that, Leroy? Pass the mush, honey. Leroy, we're not having mush. Are you kidding? There's mush all over the place. (laughs) Sugar, syrup, honey, and mush. This is the sweetest family. (laughs) Well, good morning, little family. Uh, what's tickling Bertie? Mush. What? Right. Don't pay any attention to him, Uncle Mort. Uh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, Bronco, you've been living here six months. You don't have to reach across the table and shake my hand every morning. I like to be friendly, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, well, be a good friend and pass me the pancake. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, Marge, honey, I won't be home for lunch. Oh? Our new club is having its first luncheon downtown. New club? That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. We've just organized a new civic club. We're going to do Summerfield a lot of good. Isn't Bronco wonderful, Unky? He's president. Oh, brother. Yes, indeed. Fine boy. Bronco, what's the name of your club? The Junior Thinkers of Summerfield. The Junior what? Thinkers. That's what I thought you said. (laughs) And since you're the president, I guess you're the biggest. Leroy! (laughs) Well... Uncle Mort, do you know what Bronco and the thinkers are going to do? No, my dear. I can't say that I do. Tell him, Bronco. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, we're going to think. Ah? The way we see it, Mr. Gildersleeve, the people of Summerfield aren't giving enough serious thought to the way this town's being run. Well... Confidentially, Mr. Gildersleeve, we're meeting today to decide whom we're going to support for mayor. Well, there shouldn't be any doubt in your mind about that. We want to re-elect Mayor Twilliger. He's a smart man. He appointed me. Let's support the man who supports us. I mean, uh... <laughs> Well, all we want, Mr. Gildersleeve, is to see that the best man's elected. Well, that's to Williger. Unk's the best war commissioner, too. Yeah, thank you, my boy. It'll be hard for people to imagine anybody else being water commissioner, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thank you. By George, you young fellows are pretty straight thinkers. <laughs> Shake a leg, Leroy. I have a water department to run. I have to find my books, Unc. Oh, keen of you to drive me to school. Yeah, happy to do it. Watch it, Unc. 
Mr. Bullard's backing out of his driveway across the street. He wants to go first. Oh, that bully. What a neighbor. Well, I started backing out first. He stopped. Guess he doesn't want you to cut up his new Cadillac with our old cement mixer. Now, Leroy. He's honking at you. I'll honk back. Leroy, don't do that. He's hard enough to get along with. You want to see? Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. I want to see you. He's getting out of his car, Unc. He looks mad about something. He's always mad about something. If he raises his voice to me just once... You want to oh. He raised his voice, Unc. Slug him. And Leroy, keep out of this. Well, nice to see you, Mr. Bullard. Nice of you to come over. Gildersleeve, this isn't a social call. It's business. Business? What happened to the water pressure this morning? Oh, that. Uh, well... I was all lathered up halfway through my shave, and the water cut off again. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Half the time when I turn on the faucet, nothing comes out but a light breeze. What do you propose to do about this ridiculous trickle we're getting from the water department? Well, I'm on my way to the office. You should be on your way out of office. Watch it, Bullard. You'd better watch it, Gildersleeve. Oh, boy, this is keen. Why did the water cut off this morning? Well, maybe they're working on the water main someplace. Someplace? You don't even know. If I were Terwilliga, I'd have you out of there so fast that it'd make your head swim. But, Gildersleeve, you are a nincompoop. That did it. Bullard, if Leroy wasn't present, I'd make you eat those words. I'll leave. You will not. <laughs> you're driving to school. important man in town thinks he can insult the city officials. Well, I insulted him right back. He can't hurt me. I'm not running for office. The mayor appoints me. He say, I wonder if he'll appoint me again. You think I'll stop by his office and make sure. You! Anybody in? I've been in Gildersleeve since nine o'clock sharp. Well, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I would have been at nine sharp, but... I've been talking to one of our customers about ways to make the service better. Good idea, Gildersleeve. We all want to be on the job. There's an election coming up, you know. Oh, I know. But you don't have to worry about a thing, Mr. Mayor. I don't, eh? No, indeed. In fact, Mr. Mayor, I've done considerable campaigning for our re-election. Uh, I mean, yours. Well, uh, the administration needs all the support it can get, Gildersleeve. There's a new civic organization in town that has me worried. Oh? Yes, the uh, Junior Thinkers of Summerfield. Is you think it? Mm. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them. Oh, you don't think so? No. Mr. Mayor, lend me your ear. Uh, what is it, Gildersleeve? Guess who controls the junior thinkers? Who? My son-in-law. <laughs> oh, oh uh, Gildersleeve. Yes, Mr. Uh, I, I know you've worried occasionally about being reappointed water commissioner. Me? Gildersleeve, lend me your ear. Yeah, what is it, Mr. Mayor? You're as good as appointed. I am? Uh, so you've told your son-in-law whom to support for mayor. <laughs> Gildersleeve, leave you quite a card. Well, Mr. Mayor, in my deck, you're the ace. <laughs> well, the deuce you say. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, leave you're clever. <laughs> Then do you know what happened, Judge? What, Leroy? Mr. Bullard called out a nincompoop. He did? Well, I'm glad I dropped over. Then what happened? Well, hello, Judge. Leroy. Hi. Hello, Gilda. Hey, what's this about a nincompoop? I was just telling the judge how you stood up to Mr. Bullard this morning. You bet I did. If you want my advice, Gildy, you'll try to get along with your neighbors. Rumson Bullard is a very important man. Someday he may go to the mayor about you. Yeah, a lot of good it'll do it. I've never been on better terms with the mayor. In fact, I was closeted with him in his honor all morning. Now, what were you doing in the closet? Hiding a few of the city skeletons? <laughs> all right. A change of administration could mean a change of water commissioners, you know. Oh, I'm not worried, Judge. Uh -huh. 
Pretty hard to change any administration these days. Uh, yes. In fact, uh, the good mayor has assured me of reappointment already. He has? Gildy, how'd you get in so good with the mayor? All I did was use my influence with the one group in town that can swing the election. What group could the water commissioner influence? The meter readers union? <laughs> Judge, I'll have you know I practically control the junior thinkers of Summerfield. You do? You bet. Bronco's their president. And they wanted to back somebody for mayor, so I threw my weight around. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Here's Bronco now. Hello, Judge Hooker. Well, Bronco? Do you think us have your little meeting? We sure did, Mr. Gildersleeve. Great. The club followed your advice about selecting a good man. Hey, what did I tell you, Judge? But they didn't follow your advice about supporting Mayor Terwilliger. Hey, what did I tell you? Huh? They took my advice and selected the man that I consider the finest, most civic-minded man in Summerfield. Well, Bronco, I have done a few things for the city, but... Oh, oh not you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Your neighbor, Mr. Rumson Bullard. Bullard! <laughs> Water Commissioner, you've turned off your own water. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. There's just one big reason why millions of women serve parquet margarine on their tables and use it liberally in their cooking. It's wonderful as a spread, as a seasoning for hot vegetables, as a flavor-rich shortening for everything you bake or fry because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. Yes, fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Parquet is made fresh from top-grade products of American farms. It's rushed fresh in refrigerator trucks to your store. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet is flavor-dated, and grocer stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where you buy or when you buy margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. This better tasting, f- flavor freshing margarine tomorrow. Get P A R K A Y parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner assured his honor, the mayor, of the support of the junior thinkers of Summerfield. But they had thoughts of their own. They're backing the one man Gildersleeve fears, Rumson Bullard. Where does that leave our hero? Right in the middle, as usual. Uh, so how do I get into these What'd you say, Yankee? Oh, oh, nothing, Marjorie. Nice of you to walk downtown with your old uncle this morning. Well, I couldn't pass up the sale at Hogan Brothers. We need so many things before the baby arrives. Yes, we have to get ready for the baby. Need any money, my dear? Oh, I think I have enough. You better take it while I have it. The water commissioner's well could run dry. Here, here's five dollars. Oh, gee, thanks, Anki. I'm sorry Bronco's club isn't supporting Mayor Terwilliger, especially since you told him they would. Anki, does that put you in a bad position? Is it for me to bed? <laughs> well, you can explain it to the mayor, can't you? Yeah, well, I'll try. You run along to Hogan Brothers. All right. What'll I buy the baby with your five dollars? Buy him a book that somebody should have bought for me. How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> Goodbye, Anki, and good luck. Goodbye, my dear. Well, I hate to face Sir Williger. It has to be done. And to think that yesterday we were such good pals, laughing and joking together. Say, we're probably still good pals. We've had our ups and downs before, but he's always forgiven me. It isn't my fault that my son-in-law and the thinking people won't support him. You understand? Sure. What a fine little fellow. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Who's there? It's me. Yeah, I. It's Rockmorton P. Gildersleeve, your faithful lieutenant. <clears throat> no, Mr. Mayor. Your Honor. 
Don't look at me like that. I, I know I promised that Broncos Club would support you, but you know how unpredictable youth is. You believe that, don't you, Mr. Mayor? I won't vote for Bullard. I'm stuck with you. I mean, <laughs> I'm sticking with you, like we agreed. We did agree on that, didn't we? Mr. Mayor, say something. I'll say something, Gildersleeve. Get out! Out! You mean you're not going to appoint me water commissioner? Gildersleeve, I wouldn't appoint you dog catcher. Whoop! Where have I heard that before? <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Give me a tall Coke, Peavy. Very well. Lots of ice? Just wrap the ice in a napkin, Peavy. I'll put it on my head. How's that? I just left the city hall. I've got a bad headache. Oh, the coming election worrying you fellows down at city hall? Well, no matter which way the election goes, I'm out anyway. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought you and the mayor were thicker than thieves. Watch it, Peavy. <laughs> we're not anymore. I had a fight with the mayor this morning. Well, you could be reappointed if your neighbor, Mr. Bullard, is elected. I had a fight with him yesterday morning. My, my. What do you think I should do, Pete? Well, if you're such a fighter, why don't you join the Marines? <laughs> I might at that. Or the Foreign Legion. No, I don't think you have to worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? You've always run a good reservoir. You have a lot of friends. I suppose you noticed the mayor's poster in my window. Yeah. They're right by the rat poison. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I put that poster up to help re-elect the mayor and keep you on the payroll. Long may the water commissioner wave. <laughs> yeah, all right, baby, all right. And that's a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Water commissioner, wave. Yeah, I know, baby. And I rather like it. Uh, thanks for the support. Well, I believe in supporting customers because they support me. You're good for you. By George, I think I'll tell the mayor about you. It may help me. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, not a customer. Here you go right ahead. Mr. Peavy? Yes? Do you remember me? No, I can't say that I do. A few years ago, I used to come in here and read comic books. Alvin Beaver, remember? Oh, yes, yes, Alvin Beaver. Hmm, you've grown up, Alvin. Care to read a comic? Oh, no. Now I read thought-provoking books. I'm a junior thinker. What's this? <laughs> well, a thinking beaver. <laughs> <laughs> very good, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> That's very good. It wasn't that good. That boy's up to something. Mr. Peavy, on behalf of the junior thinkers, I'd like to put a picture of our candidate for mayor in your window. I knew it. Now, isn't this a fine picture of Mr. Bullard? Look at that noble brow and that determined chin. He looks like fearless Fosdick. Uh, Phoebe, maybe the young man doesn't realize you already have a candidate in your window. Oh, we're going to get rid of all that dead wood. Oh? How do you feel about the water commissioner? That lot of water log will go, too. Oh, Phoebe, don't put up that poster. Well... Remember, I'm a good customer. Mr. Peavy? Yes, Alvin? We junior thinkers are 251 strong. And we're all shaving now. Well, I guess it won't hurt to put your poster up by the shaving cream. You, my goodness, Speedy, you can't support both candidates. You can't straddle the fence. Well, I wouldn't say that. Politics. Thinkers can sway PV. They're pretty powerful. All right, George, there's only one thing to do. Get Bronco and his junior thinkers to switch their allegiance to Mayor Terwilliger. Yeah. I'll appeal to him as a relative. Oh, Bronco! Oh, oh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve. You're raking the leaves, I see. Yes, sir. This is clean up here. <laughs> uh, Bronco. Yes, sir? About you supporting Mr. Bullard for Mayor... Has it occurred to you that his election might affect people near and dear to you? I mean, uh, have you thinkers ever thought of voting for Mayor Terwilliger? I've given that a lot of thought, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm fond of you, very fond. 
But I can't support your boss. You can't? I sincerely think Mr. Bullard is the better man. And we in the Junior Thinkers Club have the slogan, Think the thought you think is right, then defend the thought with all your might. Think that the defendant all the way old, brother. <laughs> you see, we think the city of Summerfield needs a change. So what if you do make the sacrifice? In the name of good government, you'll be a martyr. Yeah, but Bronco... Your head may roll, but try to see it our way. How can I see you without a head? <laughs> Yes, Bertie. Don't you feel well, Miss Gilsley? Terrible, Bertie. Yes, sir. Bad news from the political front? Yeah. Mayor Terwilliger hasn't a chance of being reelected. I'm through as water commissioner. Oh, Mr. Gilsley, you give up too easy. What's this, Bertie? If I got pushed off the water wagon like you, I'd climb on the bandwagon. What are you getting at, Bertie? If Mr. Bullard's going to be mad, I'd polish apples with Mr. Bullard. Bertie. I wouldn't stoop to that. Yes, sir. If I was pushed off the water wagon, I'd climb right on the bandwagon. Hey, Bertie, please. Mr. Gilsey, you know what I'd do if I was pushed off the water wagon? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right. I'd climb right on the bandwagon. <laughs> oh. I wish it was that easy. Say, I wonder if it is that easy. I might just go over and have a neighborly talk with Bullard when he comes home. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll just take this easy chair here by the window and watch for his Cadillac. Hey. Uh, <laughs> the chair feels good. Sure. I'll just go over and have a little chat with Bullard. There's one thing sure. He can't get another man with my experience. Actually, I'm very fortunate. Water is all I know. <laughs> oh, eyes are tired. You better close them. <laughs> Might even take Bullard that gold-plated faucet the pipeline people sent me. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'll do. <sighs> Bullard will love this faucet. He's nuts about gold. <laughs> He can use it as a paperweight on the mayor's desk. You wonder why he doesn't answer the doorbell. Yes? Hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Yes, your neighbor. Please, please don't remind me of it. I'm about to eat. <laughs> and the only reason you're still my neighbor is that I couldn't buy your house. No, Mr. Bullard. There's no reason you and I can't be as close as, well... Mayor Terilliger and I used to be. Gildersleeve, what are you getting at? Well, when you take office as mayor, you look a long time before you find a water commissioner with my experience. So I thought I'd offer you my services. And this solid gold water faucet. Gildersleeve, after all you've done to me, how can you presume that I'd ever appoint you water commissioner? What have I done? One, you live across the street. Two, last year you backed into my Cadillac. <laughs> Three, when I was painting my house white, you burned rubber tires and turned it gray. Yeah, well, I... Four, you ruined my petunia bed playing detective one night. But five... That's enough. You won't appoint me. No. I won't appoint a nincompoop. Oof. That word again. Now, get out. Yeah, I'll get, get out. I'll get out, Bully. Watch it. Let go of my mm. arm. Let go. Let go. My arm. Let go. Let go. My arm, I say. But, Mr. Gilsleeve, I'm just trying to wake you up. Eh? You what? Oh, Bertie. Mr. Bullock's here to see you. Is? Now, see here, Bullard. You can't throw me out. You're not even mayor yet. Gildersleeve, what are you babbling about? Me? Huh. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bullard. I guess I was snoozing a little. Well, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Gildersleeve, but when I'm elected... I want to offer you the water commissioner's job. Huh? I am not ungrateful, Gildersleeve. And I know somebody had to convince your son-in-law and his junior thinkers to back me for mayor. 
Well, now, now, Gildersleeve, I know you're so close to the present mayor that you can't admit it. No, I can't admit it. <laughs> so, Gildersleeve, old neighbor, you're still going to be the water commissioner. Well, good old bullet. No use giving him the gold-plated faucet. I'll keep it myself. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you buy margarine, the name to remember is Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Get P A R K A Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Sure, hop in. Gee, people sure do crazy things at election time. Crazy things? What do you mean? Oh, Bronco and his flinkers running around town with posters. Mr. Bullard be a nice to you so you'll help him get elected. You be a nice to Mr. Bullard so he'll let you keep your job. Leroy, it's not that way at all. The junior thinkers is a fine group. It's a good thing for young people to take an interest in their government. Yeah, and as for Mr. Bullard and me, we're both grown men. Both too intelligent to suddenly start being nice to each other simply for the sake of politics. You watch the driveway, my boy. You're okay. Back out. Hold it, Aunt. Hold it. There's Mr. Bullard back out of his driveway. Oh. Hello, Bullard. Hello, Gilsey. <laughs> After you, Bullard. No, no, you go ahead, Gilsey. I'm in no hurry. After you, old friend. Uh, no, no, no. You first. No, you first. Now, oh, for corn's sake, I'll walk to the library. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Gail Gordon, Stanley Farrar, Dick Crenna, Bud Steffen, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in again next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a secret for making dull meals interesting. Add Kraft prepared mustard to any meat dish, hot or cold, and see the difference. Hidden flavors pop right out, because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember, with any meat dish, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve the case of the careless client. Laugh next with Groucho Marx. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.
Tonight, in a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. It tastes so good. It's always fresh. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, when you buy margarine, remember, the margarine millions prefer to any other is parquet margarine made by Kraft. The reason they prefer parquet is because it tastes so good. And the reason it tastes so good is that it's always fresh. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new Flavor Saver package, each golden quarter pound individually wrapped in Flavor Saver aluminum foil. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. morning, the great Gildersleeve took his little nephew, Leroy, down to Hogan Brothers' department store to buy him a suit. And while he was there, he bought one for himself, too. Did he have it wrapped? Not the water commissioner. He's wearing it home, and it's quite a suit. You bet. Latest thing, dill pickle green. Hey, Al, could we walk on the other side of the street? You what for, my boy? Well, there's not so many people over there. With you in that suit, walking in this crowd is dangerous for a little kid. They get to looking at you and walk right over me. Now, Leroy, let's not be jealous. You have a fine suit, too. Holy cow, aren't that color? Dill pickle green. You could wear that to a masquerade party. Masquerade? Sure. Put on a mustard shirt and you could go as a hamburger. <laughs> well, that'll do, Leroy. You're just a little boy. You don't know anything about fashions. This color is so new, it hasn't even been in the magazines yet. Hey, Al, how about getting some popcorn and going to a movie? No, we have to get home, Leroy. Bertie will be waiting dinner for us. Oh, right, George, this is a good-looking suit. Nice lines. Snappy. Oh, pardon me, madam. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're walking, huh? Well, I just glanced into a shop window. Yeah. Collar fits nice, too. Just like Esquire. Why do they make these store windows so short? And get a good look at yourself before you hit the doorway. Uh, excuse me. Hunk. Yeah, all right, Leo. I'm looking for something. Right here, in fact, in this big, shiny window. Uh, this is more like it. You can't tell anything in those triple mirrors where they sell the suits. You see too many people. Gee, Hunk, why do you want to look into a paint store? Let's go home. Well, I may want to buy some white left. <laughs> yes, sir, Gildersleeve, you look pretty good, if this coat with the belt in the back makes those shoulders look fine. <laughs> the pants are nice, too. Aunt, I read a story once about a guy named Narcissus. Huh? Who? All he did was sit and look at his reflection in the water. Oh? You know what happened? What? He fell in the lake. <laughs> All right, Leroy, we'll go home. My name is Narcissus, and I'm not going to fall in any lake. Hey, you got a tag on the back of your coat. Maybe this is your name. Oh, the clerk probably left it there. Hey, what does it say? That died boiled and pre-shrunk. Oh, Bertie! Marjorie! We're home. Yeah. Come get a load of our new outfits. Well, Leroy, don't you look nice. Yeah. And who's this man with you? This ain't Mr. Gilfie. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't recognize me, did you, Bert? Say, will you look at that. Mr. Gilfleeve, you got a new suit, too. Sure. Latest thing, Bertie. This is what they're wearing in New York now. Has pleats in the pants. I got cuffs on mine. <laughs> How do you like this coat, Bert? Ain't that fancy? You know something, Mr. Gilfleeve? The way that coat's made, your shoulders is catching up with your waistline. <laughs> now, 
Bertie. Uh, look at the shoulders on my coat. Of course, I only bought this suit because I needed it. Man has to have more than one suit, especially when he's the water commissioner. Oh, for corn's sake. Yeah, how do you like the color, Bertie? Oh, that's nice. What color is it? Catfish green. <laughs> Dill pickle green. All the young men are wearing it this year. Well, it sure makes you look young, Mr. Gilsey. Well, I am young, Bertie. Yes, sir. In that outfit, you could go to the college football game and sit in the root and tootin' section. Sure I could. You could go to those games and help with the root and tootin' section. Yeah, I know, Bertie. You'd sit right into that root and tootin' section. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Uh, Miss Gilsey, you know what you can do in that outfit? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you could go root and tootin'. <laughs> Well, Bertie Leroy's right. I'm no mossback. There's plenty of fire in me yet. I'm full of beans. Hello, Uncle Mort. Well, Marjorie, hello, my dear. Oh, Leroy, you look so nice. Yeah. Marjorie, you notice anything about me? Well, here we go again. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely suit, Uncle. Catfish green. Bill Pickle. It gives you a wonderful figure, Uncle Mort. Like a dill pickle. <laughs> Leroy? Well, isn't the suit at all, my dear? Most of this figure is mine. Around the waist, it's all his. Uh, <laughs> little jokester. The trouble is, Marjorie, the clothes I've been wearing before made me look older than I am. I'm not old. Oh, of course you're not. Right in my prime. A man doesn't come into his full strength until he passes 40. That's right, Unky. Yes, sir. Of course, my waistline is a little large, but I'm not fat. I'm just heavy. Oh, you're wonderful, Uncle Morton. We love you. you uh, thank you, my dear. Don't we love him, Leroy? I think I'll go upstairs. <laughs> yes, and wash your little face for dinner. Oh, I'm going out and help Bertie, Uncle. Great. I think I'll slip in and take a peek in the hall mirror. You couldn't see much in that paint store window. Well, that's better. You know, I'm not being like that fellow Narcissus who kept looking at himself in the water. I've got something to look at. Why, George Gildersleeve, why don't you admit it? You're a powerhouse. <laughs> look at those shoulders. And those arms. Really a sleeveful. Yes, sir, the head of the household. The white stallion leading the wild horses. The bull moose leading the mooses. Hi, Mort. Come home. Oh, there's Bronco. I'd forgotten about him. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Bronco. Marjorie, here's your little husband. Hello, Bronco. Darling. Hello, Marge, baby. <laughs> My little family. What do you have in the package, darling? Hmm? Oh, this? Oh, these are some scales. Scales? Yeah, I'm going to put them upstairs so I can watch my weight. I weighed myself today, Mr. Gildersleeve. And I've gained three pounds. Well, good. You're growing. That's what worries me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I got quite a shock yesterday. Oh? When I dressed in the morning, I forgot to put on my belt. And I didn't notice it until noon. What was holding your trousers up? That's what worries me. <laughs> oh, Bronco, you've never looked better. Certainly. You're just a boy. You could use a little weight. If you're going to lead the wild horses... I mean, be the head of a family. You've got to build yourself up, like me. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just because I'm going to be a father, I'm not going to let myself go. Now, just a minute. Oh, he's being silly, isn't he, Yankee? But look at the muscles in his arms. Show him your arms, Bronco. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Bronco. Now, Leroy, Bronco doesn't want to show his muscles. Wait till he grows up. That buffalo's going to get bigger? <laughs> no, Leroy, stop embarrassing your brother-in-law. He's just a boy buffalo. A uh, boy. Bronco, remember how you used to chin yourself in the doorway? Go ahead. Show us how you chin yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Leave him alone. He doesn't want to chin himself. He doesn't have to. I don't even know if I can do it now. <laughs> Oh, boy, look at the beef. One, two, three, four. Brother, look at him go. Isn't he wonderful, Anki? Oh, yes, yes. Show off. Uh, oh, I can only do 12. Oh, pretty bad. Let's see you do it, Anki. Me? Well. Dinner's ready. Oh, good. Dinner's ready. Let's go to the table, everybody. <laughs> 
myself just once. Leroy, Unky can't do that. Oh, that's not for a fat man. I mean, not that you're fat. I mean, for a large man. Oh, is that so? I'm not fat. I'm just well built. Go ahead, Unk. All right. Stand aside. Uh, uh, uh. Your feet are still on the floor, Unk. <laughs> Don't rush me. Well, you got one foot up. Uh, look out, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're breaking the door frame. Uh. Oh. Could have done it, though. That wood's pretty weak. Why don't we try it on the railroad bridge? <laughs> What's so funny, Marge? You, Unky, swinging in that doorway. Reminded me of the day we went to the zoo. Wolfer, come to the table. Bronco, you sit on the left. Marjorie over here. Leroy over there. This is where we always sit. Well, sit there. Hey, Bronco, remember that trick you used to do, crawling around the back of a chair without touching the floor? Leroy, Marjorie married a husband, not a performing seal. I remember that trick. Bronco was the only boy at school who could do it. Ready, bring the dinner. Miss Tabby, Mr. please. Show us how you did that one, Bronco. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. Sure you can. Leroy, he said he couldn't. Don't you believe it? Go on, darling, you can do it. Well... <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. This is pretty difficult. You've got to go around the back of the chair without touching the floor. Watch it, Franco. He's doing it. He's doing it. Oh, you did it. I'm ready for Franco. Oh, uh, it was nothing. Let's see you do it, Uncle. Oh, <laughs> well, just a minute. Leroy, don't be silly. Uncle Mort couldn't begin to do that. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't try it if I were you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You keep out of this. I'm the bull moose. I mean, <laughs> I'm the head of the household. I can do anything that kid can do. And I can do it better. I can... Uh, uh, the lad. What you doing, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, He's crawling around the back of a chair. Uh, what for? Stand back, Bertie. <laughs> Look out on the chair. He's tipping. I'll keep it careful. Are you all right, Uncle? Yes, I'm all right. You should have seen yourself, up Like a balloon coming down. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you're a real comedian. <laughs> Don't worry about the chair, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can glue it back together. The heck with the chair. Excuse me, Joe. Well, what about dinner, Auntie? Aren't you going to eat? I'm not hungry. I'm going to my room. Uh, oh, mirror. There you are, Gildersleeve. Just an old tub. Balloon going down. Narcissus, you fell in the lake. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Naturally, when you buy margarine, you expect it to be wholesome and nutritious. But when you buy parquet margarine, you can expect it to be something else as well. You can expect it to be fresh, really fresh, always fresh, no matter where or when you buy and because it's fresh, parquet is the margarine that always tastes so good. Yes, parquet is always fresh. It's made fresh from selected products of American farms. It's rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Every package of parquet is flavor-dated, and grocer stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where or when you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Let's 
get back to the great Gildersleeve. In the story of Snow White, the wicked queen had a mirror that told her anything she wanted to know. Up in his bedroom this morning, the water commissioner has a mirror that's telling him a few things. Gildersleeve, you may as well face it. You look like a hippopotamus. A water-soaked hippopotamus. No wonder the family laughed when you couldn't chin yourself even once. And when you fell off that chair trying that trick. And that Bronco thinks he's smart. Well, I'm smart, too. I'm not so fat, either. But I pull my chest up a little. This mirror must be warped. I wonder what the family will say when I get on to breakfast. Oh, they probably won't say anything. Probably forgotten the whole thing. Sure. I'll just act as if nothing had happened. All right, George, I may bruise easily, but I heal fast. Let's go, please. Coming, buddy. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, Uncle. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Rocco. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, Leroy. Gildersleeve, you're in. It's all forgotten. How's the acrobat this morning? Oop. <laughs> <laughs> acrobat? <laughs> what do you mean? Now, Leroy, you hush. Sit down, Uncle. I put a pillow on your chair for you, Uncle. I don't need it. Your chair in the dining room is going to be all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm gluing the seat back on. That's fine, Rocco. Here's your bacon and eggs, Mr. Gilsey. Thank you, buddy. You ought to have a good appetite this morning, missing your dinner last night. Oh, yes. We're all very sorry about last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. It was my fault. Oh, no, it wasn't, Bronco. We'll just forget the whole thing. Let bygones be bygones. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a big man. Thank you, Bronco. What a fine boy. We... We all want to apologize, Uncle Mort. We we didn't mean to. I I mean, when you fall off that chair... Oh, Marge. <laughs> Cut it out. He couldn't help it. I'll get you to see yourself like a balloon star. Excuse me. Mr. Gilsey, ain't you going to eat your bacon and eggs? No, thanks, Bertie. Where are you going? If I can squeeze through the front door, I'm going to waddle downtown. Everybody loves a fat man. Well, they don't love me. And I'm not so big. Uh, quit kidding yourself, Gildersleeve. You are, too. Well, confound it, if I can put on weight, I can take it off. Lots of people do. There's those ads in the paper. Mrs. Hogtight Clune of Elbow, Indiana, loses 20 pounds in eight days. Yeah, I'll show that family. I'll trim down. I may be a barge today, but tomorrow I'll be a speedboat. Yeah, I'll bet Peavy can help me. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? And I want to get some reducing medicine, Peavy. Uh, for a friend of mine. Oh? Yeah, fine fellow. But he's a little chubby. Well, I have a number of popular brands. Does your friend have any preference? No, he doesn't know much about these things. Of course, neither do I. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> now, here's a very popular reducing product. Dr. Beagle's Golden Formula. It hounds the pounds away. No, I don't think my friend would care for Dr. Beagle. Now, now here's a preparation that quite a few people are buying. Aunt Marion's Waistline Reducer. It's very effective. They tell of a fellow who used too much and his waistline disappeared entirely. <laughs> My goodness. He had quite a time keeping his trousers up. Finally used his wristwatch for a belt. He, is that story true? <laughs> no, but it tells a lot of merchandise. <laughs> yeah, well, let's get back to my friend. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve, how many pounds do you want to lose? Oh, about 50. Peavy, I didn't say it was for me. No, you didn't. Oh, all right, it is for me. But it's not that I'm overweight for my size, Pete. I just thought I'd trim down a little for the winter. 
Yeah, probably the cheapest way is to stop eating. It's very effective. Yeah, I know, Petey. Now, look at the camel. When he goes a long while without eating, his humps disappear. Petey, I'm not a camel. Well, only trying to be a service. Have you tried Judge Hooker's rowing machine? Say, I'd forgotten about that. Rowing is awfully hard work, but I'm desperate. Well, you might give the judge a call. No, I don't want to risk a call. <laughs> the way I feel today, I could get stuck in that phone booth. Yeah, you know, I'll go right over to the judge's house and get started in that rowing machine. Good luck. Don't fall overboard. <laughs> See you later, Petey. You're perfectly welcome to use my rowing machine, Gilda. It's here in my bedroom. Well, let's get started, Judge. My position as head of the family is at stake. I'm going to lose some weight if I have to row this thing clear to Greenland. There's nothing like a rowing machine, Gilda. That's how I keep my perfect 36. <laughs> All right, Horace. Every morning a brisk turn at the oars, and then I have a pick-me-up. Half a rye bun and a beaker of Kalite water. Judge, please. I haven't eaten anything since last night. Oh. Would you like a snack, Gilda? No, thanks. Maybe those camels have an idea. What was that, Gildy? Uh, nothing, Judge. Oh, brother, I'm weak. Uh, help me into the boat. Yeah, sure. Uh, there you are, Gildy. Now you're at the oars. I call my bedroom Hooker Lake. Yeah, yeah. 250 strokes on the oars will get you across. That is from Washstand Bay to Pillow Slip Point. <laughs> All right, Judge. Let me get started. Left door. What's the difference? I'm rowing. But you can't get across the lake unless you go straight. Oh, my goodness. Left door. Judge, are you in the boat with me? Certainly. It's a long trip. I'm going along to keep you company. Oh, brother. Going across Hooker Lake uh, on a rowing machine with an old goat. <laughs> Water Commissioner, this time you've struck bottom. Hooker Lake. How do I look, Judge? Have I lost any weight? Oh, I'm sure you have, Gildy. You're the picture of health. Well, thanks for the use of your rowing machine, Judge. But, Gildy, you're across the lake. Aren't you going to row back? No, you can row it, Judge. The way I feel, I'll just catch the first breeze and fly back. <laughs> That you, Miss Gilsey? Yeah, I'm home, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you look awful thin. I do? You feel all right, Miss Gilsey? I feel fine, Bertie. Never felt better, in fact. Uh, where are the children? Miss Marge and Mr. Bronco are upstairs. Leroy's out in the yard. You're just in time for lunch. Lunch? Mm. Mm. No. No, I'm not going to eat, Bertie. I'm reducing. I'm losing weight. But you got to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Well, not me, Bertie. Call the children, and I'll sit down at the table with them. But I'm not eating. Miss Marjorie! Mr. Bronco! Leroy! Lunch! Yeah. I'll sit down here at the table where they can see me when they come in. I... <laughs> Bertie noticed I was thinner. The children are bound to see it. Right, George Gildersleeve, when you set your mind to something, you do it. Hello, Anki. Hello, my dear. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Having lunch with us, I see. Well, not exactly, Bronco. Hi, Anki. Hello, Leroy. Boy, am I hungry. Where's the food? Uh, <laughs> you children notice anything about me? You got a spot on your necktie. It's something bigger. I mean, don't you notice something? Well, I don't see anything, Anki. 
You look fine to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Children, can't you see I've lost weight? I'm thinner. I haven't eaten anything. I've been exercising. Uncle Mort, you aren't doing this because... because we laughed at you. Well... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, not because of us. Well... Gee, Uncle, we didn't mean it. You didn't? Oh, Unky, we wouldn't have you change for anything. We love you just as you are. Sure, don't ever change, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, children, this touches me very deeply. Oh, I should have known you wouldn't. Uh, excuse me. I, I... I... What's the matter, Unky? Yeah, I can't get up. I was going out in the kitchen for a drink of water, but now I can't move. It's my own fault. Not eating since last night, rolling across Hooker Lake... My strength is gone. I can't get up. Mr. Gildersleeve, I know why you can't get up. Who? Huh? I glued the seat of your chair this morning and it wasn't dry yet. Oh. <laughs> Come to the chair. My new suit. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. I can't help. I can't help. <laughs> oh, the heck with it. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> Bernie, bring on the lunch. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow, when you shop, remember this. The margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its wonderful new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package... Parquet tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Hello, PV. Well, you're back again, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yep. You can give me a double banana split. With plenty of whipped cream and don't be stingy with the nuts. How's oh, yeah. that? Double banana split with whipped cream and nuts. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, I'm all through trying to get thin, Phoebe. A man should be what he is, not try to be something different. Mm, that's right. Look at you. You're a quiet little druggist. You wouldn't want to change. You wouldn't want to be a big shot. You wouldn't want to have a mansion and a yacht and run around with beautiful movie stars. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, neither would I. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat, pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve the case of the double nephews. This is the Great Gildersleeve. On your marks for Groucho on NBC. NBC.